Welcome to my survival create world. I've been playing in this world for over 1000 days and I've completed so much. From my humble beginnings to my current massive projects, there is so much to look at. But before we take a look back at these 1000 days, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you don't have the time to watch the whole video, leave it running in the background as it really helps me out. This is the create mod. And so is this, this and this. Today, I plan to start a new series using the create mod with the aim of automating everything. By the end of this series, I hope to have created a single interconnected city with machines and farms for every item. No, this is not where I want to spawn. Initial thoughts of the seed is that it's a lot better. On day one, I robbed a nearby village, rummaging through the chests, stealing a bed and many hay bales. I also shot my first tree and mined for some stone, to steal a brewing stand of course. By the day's end, I began my voyage to find a suitable home. After a long day of search throughout most of day 2, I stumbled upon a shipwreck and after locating the buried treasure map and finding the correct beach, I quickly slept before digging for treasure on day 3. Yep, this is a hundred percent the area. Oh, I am glad I waited for this one. Oh, this is gonna be amazing. I have three goals to achieve within the next 100 days. These include obtaining an enchanted set of diamond tools, creating an automated food source, and my main goal, automating the production of andesite alloy and brass ingots. Days four to nine were dedicated to exploring the caves. Although I don't have recorded footage of this, However, the VOD of my live stream during that time can be found on my channel. If you want to catch any future streams, consider subscribing. It helps you get notified and be out. With us now on day 10, it's finally time to start working on the starter base. And from the mining trip I did on stream, we got some pretty good resources. And most importantly, we got 18 diamonds. I'm gonna wait a little bit with using them and make some iron picks for now. And when mining yesterday, I think I found both of the blocks I want to use. So let's just jump down. Searching through the caves on day 10, I was unable to find the stones I was looking for, but instead I stumbled upon. I think I've just found another spawner and this would be my third one. And that means we can make a triple spider farm because you can move spawners with the create mod. I really need to stop my desire and just find what I'm looking for. Now, where is this? I, I, I found it yesterday. I mean, I haven't been here, so <gasps> wait. <gasps> oh, yes. We can make a skeleton farm as well. Oh, yes, here's one of them. So I need a bunch of limestone. And I think, yep, it's limestone. Perfect. At the start of day 12, I was finally able to locate the other block, Asrine. The remainder of day 12 was dedicated to breeding cows and sheep, as well as constructing a sugarcane farm for future enchanting purposes. Almost the entirety of day 13 was dedicated to gathering clay. So I need to smelt all this clay down into bricks, but that's gonna take ages. Is that I wanna make one of these fans from the Create mod to do it for me. But first I need to make a mechanical press with a block of iron, andesite casing. So first let's craft some iron nuggets. I use some andesite and these nuggets, we can make andesite alloy. If we take one of these, strip a log and apply that we get andesite casings and this is one of the main crafting blocks to make like all of the main components and just like this we should have a mechanical press for now we'll have to use our hand crank for this so for now we'll place it right here and we'll place our hand crank on that four pieces of iron on here and now we just have to sit here and bonk, and we get iron plates yes andesite alloy in the middle we get a propeller there's andesite casing here and the propeller we can make an encased fan and if i'm not mistaken i think there's a bit of lava yep right there oh, so placing the lava in front of the fan and if i throw the clay on the depot now <gasps> yes give it a second now oh yes and we have a stack of bricks he tanked my hunger though days 15 to 19 were primarily focused on gathering materials for the starter house with some of these days being streamed live now i almost have everything for the house here but i do need to grab three diamonds and with a few sticks let's craft this into a pickaxe because i need to go get some obsidian it's turning night time so let's hide in the cave and i just need to go down uh, i'm gonna need 14 of these at least I'm not here, I'm not here, I'm not here, I'm not believing. For these obsidian, I definitely want to craft into an enchanting table that we can use in a little bit. I don't have any bookshelves right now. But grab a flint, piece of iron, flint and steel. And for now, we're just going to be placing the portal like right over here. And well, let's just hope that we spawn in a warped forest, please. Oh, please. Oh no, that's a basalt delta. Oh no, no. But that's a nether fortress. That's at least good. I think we're just going to be going like around this way so we can get a little closer to the fortress and maybe we'll find a warped forest as well. No, this is exactly what I'm not. What happened? 
No! My 35 levels. Well, I'm glad I didn't do that in my hardcore world. I'm not done with the nether. I still gotta go in and get my warp wood. Yeah, I tried saving it, but there was no saving that. Oh, and we were so close. And the last two blocks. And now with considerably less gear, let's just get to building. I began to prepare the terrain around the starter house on day 22. Now, next up, let's grab some spruce fences. And I want to grab some cogs. Some shafts could be good. Oh, also that piece of soul sand. Need this lava here. And oh, yep. And then I need the fan and the water wheel. And I know this looks really weird right now, but just trust the process. So let's place the soul sand right here. There's some trap doors. And I need a shaft right here. And if you click a shaft with an andesite casing, it shouldn't use it, but it covers it. So then let's grab the water wheel in front with a large cog. And because of how gears work, if you have a larger wheel spinning a smaller one, the smaller one will spin faster. Then if you run two shafts this way and well, an encased fan with a depot and then our lava bucket right here. And if I stand here, do I get affected? I don't. The next few days were all about building and still some of my replay footage got a little bit corrupted and well, don't mind the white blocks in the time lapse right here. And currently this is two buildings. So using these spruce support, I want to add these stretching across here to this side. And I want to add, I think, three of these lines. And if you take an axe crouch and hit the middle one, it just... Oh no, wait. Eh, remove the bottom one. And we'll fill that in with some spruce, of course. Then up here, we want to add in a few lecterns as our rail railing. And then we put some andesite trapdoors on this, which I really love. Because it gives that little line of color at the top. And this was suggested by my mod burning on a stream. So you should also check out my streams. They're pretty epic. Now this roof here looks really weird because I shifted it and moved it around. And well, it, it looks a little weird. So I found these birch like palisades, which I have no idea what that is. But I want to add these around the whole building. And next up, I left a little bit of room on this side here, just so I can come in with a few more cog wheels here. Then I want to grab my press that I made earlier. So if we add our mechanical press on top of that and our depot right here, this is now a very, very slow press. And now I just want to add in a little bit of moss for some flower beds and some moss up here. And finally, on day 28, the exterior of the starter house was fully completed. Now, considering that we're already on day 28 and I still haven't completed any of my three goals, we might have to be thinking them a little bit now food is super important so i definitely don't want to take that away but even more so important is definitely the tools i use because that will just speed up making new buildings and new farms and well that only leaves me with one option to skip the andesite and brass making in this video and we'll do that in a future episode yep i'm just that cool <laughs> oh, but perfect here's the first burner i'm hearing more spiders in the wall here so it leads me to believe there's another spawner, perhaps. And I think that brings the total up to five, if so. That looks like a spawner. And yep, that's a cave spider. So that's definitely a spawner. There's no way I just found a seventh one. I'm mining two, another one, and there's just one right here. We have seven spawners now. Well, seven cave spider spawners and one skeleton. And well, I'm hearing cave spiders behind this wall again. And but if you're telling me there's an eighth one, I'll, I'll lose it. Oh, and well, here we have the skeleton one. Now they're all connected and that's, well, nine spawners. And I think we're going to be bringing them up to the surface from here. And now we can actually use our little super smelter thing here. Would you, would that be called a super smelter? I mean, it's very fast. And well, I'm going to need to store these on the minecart for a while. So I'm going to need nine minecarts. Eight, twelve. Uh huh. I'm very good at math. Then we need something called a cart assembler, I believe. Yes. All right, that's super simple to make. And before we can go down and actually pick up the minecarts, I do want to just show you what these actually do. So you place them on a rail like this. Place, I'll place a chest here. Then if I place a minecart under here, give this a redstone signal. Bonk. As you saw, it disappeared for a second. But if I push the minecart now, the chest is connected to it. And basically, with the mod, you can do that with spawners. Days 30 and 31 were then spent going around to all of the spawners and placing them on minecarts to transport them back to the surface. Days 32 to 37 were streamed live, during which I focused on constructing a drill to initiate the material gathering process for the spider factory. The next 10 days were all spent on gathering blocks for the spider farm, I started off by trapping a few villagers to trade sticks for emeralds and emeralds for bricks. On day 41, I enchanted my first item in the world, which was an axe to chop more trees, of course. And then it was back to it, venturing to the nether and trading with villagers. 
On day 49, I set out on an adventure to find a dark oak forest, and after successfully finding one and chopping down a few trees, I headed back on day 50. Day 51 was the final day of gathering blocks, and day 52, and I think I have everything for this farm. So I'll start with the main part of the farm first, and then we'll move on to the details. So, well, let's place the portal here. I said portal, I meant, I meant the spawners. They had finally came to move all of the spawners in. Well, we just lost one. Um, I'm gonna go sleep. It continued into the beginning of day 56, and once I was done with that, I started building the outside. As for most of my builds, I used Lightmatica when building, and since replay mods still didn't want to work, you get to see it from the first person view instead. Building continued all the way to day 60, adding in the roofs, some windows, and even doing an interior. Now, if you flip this leaf, we should see spider spar. Yes. And well, we can now get XP, and since I died to a creeper while building this, I can finally get my tools fully enchanted. Day 61, I spent trying to get a mending villager. But with no luck, I decided to start off day 62 with chopping down some trees to trade sticks for emeralds. I continued trying to get the mending book towards the end of day 62, and finally, late into the night, I got it. To celebrate this achievement, I went straight to bed. The next few days were all spent at the spider grinder, and thankfully I managed to get some pretty cool enchantments. I ran out of diamonds on day 65, so had to head into the caves to find some more. This mineshaft has literally carved out the bedrock. What? Hello, that was so many. I have like enough now. I went from 10 to 41. What are the odds of me mining up straight into my drill? I spent the rest of day 66 and day 67 to finish up enchanting. Now we're on day 68 here, so I'm running out of time for this video. I barely have 30 days left. But there is this cool thing called a schematic table and cannon that I want to make. And so crafting a schematic table just like that. And a schematic cannon just like that. The schematic in here. I already have the pig factory here. And I just click check. Ooh, ooh, yes, this is the whole thing. And I want it to be like over here somewhere but i don't remember exactly where so i'm just gonna place it is this gonna be spoilers oh oh yes let me get this into position then you're just gonna have to endure these spoilers here but if i place this here and then i place the schematic in here and if i put that up here now i should get a materials checklist and yep, that is perfect. But I'm gonna get to material gathering now and this is basically the Lymatica mod that i use a lot but this one has one extra feature that Lymatica does not. Like I said, material gathering began on day 69. <laughs> nice. And it was a long one, continuing on to day 75. Now, I need two more things. And the first one is uh, actually a really tricky item to get. So I need to place a gold sheet on that and give this a cogwheel. All right, I think I've solved the issues now. And yes, I have. Okay, perfect. That's the first step. Do this and give you that. Now I need to repeat these four more times. I'm a little bit nervous because there is actually a chance that this can break and not give me what I want. But no, it broke. No, the last one. Luckily, I made an extra set. Yes. And there we have it. A precession mechanism. A, a, precis a precision mechanism. And with this, we can make a rotation speed controller. Just need to grab up that and boink. And then that with that and a precision. A rotation speed controller. Perfect. And if we have a look at this, this will allow me to change the speed of a shaft. So as you can see here, this one is spinning faster than this one. Now, I did say there's one thing left. And well, that's about two stacks of zinc sheet metal. Which is like 32 blocks of zinc. And let's see how much I actually have. I might have enough oh i mean yeah that's great it might be just short or just enough boxing sheet metal oh it's just enough that's the exact amount i needed let's grab all of this now and head down there i'm gonna wait for night time here which it's almost soon so i can get a little more gunpowder now i hope that 26 is enough shots left oh what that oh what 2000 and we oh okay i can i can i can last 12,000 blocks i that that would should be enough so let's let's fire it up oh <gasps> Yo, what? No, that's insane. It's just like, vroom, 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 vroom. 
Bloom. And it's building for me. I don't even have to build anymore. Oh, my life just got so much easier. Oh, what are you doing down there now? Does it excava excavate it for me as well? Oh, it does. <gasps> oh, this is so amazing. It's doing the shafts I had put in below. I can just sit and watch this thing all day. And here comes the wall. I mean, we're starting to get a building here now. The question is if it's keeping my settings in this. Oh, it has. Oh, that's amazing. <gasps> Finally, Vplay mod decided to start working again. And the build took all of day 78 and a bit into day 79. Now I need to get these pigs from that pit up into there. That might be a little tricky. Follow me up here now. I don't think you guys can jump out. Okay, that's perfect. And we get another one in there. Oh, and it did place my redstone links. Oh, awesome. So let's flip that so we turn the whole thing off. Okay, and then if we hit that, we got a windmill spinning now. And this generates a lot of stress units. I don't have any uh, goggles, so I can't really see how much, but it's enough. Then this is set to 32. Okay, now this is a perfect time for all of this. So it's currently off. But if I flip this lever, everything starts spinning in here. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. So we have the fan spinning over here. We have the conveyor belts rolling. We got the piston. Oh, and it's going out. Okay, that's off now. So if we go ahead and sleep. Now when we wake up, this thing is going to power. That's going to harvest all of the carrots. There we go. Now it is. And that kid up there. Oh, and it's breathing them. Yes, yes, yes. And a baby comes out. Goes on the conveyor belt. Yes. And... Yes, it works! It works! Oh, okay, you probably didn't see what happened there, but what happened is, so the carrots get harvested every morning right over here, and that ends up in this item vault that wasn't working for some reason, but I fixed that, so it's fine. Then the carrots go out here, they hit this weighted, disp uh, uh, weighted ejector here, which makes them fly up here, then they get sucked into these. That in turn breeds the pigs, which we might see another one here soon. The piggy goes on the conveyor belt over here where I have my manual killing area because then I can hit them with looting. And then once the food comes, it will go into these hoppers here and it will land on this plate here, which will fling it over and it will start smoking them. Oh, it works. I'm, I'm so happy. On day 80, I want to start connecting all of the builds. So I headed into a nearby cave to find gravel to make coarse dirt. I then wanted to get straight to work on the path, but quickly realized how bad the terrain was. So I spent day 81 285 fixing that problem so that I could start mapping the path out on day 85. All of day 86 was spent on the path, first making it wider and then adding in coarse dirt on the edges to make it look a little bit more used and stuck into the terrain. Day 87 was basically the same, except I spruced up the path a little. Day 88 I decided to finish off the terrain between the string and pig factories by adding in a little bit of a retaining wall and extending down the terrain. Day 89 consisted of even more terrain work, adding in a small river flowing down along the string factory to power a water wheel. This was followed by yet another two days on working on the path, extending it up to the starter house. I wasn't fully happy with the look of the pig factory yet, so I spent day 92 adding in a pig pen at the bottom. I then realized that the carrots were not growing fast enough, so I decided to start adding in a carrot field on day 93. I finished the field up on day 94, adding in a few sweet berries and vegetation all around. Finishing up day 94, I added in a small tree. I liked the first tree so much that I spent day 95 gathering leaves and logs to build two more. And then we click play. And well, I still love the schematic Canada. It's so, oh my god, it's amazing. It's it's so amazing. Just look at it go. Oh, it's amazing. It's building building trees for me. Oh, it's fantastic. Day 97 and 98, I finally finished the string factory by adding in all of the create components to, in the future, be able to export items via train. And I think I've actually managed to produce, yep, 132 stack of pork. But it's day 99, which means this is the last day of this challenge because, well, the challenge was to do all of this before. 100 days. So let's just take a quick look at what we have done. First off, we built the starter base with my chest monster right outside, which I'll definitely need to clean up. But this right here was only a small portion of this 100 days. We have my very temperate farms and trees and everything in this area here. And it's when we start to follow this road here down towards the factories that it actually gets interesting. And I added in these trees to the back of the pig factory and I absolutely love them. I'm gonna be so 
happy adding in more of these in the future. And I try this neat trick that I saw in a B-dubs video where he put lighter leaves on one of the sides and it gives it way more and it gives you the illusion that the sunlight is hitting it and it just looks so awesome and then the actual factory as well with an amazing interior we have the pigs here we got all of the machinery back here the breathing everything. i have an issue i love the look of these blocks but they require massive amounts of iron to craft to address this i plan to utilize the create mod to create an iron mine this project took me over 50 hours to complete and has several complex machines and decorative buildings, but the most essential component, a train, to bring the entire operation together. Now, of course, I've been incredibly smart when designing this build, and I've decided to use a crazy amount of iron already. But luckily, I went on a mining spree on my stream the other day and got a lot of iron to use. So I just gotta get to crafting. Since I'm a hoarder, I had almost everything except a bit of andesite, which I went mining for. The andesite was used to create andesite alloy, and together with a bit of heat, I pressed iron into cast iron. The cast iron was used to create decorative blocks, while the alloy used to craft some create components. Now this is almost everything for the crusher, but I do need to make a few new machines. And I need that to make this crushing wheel because, well, as you can see, it's a very big crafting recipe. I need to quickly just melt up a stack of copper and zinc here. And with this, we can just throw that in the mixer here to make a little bit more brass. And then if you put the crafting table on the bottom, brass casing in the middle, and then the electron tube on the top here, you get 21 mechanical crafters. Instead of making a new power source, let's run down to the pig factory. Quickly go up on the roof here, place one of these right here, and then the mechanical crafters on top of this. And then we make our crafter here. Don't mind it clipping through the windmill, it's very, very temporary. And then if we grab a few materials here, and I should just be able to plunk these down here. With a ring with andesite alloys around the end. Andesite in the middle, and then some planks. Oh, it's moving. Oh, that is so slow. Ooh, and it's done. And it combines. Goes in. And yes, crushing wheels. Now I just need to do that two more times. Two hours later. And the last. One. Crushing wheels is the last thing I need for this. And that will be the second part of our process. And I'm thinking the first one will happen down here somewhere. And then we have to bring the cobblestone out of this cave up into the crushing that will be around here maybe. So I think if I take away a little bit of the ground down here, start a corner here, then we go three blocks wide for the train tracks, and then we head three blocks over in this direction, and we make a little bit of a square. If we then take these and extend them up, four, five, six, seven, I think to that height, before we start extending some beams across these. And I think this should be able to hold everything up. I mean, of course it can, it's Minecraft, but if we want to think about it a little bit realistically, then if you just take some vertical slabs, because, well, that's just awesome. Cross here, and I absolutely love these sheet metal blocks. I really wish they had something like this in vanilla. Then if we take away this block right here and this one, we can grab our crushing wheels and run them across from here to here. And I think you're starting to see where this crusher part comes in now. And then we can just stick two shafts on these for now. If we take these up one more block on these sides, on the short sides here, then we come in with some stairs and we can go around this whole thing. Then taking a few andesite trap doors, we can run that along the edge up here for a little splash of color. And then two polished andesite stairs like this. And now it's time to get a little technical. So a few smart shoots down here. Then we place an item vault up top of these. Then I want this stock by switch right here, looking into that block. Then if we grab a redstone link, we can plunk that there for later. Once this item vault here gets 80% full, this will send out a redstone signal and that will block new cobblestone from getting up so we don't clog the system and we have a lot of items just lagging the server. The world. I'm, I'm very alone here. And then we place a shaft here and another one next to that, making a super small little conveyor belt. We can take into this portable storage interface that will let us load the train and then for our second funnel on that. Perfect. And before we hook this up, I'm going to try to explain it at least. So the cobblestone gets into the top, it gets split into these three crushing wheels, the gravel gets put into this item vault which then gets deposited onto this conveyor belt. And using this portable interface here, it gets loaded onto the train, which you'll see it all in action later, but hopefully that makes sense. I'm also learning as we go here. So if this isn't the most efficient way to do stuff, 
I'm fully aware of that, but I think it looks awesome. Now, it might not be the prettiest back here, but it should work. And this is probably not efficient either, but it's fine. But this is looking epic right now. And even more so now that the conveyor belt is going up there. And I really love how this turned out. And I just gotta say, the big chains. Ah! Oh my god, mod, it is so much fun. And it's even connected down here. So once I power this right here, all of this is gonna activate and be powered. And while it was very fun building, I now gotta get back to material gathering. Because I gotta build the main factory. So for the actual factory, I should have most of the blocks if I just do a lot of crafting. So that's probably what I'm gonna do. I've made this mechanical saw, and I'm not sure if it has a limiter or not. But if there's one block touching the ground, then I cut this down now. Oh! Oh, that is... What? Okay. Holy wood. Oh my god. I've never seen this much wood so fast. So I've just shopped like nine stacks of wood in like a second. Second time gathering materials now. I got to work trading for bricks, doing a bit of crafting. Okay, maybe a lot of crafting and even a bit of squid hunting. And the last item, a dark oak door and make it a supported dark oak door. And with that, material gathering for the main factory is all done. And well, there's a lot of blocks. So a little bit of an issue now for the next part here is that we have a few villager houses here. And most importantly, my Fletcher villager is right where I wanna place this factory. So I'm gonna have to clear this area and get those moved. I don't think I'll have to remove this house, so I'm gonna start with running a rail from up here all the way down there. And then we can push you up now. All right, go fast, go fast, go fast. Oh, and here I go, removing all of the trees and the villager houses. Wow, look at that, just breaking the blocks. Am I just talking now to make this time lapse longer? Yes. Now, can I have two backpacks? I can. Okay, then I can put everything in backpacks because, well, there's a lot of blocks. This is actually such a huge help having these backpacks. It makes building a lot faster when you have so many blocks. But before we start building here, I need to take away a little bit of terrain. Because would this really be a stand build without me removing the terrain first? Okay, so this should be sufficient space now. I opted to build the create parts initially to visualize the layout a little better. My objective was to establish storage areas for gravel and iron, along with the necessary steps of washing the gravel and pressing the nuggets into iron ingots. While this looks very weird, it's also kind of cool to see how the machine actually works. And I think we can structure a really good factory around this as well. I'll try to explain now that we can see everything just to make it a little easier. So, plan is to have the train come in here, unload the gravel through here, and this will be the gravel storage. The gravel will then get transported along here, picked up by these mechanical arms. The gravel then gets put on these here, and from the fans up top, we're gonna blow water down on them. Takes roughly 30 seconds, and then this other claw over here is gonna grab the flint, put it in that one, and grab the iron and put it in that one. The iron is then gonna come up this line, go through this tunnel here just for decoration, then it's gonna punk into this little base in here, get compacted into iron nuggets, and then go into the iron nugget storage. And yep, that's how it works. And I figured all of this out through trial and error, so why don't you try and click that subscribe button? Oh god, that was awful. We're gonna need a floor in this factory, of course, so let's start with extending in a stone floor first. Perfect, and now we'll cut a few holes in here. And then we can come in with some sanded and trod and stone here to just make it a little more interesting. And this is just what we did over at the pig factory in the last episode. Now, to start this first wall off, I want to take these fluid tanks and tiny stone bricks. And then I want to use these to kind of mark out where the wall is going to go. Just give me something to go off at least. And also to add a little bit of decoration, adding in a tank here with some water later. And just add a splash of color and make it something interesting to look at. And then we can come in with a few bricks here and start laying them in. Laying these bricks up all of the way to the roof line. So this is kind of where I want the height, but it's a little boring right now. Oh yeah, that looks a lot better. Splitting it up a little bit and adding in that little bit of a highlight up there. Why were they so annoying to place? But yeah, that adds a little more. And then we'll add in a line of square glass at the top. And then the stipe under, just to make it a little different. And of course, doing the same here at the top. 
and two dark oak support. And yes, this is starting to look good. Now I just have to do the sides and back. Yeah. I started with the side wall, adding in a whole bunch of windows on the second floor and a bunch of decorations before moving on to the back wall where I changed the decoration up a bit but keeping it quite similar. For the last wall, I left a big hole where I could later add a jut out and of course, keeping the same decorations as before. I gotta say, this looks a lot better with the walls in. Even though it looked cool with the skeleton, the walls added a lot. So the train is going to park here and we're gonna have these three blocks being rails. So we'll have the wall over here. So let's extend in a wall here. Can't forget to put in a little bit of dripstone here, just to still keep up the themes. And then create a sloped roof. Quickly add in the windows. We then take the dust bricks and cut dripstone slab. Place these along here. And then these slabs on top of here to create the train platform. And this right here is just how we did it over at the string factory. Then we can take these metal girders here and, well, start adding these in like this. After the outcropping was done, I decided to add the slanted roof on that, and then the main roof I used slabs to not make a super high roof. And with that, the outside of the building is fully done. But we still have a little bit of work to do on the inside. So let's start with extending the second floor. And now we just need a way up there. So heading up the back here on our catwalk, let's extend one across from here. And out on this side. And perfect. And now we can get up here because, well, this is the output for iron, so we need to be able to get here. And then so it's not too dark in here, let's add in a few lights. And one down at the bottom here as well, just because I don't want any torches. Some jungle support, and we'll add this right here. Take away the top and make them a little big. And this is currently flying, so let's grab the big chains here and extend those up into the roof. And then the jungle support around these. We'll extend that down an extra block because we do need a source of water over here. Now to hold the water in place, let's get some iron bars and place them here. And how fitting that we take another water from the iron golem well. And there we go. Now this here looks a little weird, so let's add in a big chain. Flip these upside down and extend out two of them. So now that one's sitting upside down. I don't know why it's sitting upside down, but... Yes. Now on this bag, if I grab the display link, content observer, and Nixie tubes, I want to add one little last thing here. So we put this. No. Put this looking into. No. Put this looking into. No. Look into this. There we go. And if we add three Nixie tubes right up here, like there. Now that's the target here. Amount of matching items. And yeah, there's zero of that item. And that should be this building completed. Now I could very well start adding in the train tracks and all of that now, but. I do have a little bit of iron left, so before we do that, let's go do some more material gathering for a decorative building. Ooh, that's a one. Oh, hello. Now for these next buildings, I do need to do a little bit of exploring because I do need to find a mango swamp. But I think I'm going to start gathering the blocks first and then we'll take a little bit of a break. I traded a bit more with the villagers and there also wasn't as much crafting involved, but still a fair bit because this is modded after all. And I'm going to take my trusty horse here and well, let's head out on that adventure I mentioned. Because I need to find a mangrove swamp. And also if you have any name suggestions for my horse here, then please leave them in the comments. And is that mangrove trees I see? It is. Perfect. Now I didn't bring any fences for the horse, so I'm just going to let it wander out here in the desert. I'll be back. Buddy, okay, don't go too far. Oh, I mean, I used to love the forest thing before this, but this thing here, right here, just makes the forest thing so much more fun. And then I also need a little bit of mud while we're here because, well, mud, yes. And my horse hasn't left me, perfect. And with this backpack full of goodies, let's head back home. Home sweet home. And with that little adventure over, it's time to get back to gathering up blocks. So we're gonna have to move some villagers now again. So I wanna create this little dirt box here to move them all to. I quickly moved the two villagers that were in the way to the dirt box. With everything cleared up, I started work on the first of two buildings. This was the Hoist Tower, which is a building commonly found in real mines. I decided to make this building look like a very Swedish house, so adding in red walls using mangrove and a white edge to the roof. Now next to this building, let's start extending in a little bit of brick here. Starting to extend it a little bit on the worn here on the corner, and we'll wrap this all the way around here. So I'm thinking this for the shape here, continuing on adding in all of the walls here. 
before we get to the roof here, I want to pop in on the inside. And using a few temporary blocks, let's add in some redstone lamps. Just because I'm super lazy and I don't really want to do an interior because I'm never really going to be up here. And then, of course, we got to just power all of these. Popping through to the outside, let's grab our glass again. We can add that in here on the outside. Then we can grab some bird support here and use those as window shutters because I absolutely love this texture. And we'll shut some of these out and leave others flat on the wall. And of course, we got to take away the big part and make them a little bigger. And if we pop up here, we can add some sink sheet metal here as a few detailed blocks just to switch it up a little bit. We can then place a few fence gate details here on the outside. Then let's run some tough blocks down here to all the way up here, of course, and back down on the other side. Then we can extend some polished cut and the side across here. And we make that a little different over the windows and put an upside down one. Why not? Now I not add in a little small shoot thing here on the side. No idea what it's supposed to be, but it looks kind of cool. And a trapper. Another last thing here is going to be to add in a little bit of a shim. is because we are going to have some sort of motor in here to power the elevator. And now the last thing here is going to be connecting this to that. And hopefully this lines up. Otherwise, I have to move this whole thing. Looks like it's going to line up. At least if I break this block in, I can add in the last two right there. Oh! Oh, come on. That, well, how, where did you even come from? Now the hoist tower and building is all completed. And this is actually inspired from real mines where I found some picture of these buildings and I thought they looked really cool. Since I decided to build the roof up here out of some iron, I'm all out of iron. And well, can you guess what I need iron for? Train tracks and the train. If we head over here, I got this cobble gen medium here, which I'm going to upload because this is the only part of the build that I decided to not build myself. And it's the cobblestone farm just because I needed like 86,000. And even though I could probably do that, it will probably be super bulky and expensive. So I just decided to use someone that's really smart to build instead. Now give me that material checklist and let's get this real quick. It sh shouldn't be too expensive. Even more material gathering or should I say just crafting at this point? Uh -huh. So, funny story guys, I have to mine a little more iron for this iron farm. And the final thing I need is three buckets of lava, which we can grab them down here. Okay, so I think I have it in the right position now. Run a quick material check. Uh, yep, everything is good. That should be enough. Let's click play and watch my favorite thing. Just go at it. Oh, I love this thing. It's so nice. Things seems to be working fine. That's not good. My game just completely crashed. Okay, world be fine, please. Oh, it's fine. Seems to be working fine again. That looks a little broken. Now we need to put some lava in. Oh, no, 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 no. That is our pump. Looking into that. Then we can place a basin right here. Fill this with lava. Yes. Okay, perfect. So grabbing yet another water bucket from the iron golem well. Perfect. Now this all should be functioning if I give it rotational power. And with that, almost all of the main infrastructure is done, except the train and hooking everything up to power. He's still a little scared on that one. We can either do a steam engine, windmill bearing, or water wheel. Water wheel is gonna be pretty bad. So we're gonna need a ton of them. Windmill bearing, it's possible. Steam engine is probably gonna be the one that's most worth doing. All right, so here in my testing world now, that creates 2,000 and this uses 256. That's like 1,750. What if I just powered this? This creates 3,000. As temporary source, we can use this. Okay, I think I've got this figured out now. So these generate the exact same amount. They're the exact same amount of wool slash sail blocks. But if we look how you make sail blocks, you need anisite alloy and the wool. And since this is going to be underground, I'm just going to use the wool. It's going to look super ugly, but it's going to work. What happens if I just put a cube of wool? We're just going to put a few cubes of wool underground. <laughs> and I think we're going to need three of those. So I'm going to need like four stacks of wool. Okay, I now have four stacks of white wool and two windmill bearings. I made a, I made a sheet pen over there. So I think the best spot for this would be somewhere down here. It's close to that factory and close to this. I made a room in the mountainside and filled it with some wool along with some glue to get the windmill spinning. Okay, so did these produce max? That's max. That's not max, but close enough. Now, first, we have to connect that up to this, which is simple enough. Just running that in there. Power that, which should power that, which should power this. We connect that to that. Now, this is running. Now, hopefully, this should link up. And yes, it does. Okay. Okay, perfect. Now, everything is spinning. Busy hands, that's active. That's blowing the right way. That's spinning the right way. 
Okay, everything is moving. Okay, so everything is spinning. Cobblestone is flying. Now we can see if everything works up here as well. And we'll just drop all of it in here. And then boom. And yep, it's coming out. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, cool. Iron nuggets are going up. They're going through the furnace. Up into that. And they're being compacted. And we have our first iron. Yes. We have a factory that produces iron. And we already have 12 iron. Perfect. 13. Yes. <gasps> oh my god. So to continue now, I need to press up a few brass here. I'm also going to need a few andesite casings. And if we take these brass, put them like that. And then three andesite alloys, we get three brass hands. And then we put three electron tubes on the top. Three andesite casings and the brass hands. And we should get three deployers. I actually missed saw a thing. So I need an iron block instead with a... And a say casing and a shaft and a mechanical press. And for now, if we just pop in here, if I install the stressometer here, so we do have 2600 to play with. Okay, good thing we made these so big. We're gonna need two deployers like that. So then we're gonna need a mechanical press. So, stone slabs. Yes, we're making train tracks. Okay, okay, three and a half stacks should be enough because all we have to do is hook that up. Oh, that's creepers. No, all we have to do is hook that up, up to here. So I'm gonna get to work on trying to get this in. Okay, so quick little update here. I have gotten the path from there all the way around in the front here, but I still have to do the turns. So that's, that's, oh, that's a lot of digging. Took the first 25 iron from the iron factory here, and I need some more train tracks. Up and bop. More train tracks, yes. But now we can finally hook up these two, and everything should be good to go. Okay, back at the schematic cannon here, I should have train gravel, yes. Upload that, and yep, that's quite a few things. Let's quickly grab all of this oh no we need train casings okay we have everything now except the train casings and controls and to make these train casings you need sturdy sheets and sturdy sheets you get by this recipe sequence and grab some few pieces of obsidian here throw these in the crushing wheel and then we put these here Ooh. now we just need to press these twice and sturdy sheets one of these has to be turned into train schedules oh Oh, not again! Now we're gonna have to turn all of these into casings. And to do that, we just take a few brass casings and turn those into train casings, right? Yes. Which is super easy. Just craft a compass and put that next to train casings. Two train stations. Other thing isn't hard to already either. Just craft a lever, train casing, and a precision mechanism. And you get some train controls. Now that is everything that we need. Fire. It crashed my game. And here the train is. Isn't it looking amazing? I've just got one step left. I, I gotta glue it. Assemble. Controlling. Everything clearly isn't connected. Try number two. Okay, that's moving. Ready to go up this bend. You know, I'm falling out. Should be able to just park it here. Oh, and it's getting filled up. Okay, good. Is it full yet? It is full. Okay, let's bring it up. Oh no, I'm gonna hit my head. The tunnel isn't tall enough. Oh no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Now we can bring it on in through the tunnel. I can't see much. Um <clears throat> I can't see much, um, like you can see there. And we're just gonna park it up here, act like nothing happened. No, 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 no. And that does the kissy kissy and it unloads. Yes. What if I were to just like Oh, leads. Thank you. How do you feel about being our new driver? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I can tell you're already excited. Oh, oh yes. Oh. Oh, yes. And look at him. Look at him go. Oh. Oh, it's perfect. And we already have 150 iron. And I really don't have to do much more to get iron now. This guy will just travel back and forth, leaving the iron. And whenever... He won't be traveling back and forth because there is no driver. Um... R.I.P. With the train now done, all of the create parts are also completed, which means I can finally start fixing the surrounding terrain. Having already spent more than 40 hours on this video, I could have considered it finished by now. However, that's not how we do things here. Therefore, I invested an additional hour in clearing the area around the iron mine, painstakingly removing path blocks. I have to admit, just clearing away all of the dirt paths made this look so much better. But we can do better. I decided to spend the next little while polishing up the tracks, first adding in deep slate under them. Running out of deep slate here, but I'm trying to get the natural curve on these train tracks so they're not floating and we can actually run up them now. But I gotta get more deep slate. 
With the deep slate all added in, I moved on to fixing the terrain around the train track so it stops floating. Now simply fixing the terrain here under the train tracks makes this look a lot better. But there's still a lot of detailing we need to do and next up I want to tackle the tunnels because they look really bad. Oh here's some more tough, okay good. I want to make these into some pillars and then the deep slate to cut deep slate walls. Oh yeah, here we have it. This is what I need. Scorch you. This is where the tunnel begins, I declare. So we're gonna bring this tough up like five blocks on either side here to mark that the tunnel begins. Then we gotta take away the walls now because I gotta extend in these deep slate walls instead. And this is gonna give it a little more width than just using a normal wall. Now in here where we start to get a little bit deeper inside of the tunnel, I want to start extending in some Scorgia walls on the bottom and the top first because that's how the shadows would form. I heard it coming. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Note to future self. Stop the train when working on the track. Stupid long journey and breaking but stupid. Hey, so my stuff. Thank you. They're all spread out. Gonna replace the train track. <gasps> that wasn't close at all. It's really nothing special, but it looks way better than just a tunnel into the mountain. Now I just have to replicate it down here. And with that, the second train tunnel is also done, which looks a lot better than the dirt and stone we had before. And now, since I won't be working in the tunnels, I feel safe giving the chicken back this. Wait, how much iron do I- oh, I noticed that something was still lacking with the dirt building up beside the train tracks. To address this, I made the decision to slightly move the dirt back and incorporate several stone blocks for added variety. Now, next up here, I want to gather up a bunch of birch leaves. Just because I want to build a few birch trees, of course. Now, I would like to keep a little bit over two stacks of these as normal birch leaves. I want to turn those into orange birch leaves. And I want to turn some of these into golden birch leaves. And another few into red birch leaves. I'm going to need quite a few birch fences. And then also a few birch wood. Now, I'll actually be using the schematic cannon to build this. So, I hope it doesn't break. And with breaking, I mean, of course, crashing my games. So now, with a little bit of gunpowder, let's watch it build. With one final push to complete this project, I embarked on achieving a goal that I had initially mentioned in the first episode, creating a connected city. And well, to have a connected city, we need roads. With the original road now reaching the iron mine, I had to swiftly complete the road leading down to the actual factory. And with that crucial step finished, we can finally call this iron mine complete. I really want to continue building factories and creating farms, but as I do this, my storage monster continues to grow outside of my starter base. Yep, outside my starter house. I never even moved in. So today, let's deal with the mess of create machines and chests that is my storage area and create a brand new warehouse with rotating storages, a train station, and so much more. Now I have to decide on where to put this storage building because this is a building I'm going to be coming back to back and back and back. So it has to be very central. I quickly decided to draw a plan over the surrounding area, deciding to put the warehouse in the middle of it all. And I think this little hill site here is going to be absolutely perfect and that we can build the create components like in the mountain instead. Now to get this build started today, I... Ooh, that's a tree. I already have a little bit of a head start with these items at least, so I better just continue. These in progress here on the material gathering, but I gotta go and get some obsidian real quick. And here we have some obsidian, and I need enough for two portals. Perfect. 20 obsidian. That should be enough for today's episode. And since I'm smart and write down coordinates, we can just go into the nether and go straight over there. And well, hopefully we spawn in a desert here. And yep, this is where I left my horse last time. Oh, which we still have to name. I've got the perfect name for it. But I'm gonna spend a little bit of time here gathering up some sand, sandstone, and mud. With loads of blocks and a very broken shovel, let's head back home. And on our way, we might as well grab a little bit of warp wood, because I think I need a little more. Back home, I need to find somewhere to put all of this stuff. 
Holy pit of iron golems. Why why are there so many? And why are so many of them in that fenced off area? Now the final thing, need a brass casing. Quickly just sandpaper that down. That brass casing and a cog. And we got our sequence gear shift. All of these items are necessary to start this build. Now, before we can get started on building, I need to empty out these backpacks so I have a lot of space for new blocks. And now I have to search through this mess to try and find a name tag, which I believe I have one, but it doesn't seem like it. Uh oh. And in this house over here, though, I do have my mending villager. That's a lot of impaling books, but at least he levels up. I, I, I really don't need these. And name tags. Now, there were a lot of good name suggestions for this horse. And here's my anvil. What it. What is it doing here? And the name I've decided to go with is Puru. <laughs> this one was suggested by Burning and had a really funny backstory, and that's why it got picked. Another one of my favorites was Dipokuros, which in Italian means a creative and fast guy. But I've been putting it off long enough. I need to get these moved over to the build site and just start working. I'm gonna make a third backpack here to hold all of the things because I don't wanna have to be going back and forth to a chest if I can hold everything in my inventory. If I were to die now and lose all of these items, I might just quit. And with this building, I was actually really lost on how I wanted it to look in the beginning. So I jumped into Fresco and drew up a quick sketch. Just like 90% of all my builds, I have to do a lot of digging before I can even start placing the first blocks. Luckily, I prepare almost every single building beforehand in creative mode. So I know exactly which blocks I need to mine and not mine. At this point, I've already spent over 12 hours on this video, designing and gathering materials. And if you want to see more videos just like this in the future, consider subscribing as I'm trying to hit 10,000 subs before the end of the year. So let's start building and we'll start extending in the main structure's foundation first here. And we'll do this by extending in a lot of deep slate here and uh, well, a little bit of tough as well for a few highlights to make it a little more interesting than it would be otherwise. Also adding in a little bit of mud over here for a little bit of a darker spot in the wall. And inside of here, let's start extending in a little bit of coarse dirt as our floor for this area. And this is where our bulk storage is going to be, which we will set up in just a second. And we do a little bit of wood and some gravel. Finishing off that exact floor in the middle here, or of course adding it in on the final little stretch right over here. Then as we did use deep slate under the train tracks up at the top and oh, let's wait a second here. If I grab the train track, hold this in my off hand. I have used this before, but I completely forgot about it. And thank you so much for everyone that reminded me in the last episode. If I have a block here and I just place that now. Oh yeah. Oh, that's so much faster. But now that's all the track that I have, but it's also all that I need in the building. Eventually that's going to go out in this direction, the train yard where I can experiment with trains and in this direction into some tunnels that are going to lead all through the city. Right now, I only know two things I want to store in bulk and I just thought of a third one. So I'm going to have to get more vaults because I've only made enough for two. But popping around on the back here, we can extend this all the way over this way and same with Nope, never mind. But same with this one. If we then take some catwalk stairs and catwalk, we can build up from these blocks up to here. Where we then can extend out a catwalk from the edge here. And oh, do I hate placing these, but they look so good. It's worth it. Now we can add item vaults one block in from this just for a little bit of variation at least. And here on this one, I want to add one. And this one can get three of them. So there's a few items I know I'll get and use a lot more. And that's these four items. And then I, I also need to add deep slate. But since I upgraded my drill, I just have so much of it. This one's gonna be for stone and this one's gonna be for dirt variations. Now let's grab our strip dark oak here and dark oak slabs and spruce support. As this building is gonna get quite tall and I need to add in a floor here so I don't fall all the way to the bottom and die. Over here, I decided to go even simpler and just use dark oak. Before we add in the rest here, I wanna add in some spruce support and make the other roof go up one below for just a little bit of interest at least. Yeah, and even without the dark oak slabs, that still looks pretty good because of the trim. And now we can add in the second layer. Now next up, I want to start working on the main structure of this. So some support first and in the middle, yes. Where we then take some spruce logs and layer those every other so that we can make a little bit of an overhang here. 
Here I'm really going to the root with overhangs like this on buildings, where we add slabs in the middle of here, of course, and then some butters on the outside just for that little bit of detail. Then I want to take some packed mud and go around this. And since I already know I want to add in a floor in this level, I'm just going to fill this here with some regular cobblestone, just so that I can build on top of it with ease, but still not waste bricks. And yep, you heard that 100% correct. On this very medieval looking base, I want to be a start extending a brick factory looking building. Really going for a mix of the two styles here, which I think we're really going to enjoy. And this to mix the style I use a lot in my hardcore world with the style I've been using here is something that I want to do more, and especially in the future village transformation I want to do. With my rambling now over, I continue to power through building up the walls all the way up to the desired height. Oh, this looks so very weird with all of the holes in it, but don't worry, that's for create components later. This is why sometimes I build the create components first, because then the walls make more sense. But this right here will be where our main storage is. Up in this little area up here is gonna be our overflow, and then, well, the bulk is already started down here. But let's just start giving this inside here a little bit of love with a floor, first of all. And a few torches here, so we don't spawn any creepers. Next up, I actually want to start working a little bit on the storage. So I'm gonna grab all of my cabinets here and my barrels, which will be our main storage. On the middle one here, I want to start with adding in some dark oak cabinets at the bottom. And we'll follow that with some spruce before we add in a little bit of oak on the top here. And I have these cabinets as well. These are spruce, so these are gonna have spruce in them. And that way I can tell super easily. And then on these other ones here, we're gonna just have some varnished barrels. That's what they're called. Because they're not spruce and they look all right. But this is very little storage. And you may ask yourself, how do we fix this? We rotate them. Oh, this is so exciting. On the back side here, you see I've dug out a lot of extra room. And eventually I'll have to connect the mountain up to the building side. But, but here we start adding in even more barrels down here. But do you know what's even better than two sets of barrels? Four. Okay, now this is starting to look amazing. Next up here, I'm gonna have to grab almost all of my brass funnels and, well, yeah, start placing them on these. Each one of these needs brass funnels because I want to automatically sort everything here. And, wow, this feels weird placing this many brass funnels. Oh, no, it's miscounted them again. And another stack of brass funnels. Perfect. And now I can finally add in the rest. I only need that many, but I will need these in the future for sure. With a few temporary blocks here, we can place them in a shaft. Another shaft and hook those up together. And this will be where we bring our items through. This looks so cool. And now comes one of the most annoying things I have to do for this project, which is grab the mechanical arms I want to use. Click on every single one of these funnels here. Then we just click on these to mark that is where it's going to be taking them from. And then I can finally place it down. Even if I'm holding one, another one in my inventory, this one has no target. So I have to do it twice for all of these. I just remember, I have no idea how I'm going to power these. I think I'm going to have to bring something up through the wall here. Yeah, that could work. Now comes the one part. How are we going to rotate this? Because I need to connect all of this up to make it one contraption first. And then we already have one of the sides sorted out. If I grab this block right here, and I can glue that all the way over to this one. And that means the wall will be rotating, which I just realized is the wall blocks that I'm gonna have to power somehow with cogs to get all of these spinning. I'm actually gonna have to rethink this whole thing a little bit here and remove these blocks. Add in the cog wheels in the middle here instead. I can always hook this up later but I just need them in now. Then grabbing a few andesite casings we can cover these so they are actual full blocks at least. Now that can at least get powered so that's good. Because I need to bring a conveyor belt and have a little space here we put the mechanical bearing all the way back here where I then need to start creating a very weird set of blocks. Now this little spaghetti thing over here is what actually makes this whole thing rotate and hopefully I have glued everything correctly now so it all works. And I just remembered I could actually power this with a water wheel forever because well this is the only thing it powers and it's never going to use more than this sequence gear shift and yep that's already the correct one and i've got to say the water wheels in 5.1 are so much nicer because you only have to have one little source like this then i have to get under here somehow which if i grab a trap door here i can just flip that under and place it here and with a button here now if i press this we should get a new set of barrels oh no uh oh that's not good that, that it, it, it didn't it didn't do as it was supposed to. Uh oh, I, I forgot to nick up something. Uh oh, just a little bit of work now and it works. It works. I can switch my storages. 
Oh, it's so cool. I, I'm just gonna sit here and press this button. So that's at least the main storage done. Oh, wait, actually, it's not. I have to redo all of the mechanical arms. Oh. Now we can go ahead and add in our windows here, just randomizing the blocks. Fix this a little more here. We'll extend up some spruce beams up into the roof. Do that on this side and then across in the middle. Then with some dark oak stairs, we can just plunk those down in here so that we can walk up into this area. And with our windows in and as few of the holes gone, there's still so many more, but I'll get to that in a little bit. As for now, I'm gonna grab all this rough mud I have and well, start placing that in right up here. I don't know why, but I just really, really like this texture. It's, it's really nice. Do you also want to add in a trim of granite going all the way around the outside here? Bit of a door for this little spot in here. Stair and a catwalk stair as well, just to get in here. I do however want to add in a few vertical slabs up here, and well, it, it it's pretty insane. Let's grab a little bit of normal mud here now, and we'll fill that in just up here. All along here, where I then want to bring out some train hulls, which sounds weird, but trust me here, as we can mark out one, two, and three of these here. And now we just start building these upwards, and I think you're starting to see what this will be. And up here, we also want to add in an andesite line, just to make a little bit of detail, and yep. And then on the top top here, we do some campfires, and yep, they are pretty cool. Down here, if I can find my chains, there they are. Flip those upside down, lay some of these on the outside here, so it looks like it's kind of holding the smokestacks down. Then we can stick our chains on the bottom of this. And yep, that definitely added that little bit of extra detail. Since I did write industrial roof in on my sketch here, let's just add some air vents. Now let's move on to the inside again, because I do want to fix the inside area up here before I add in the roof, because otherwise it's going to get just very, very crap. So to get up there, we do two inside stairs, which can connect to the doorway that's here. Then we can continue those up this way, where we here continue with the cat walks if i can place them the right way thank you we do those all the way over to the wall because that might be useful for something later and then we can continue this up to here i think where we can start yet another dark oak roof slash floor perfect floor walls with a lot of holes in them now next up here i want to get a shaft running from all the way over here and this will be where the items are arriving and then they're going to go out on the side again create a shaft from there to here for chest same thing on this side and then we just copy this again one block up here and well here you start to see why i can't use that door now for once i'm going to use be using a few normal chests here then i made a lot of andesite funnels because this won't be sorted so it actually doesn't matter to use the brass one. Perfect there. Let's add a few polished deep state slabs above these so we can still open those. We'll also take this time where we have the deep state out to just add a ring around the top here as well. And then we come in with our mud yet again. I wanted to turn my brain off for a moment and just build. So I decided to add a tower next to the big one where we could send our conveyor belts up and into the system. Perfect little side entrance as well into the main storage area and also east of access up here, which I definitely need to light up, but we still have the main entrance to fix. So starting off really similar to what we did on the building, it's actually going to be very similar. It's actually the same block palette and detailing. Yet again, adding in the walls for the fifth or fourth time now. Then after the walls are done, we can grab all of our blue blocks again, or we start adding that in on top of this, of course. Popping down from the roof here, let's start extending a little bit of spruce support down here for a little bit of a walkway and the balcony. On top of these, we can come in with a few lecterns, and I gotta get some trap doors for these in just a little bit. But first, we can add in some trap doors in here, along with this little bit over here. Some spruce on the inside here for a door. Then bring in a line of spruce planks on the floor here, filling in a few windows with some iron ornate window, yes. And some panes there before we add in a little bit of spruce right along here. We'll add another line of this up here for just another splash of color or to break something up. I'm not really sure. The back is looking great, everybody. Finally, the time had come to connect everything up. I started off with the bulk storage before moving on to the main storage. 
I also extended the belts all the way around the building up to the old. The building was still missing that little bit of personality, so I also took this time to add in a few extra details. The front side was especially lacking, so I created a pop-up on the upper layer with a super simple roof and a flower bed. Now next up here, I want to craft something from a new mod that I have added. And this should be everything I need. So bucket, gunpowder, and some red dye, and I get graffiti. And if I just scaffold all the way up here on this side, where I have a little bit of a flat area up here. And on this block here, we just click, we get this little white thing. I open this and you can actually see this from quite far and it says storage. Oh my god, that's lovely. I wanted to do it with banners, but then I remember I just installed this mod, so why not do it like this? And if you want some graffiti or some fan art in this world, then join my Discord, link in the description, and just send it to me there. But also, I I absolutely love this building. Oh, what I'm doing? Um, I'm totally not over here gathering wool to make another big ugly windmill on the ground. No, that that's just not how I do things. And whoop. windmill power. This is how it works. I promise. And then a big line of a shaft going this way. Okay, epic. Every single conveyor belt is now spinning the correct way. But I still need to get the arm spinning. Now, this I definitely want to speed all the way up to 256. And there's zoom in. Gearbox, gearbox. And another gearbox. That up there and that up to there. And then... That to there, and spinning, 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 and spinning. Perfect. Now this right here is the moment that some people might just call this quits. Everything works, so let's move on to the next project. But I've already spent almost 20 hours on this, so I might as well see it through to the end. To begin this final push, I booted up my stream and got to work on fixing the surrounding areas around the factory. That was a really good stream and I even added an input chest. And while well, it also meant that I was able to input all of my items into the storage. Yeah, I have not set up the filters yet. I have actually set up a few filters for the wood types at least. But this side of this room is just looking so empty and I made this big for a reason. And that extra space is actually for these machines that that I have still not upgraded. I made these before day 30 in this world. I'm now over 250 days, by the way. And it's time that these get some well-deserved speed upgrades because they are so slow. I need it all, thank you very much. But this area is looking a lot better already. Now just place a temporary barrel here in the middle where I can put all of the create stuff that I probably might also need in just a second. Now, if I come up to my chests up here, I have a lot of belts over. Nice. What else could I need? Gearboxes are always good to have. Oh, this is so nice. Having all the create stuff organized into like a few boxes. So let's start off with adding in a conveyor belt going from there to here. And this will be for a little sawmill right here. So I've actually already got the saw as well, which we can just place in right there. Now go ahead and rotate the storage to my spruce box. I need a few spruce planks. So with my carpenter's table over here, let's make some basket woven ones. And we'll place that all in front here, continuing all the way over to this place. We can grab some dark oak stuff. Oh my god, it's so nice. Or we can start detailing this a little bit with a few spruce support here. Let's skip a few blocks here as well, just to add that little extra detail. Now, I have one blaze burner, but I'm gonna need a second one to make cast iron here. Let's go ahead and make three more propellers for three more encased fans. And we create a few more depots as well. One, two, three, four. And we do another one there for a crusher. And we have a blaze burner here with a basin on top of it for another press and then this will be our mixer over here and then these four here will be for our fans oh i need one more fan oh and if i just grab four of those try to locate a nether rack up here oh i saw the one there yep i actually forgot that a blaze burner is such a cheap recipe oh oh villager what, what are you doing in here anyways trip into the nether to go and grab a blaze of course yeah, me yoink that and oh, oh no, I'm gonna leave now. Bye, thanks. Oh no, that's so in the way. I don't have a sword with me. <laughs> oh, oh, that's why I don't like this. Quick, 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 quick. Ah! Okay, second place burner going in, and we can make a second metal press, which we can plonk the mechanical mixer over there. Metal press and metal press, and then yes, I do know I can rotate these. By the way, uh, I just 
one more. Oh, there we go. And vertical gearbox, vertical gearbox there, and another vertical gearbox up here, where we can add some shafts between there and up here, and then a cog on this one to spin that, of course. We'll head up here, and we'll add the rotation speed controller right there. And we're gonna change the speed to 256. Yep, it's gonna be going fast. And with a few encased chain drives going up in this direction, we can add our fans facing downwards. I want to add in some dark oak support all around this. And well, maybe it's not the most realistic that uh, these wooden supports here are holding lava, but um, I don't care. Go ahead and craft up a soul campfire and a regular campfire. And then we can place these in now uh, right there and there. And for some reason, the, the fan blows through it. I don't know why it works, but I like it. And we can prep our iron bars from the bottom of this all the way along here. And now I just need a bucket of lava, which, oh yeah, I have right here. Never mind. That wasn't hard at all. Yoink. And then we can add in the lava right over here. Perfect. Now I should have every single machine here that I need. I got the sawmill, I've got the fans, I've got the presses, and I've got a whisk. And need a clutch as well, along with a redstone link, of course. Heading up here one final time, we can go ahead and add in clutch I made right up here, and everything is spinning, or, okay, not everything, the fans are spinning right now. And we'll go ahead and add a redstone link, flip that to receive mode. And now everything stops, perfect. Then we just extend a shaft up to there. And if we now flip this lever, everything should start spinning. <sighs> uh oh I was scared that was gonna happen. Why don't we just pop down over here, around, and we uh, break that, and then... Ooh, yeah, I'm missing a little bit there. Luckily, this isn't a problem a few water wheels can't fix, right? And then one, two, three, four, five, and a six one. But this is the most beautiful mess I've ever made. But everything's spinning again, at least. And we have... Zero remaining. Yep, okay, I... I'll be happy with that. We're not adding any more machines. But this looks pretty epic, to be fair. Now, I also gotta get my shipped workbenches down here in place because I use these a lot. Now, the last thing I need for this inside to be fully functional is, well, to apply all the filters that I want. And I have no idea how many hours that's gonna take me, but probably a few. So I should probably just get to it, shouldn't I? Now, before I get onto some detailing, I wanna build another building and I need a garage for my drill. So let's get my schematic cannon out of the storage. And all right, I got my material checklist here as well. So I'm just gonna get to gathering all of this. And hopefully the new storage will help me out a ton in this. I've got to say, the new storage room is absolutely amazing. Even though I'm missing a few items in the filters still, that doesn't matter because it's so much faster. But I just need a few dark oak logs here and then quickly open into the mine and grab some limestone before we can start building. Oh, where did you even come from? Oh, where did you... <laughs> Hello? Alright, everything's been gathered up and let's just move it right outside the door since this building is literally right here. And I mean literally right outside the back door. Let's run a quick material check. And yep, that's everything I need. And whoop. So just to get added in a millstone as a little bit of a ship. No smoke from this one because I want to save a little on the lag. But now the best part is I can just take all of these where I can just dump it all into this chest and it will get sorted. Nope, that's my axe. Hey, thank you for bringing my axe back to me. And back at the starter base here, I need to just plunk that and grab this drill and place that there. We have enough space to get in and out of here. Now I need to hook up some portable interfaces to this, so... Place that. Oh no. Okay, so I'm gonna need four portable storage interfaces. And this isn't gonna be a fast process, so I think I can just use one water wheel. And bonk, and everything's spinning the right way in here. Perfect. Of course, it won't work because this isn't glued to the actual contraption. Oh, but that's so nice. I can actually unload this now. But this was just a small little side project that I wanted to do in today's video because, well, we were cleaning up my starter base area, and this really needed a home. I still need to do a little tear for me here. But so do I on the main building as well of today. So there was not much to think about here. It was just time to get to terraforming. I started off terraforming the garage for the drill. And then I moved on to the main storage building, fixing up the terrain around that as well. Now that it's cleaned up a little bit around the storage and the garage here. I first of all want to connect a pathway leading from those stairs there around and up to the entrance to the garage. Eventually, I think we want this pathway also leading up in this direction, but I'm not really sure on that yet. So we're just going to have this for now.
I was in a pathing mood after I finished the path connecting the storage building up to the drill garage. So I continued to add in pathways, this time connecting the storage building all the way over to the spider farm and the main road network. Just gotta gather up a few acacia leaves here for a few custom trees, of course. Okay, quickly gotta run back up into my storage. Where did I put that gunpowder? There it is. Load up the schematic cannon again because I absolutely love this thing and it's so nice for building trees. And with the addition of those trees, I can finally call this project completed. Finally, I have moved away from my starter based mess into this amazing storage building, fully equipped with an automatic storage system. But what is an awesome warehouse without any resources stored? So today, I want to create a lumber mill complete with both automatic tree farms and a sawmill. Before we get building this one, I have to do a little bit of preparation. So if we just do this. Oh. oh. Aha. Gotta love some good old deforestation to start off a project. Now with the area prepared a little bit, I gotta gather up a few blocks because well, I need to build nine tree farms. Some of them are quite simple and then their nether trees are also quite advanced. Just gotta grab a few stacks of iron. Also, thank you to everyone that told me that I could do this. I completely missed it. This is what everyone has been at telling me to do, not the machines. The machines, you can do with them too, but you can do them with the casings. I also gotta- Oh, don't throw it! Okay, I almost got that, that. That, that could've been bad. Gotta head down here and mine some redstone. Aha, redstone. Now, let me grab three diamonds here. And I need to make a pickaxe. And over here, I finally need to get a silk touch pickaxe in this world. Yes, silk touch. Gotta run over here. Because I need some nylium here for the nether tree farms. And then I also need some crimson. And I don't have a gold helmet, so please be no piggings here. Now, final thing here. I need the schematic cannon and the schematics of these. Because there's nine farms and I don't want to build them all myself. Ooh, almost got driven over by the terrain again. All right, so on this side over here, I marked out five spots where I want some tree farms. And these right here behind me will be birch, oak, spruce, jungle, and acacia. Because all of those works in the same sort of farm. But then we have four other wood types that don't work in this farm. But we'll get to that in just a little bit. So if we place the schematic cannon here in the middle of these, so let's start with this one. So we put the schematic here and it's a very simple tree farm. Okay, that should be everything we need. So if we just kill a bunk, it shouldn't take time at all because it's such a simple little farm, but I'm gonna have to build a lot of these. So this saves me a little bit of time. All right, now that's the First one, now let's just repeat this four times. It doesn't look like much at the moment, but it looks pretty cool. But before we get these spinning, uh, let's build the other ones as well. Now the nether trees, I think I'm gonna be doing a little bit further away. We do one of them here and they're a little bigger, but I think if we hide them away in the ground, something like this, that should work. But let's get our schematic out here. We're loaded with one gunpowder. That's definitely enough. Now these were a little more technical because they just needed a few more things happening with them. Oh, I really hope this works. Yes, it looks like it's all working. We need a crimson island here and a crimson nylon right here and why this farm is a little more technical is because well the trees don't grow without bone which is where this deployer right here comes in also when the mushrooms get bone meal this might convert into normal netherrack so I also need to bone meal this, which is why there's a deployer below that. Luckily, we can recycle all of the wash blocks that we get from this into bone meal, and it is fully self-sufficient. This farm also needs to be supplied with fungus, though, which I still haven't figured out, but that can't be too hard, right? Perfect, that's the two nether farms fixed up, and then we have two more. But I think I'm gonna need a new super glue. I don't even have to make any slime balls. I already have two, or three, actually. And another super glue. Glue going in there, and then let's start with the mango one, and let's instantly load up the dark oak one and boom okay almost perfect just missed a few dirt blocks because well we thought it needed dirt but it really didn't already we have nine functioning wood farms built but we can't just leave them like this therefore we also have to transform the surrounding areas to create our lumber mill and if you want to see me transform and build more amazing builds in this world in the future please consider subscribing as I'm trying to reach... Hold up. We have actually already reached the 10,000 subscriber goal. And there's still five months left on this year. So let's see how far we can push it. Luckily, I got a head start with some material gathering last night on stream. So I don't have that much to do today. Still waiting for a little bit of copper to oxidize here. But I have most of the blocks. Except one. And that block is rooted dirt. Which, well, I have like one or two pieces down here. Do you mind? But I need a little bit more than that. And I might as well try to find a tree to get some. So let's take our tree. Trusty horse here, Poto, and let's go. Nice this po potato, but like potato, pot, eight o. 
Oh, I should be look where I'm going, but I found a spawner. No, that's... I don't think that's allowed. <laughs> <gasps> a tree. I... Oh, what? I thought they didn't exist. Oh, I was just about to give up and head home. Again, hopping into Fresco to draw up a plan for this building is something I really want to continue doing on this world. And here's the quick sketch I made for the lumber mill. And then hopping into world here, I started excavating the area where I want this lumber mill to go. And then I'm thinking to start this build off. We're going to start with a core dirt floor here. Then pulling out some regular deep slates, which if we plant a little bit ahead here, this will help us out massive. As this will be where our main storage is in here. And then off of this, we can extend over four deep slate. That's one too much. Then around this cursor, we should definitely start adding in a wall here. But this time I'm going to try to add in a few other components so it doesn't look as much of a cheese. As in this little area over here, I'm going to want an item vault eventually to store some charcoal. Funnel on that, and that's perfect. Kind of these barrels here, we're gonna add in a few hoppers to connect up to a belt eventually. Then if we start running around here, adding in all of the stone walls all the way up. Now let's extend in a little bit of dirt here from this side all the way over to here, because I need something to place blocks on. I'd like to bring out some mangrove, along with a bit of strip dark oak. Turn over here, let's add in some dark oak. Then we follow that with mangrove, three dark oak, mangrove plank, another three dark oak, mangrove plank, and one final dark oak. Then on the short sides, let's add in a stair there, stair over here, dark oak log, then another dark oak log, mangrove, dark oak, dark oak, dark oak. Mangrove, dark oak. Then copy this all the way around. Extending these dark oak pillars up five blocks on each corner. On these sides, we can just add in a dark oak stairs for a little bit of decoration at least. Then continuing these all the way up to that five block link as well. In the middle here, we place a dirt with a log on top of that to prepare for some windows. Bringing these up six blocks instead of five, we start to get a little bit of a barn shape in here, which I think I'll be a fan of. Now, where I previously added these stairs, let's add in a few mangrove palisades going all the way up to add a little bit of a bit depth to this wall. And same on the other side, of course. Can't forget that. Now, we can start working on the walls, adding up our mangrove. Also, up here in these walls, creating a few holes that we can send in and out conveyor belts. Before adding in a few windows on the top and then finishing it off. I'll just help myself out in the future here. Let's add in a few slabs just across like this to start creating an inner roof. Because I didn't really think that the roof block I've chosen is going to match on the inside. And this just made it so that I wouldn't have to worry about that. Covering up the windows just a little bit, but they're mainly for the outside and you can't really see out of them from the inside anyways. Then grab some copper. We can start adding in a copper roof here, which I haven't used in ages. And I think it could really work out well on this building. And on the outside here, we can start grabbing our slabs extending this all the way up to the middle which is right here going to the other side doing the exact same thing yep and continuing the oxidized line we have up three blocks here then we can fill in the rest with our copper and i've not had any time to gather up any honeycomb so this is gonna age down for now but i'll work on that tomorrow on my 12 hour stream hopefully then we can add in a little bit of a pop-up at the top of this roof here just to make it a little more interesting which we can take some walls with some vertical spruce planks and i am absolutely in love with these vertical planks i don't know why but they look so amazing leaving a few spaces here technically this should be open down into the other area to let that breathe but not here taking our oak trap doors just like we did with the spruce ones below we can add those in then so dark oak support here to support the roof a little bit which we then can extend up using some deep slate here to make this a little bit interesting we'll add in a line here of some deep slate tiles before we extend this all the way over to the opposite side where we can again come in with our deep slate tiles oh and before i forget it i'm not gonna be up here so i definitely need to add some torches Ooh, that would have definitely been a mob spawning place there's obviously need a few windows up here and oh no it's already starting to oxidize stop it then some heavy mangrove trap doors that just look like the spruce one which is so amazing and i i want it i wanted it in manila for under these we'll also add in some anisite ladders just to make them a little more interesting at least down here it's looking great fix that let's start extending up a pillar here seven blocks tall 
And then bringing in our vertical spruce planks yet again to add in some walls. Before we start working on the roof, let's start extending in a little bit of andesite here. Then some polished andesite on this for a trim around this coarse dirt or a retainer wall, I guess you could also call it. Extending up some pillars on each corner here. I want this to be an open light sawmill thing. Something you'd see at a sawmill in real life. At least that is how the sawmill at the house where I grew up looked at. So I'm just gonna be doing that here. In the middle here, we'll add in some mud brick walls where we can extend up some spruce fence to support the future roof. With the walls and supports now up for these two roofs, I started extending them in. One of them going for a very earthy tones with a few crimson parts and the other one a simple deep state roof. Taking a step back from this now, I think this is starting to look absolutely amazing. Let's not talk about that we can see through the building right now. And this is the state of the backside. No, it's fine. Next up, let's start giving this building a little more functionality. And to do that, let's start extending in a belt where we actually will be bringing in all of our wood types into the storage. We can do this with this conveyor belt going from up here down to here, which we might extend into the ground later. We'll, we'll, we'll see how we hook that up. Then on this side, we extend this in case chain drive like that. This one is mainly for decoration, just because we do actually want a chain drive here, but we want it that way. Yes, good. This should power a belt that goes all the way over to here. Out here, we can start another belt going this way over to here, which then they can drop down into here. We can extend that over to here. And here comes a very cool part of this, which I really wanted to add in. On the bottom of all of these, I want some funnels sucking stuff from the conveyor belt up top and this is actually nine of them here which i actually didn't plan this before the building just ended up being nine block long on the side of these i want to place redstone links yes redstone links on every single one of these and so these will be active when i need to refill my stripped storage it might be easy to explain this if i get this part in if we should first of all add in our barrels and this will be our strip storage on the bottom of these i want threshold switches looking up into them and when these give out a redstone signal, we won't be accepting any more strip into the storage. If one of our storages here is missing strip and it's not filled, say I've taken up half of this box of strip logs because I want to use it for something. Then whichever one up here is oak is going to deactivate. So it will allow all the oak to drop through that and it's going to come out to here. Then it's going to fly up, hit that block there and drop down here. Down here, we can add in a few shafts for two belts like this. In the middle of the look, you're all very familiar with at this point. Oh yeah, this is gonna look good on the horizon. But back here, I've done a few small decorations just around, just gotta add in a few of these casings. Another one down here, I think that's good. And let's grab some spruce trap doors here. And to make this line here a little less harsh, let's add in a few of these just along. Oh, wait, bouncing. And a few of these up here for a little bit more decoration. And we can close those up with a fence gate as well. And now I can't run through there, but it looks better. Of course, I also have to hide away the item wall currently sticking out of the building. So adding in a small little extension that also hides that we have few more create components that turn excess logs into charcoal and burns overflow. Also taking this time to go around the back and hook up all of the final create components so this whole building works and now we just have to finish up the aesthetics. Okay, it might finally be time to address the back of this build because see, it's just getting worse and worse. So we'll be extending in a very, very simple little outcropping here. And since this is most likely going to be the limit of where I extend my builds in this world, I don't really want to give this backside too much decoration because we're never really going to see it. Then to decorate the chest a little bit, we'll extend in a we use stairs here to lead down them. Oh, no, no, that's the wrong way. If we do this way and rotate them, we can place these on top of the chest and finish up the stairs. Then on top of this, it's time for just another super simple deep slate roof. Then on top of this building, we start extending in a pit of packed mud bricks where we can also add in a second tower here up here let's add a campfire down on this one first and one here oh ouch ouch and some trap doors around this just like that and then a millstone on the top of that to let out a little bit of smoke but not too too much and it also adds a very nice top to that and then the final push here for some detail let's add in a little bit of a doorway in here some stairs right here and then we'll start extending in a little bit of spruce report i was gonna say but this is dark oak sam all across like this and leaving that little bit of a gap here which i really like doing because it adds just that little bit of extra touch to it and then to finish up the lumber mill building i decided to add a water tower to the back of it 
And with that, the lumber mill building is completed. But there's still so much to do, and I need to craft up a bunch of creative components here. I'm not sure if 11 belts is gonna be enough, but I hope so. If first of all, take a bunch of strip logs here and place them down. Then coming in with our anisite alloy, let's turn all of that into some casings which we can then pick up to use in a crafting recipe. First of all, we can create a lot of cog wheels, which we can then turn into 32 gearboxes. And we can also craft a few encased chain drives. They might be good to have. Grab a few shafts. And let's pray that 13 mechanical belts is enough. As I need to hook all of these five farms up and the four ones down there to that belt. This shouldn't be too hard and hopefully I have enough... Now this is at least all of the regular ones sorted, and we still have seven belts to spare. Okay, I have one final build, and yep, it is enough to make it over here perfect. Just the amount I needed. That is lucky. Now there's only really one way to test if all this works, and I need to power this whole building. Luckily, it only needs around 2,500 SU, so five water wheels should be enough. For now, I can make this really ugly as I can improve it later. So eventually, I want these water wheels to be visible, but I'll have to set that up on stream either tomorrow or when I get back from Spain. Okay, it's spinning. It's not the prettiest right now, but it's better than a blob of wool, maybe? Now, let's see. Is everything spinning? That's spinning the correct way. That is spinning the correct way. That's the wrong way, though. Okay, everything down here works. These still need to be supplied with the actual fungus for it to grow. I'll work on that in a bit, yeah? But the rest of them should work if I supply them with saplings. And now it's time for my 12-hour stream. I did a lot of things, like adding in the path leading from the lumber mill over to the iron farm. I also decided to stop being so lazy and after some yelling by Twitch chat, I decided to start work on a waterfall behind the mill to house my six water wheels instead of them being on the ground. Well, that was an absolutely crazy stream. And uh, it's, it, it's the same day. It's an hour after I ended that stream and I'm here to play more Minecraft and do more recording. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Am I good? Yes. With the state of this project now, I have only a few things left on my list to call this completed. And that list is right here and we have four things on them. So custom trees, fallen trees, fungus farm for the nether trees, of course. Then we got some bushes around the tree farms and more bushes. Turn my own voice off for a bit now and just build it. I decided to gather up a few of every leaf block so I could cover every single farm in its own leaf. I quickly, however, realized that placing leaves around the tree farms would not work just because as the sauce cut down the trees, it also removes the leaves I've just placed. So instead of going this route, I just placed some fences and sweet berry bushes around all of the farms. Uh oh, that doesn't look good. Right, I got a schematic here of a few leaves and wood blocks I need to gather up to build a few custom trees. Grabbing a few saplings here and the stack of bone meal that I own. I am very, very poor on bone meal because according to this clipboard here, I need about five stacks of birch leaves and 18 of oak. Oh boy, a lot of trees. Oh, and then taking my horse and I really, really want an elytra so I can just fly away to a forest and just cut all the leaves down there. So why don't we go and get an elytra in the next episode? And if you have any suggestions on what I should name my elytra, then comment that down below. And now we can take our netherite hoe here and just mine away. Also, if you're confused why I now have netherite tools, we went netherite mining on my 12 hour stream, but netherite mining is quite boring. Grab the last stack of oak leaves from my storage. So let's deep that in here. And this should be everything I need for all the trees. And wow, such a cool time lapse here building trees. And I wanted to make this one long so you can actually see the trees building. And since it's a long time lapse, I don't really know what to say. So here's me talking over a long time lapse while building trees. Well, I'm not building trees. The schematic cannon is building trees. Wow, so cool. Yup, some custom trees around this. Do you mind, Bush? Some custom trees all around this mill. Oh, the aesthetic down here is just starting to become so lovely. Before we get on in the final decorations, though, I really need to fix the nether tree farms. Because they aren't producing anything, and I, I want the warp wood, I want the crimson wood, I want it all. So, back to the storage room we go to fix that issue. We'll be creating a very vanilla farm here. Gonna need my last very precious slime ball here for a piston. Our final thing I should have up here. Yes, crimson nylium and warp nylium. Perfect. And this farm is by Exumavoid, and there will be a link to his video in the description. This should be sufficient space. And that's it right here. 
No creeper. Nope. 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 No. 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 But if we take our saplings from over here, which we won't be using, just to make a few bone meals for us. And well, seven is gonna get me a lot. I can already tell. This is not gonna give me anything. But I wanna see if it works. Oh yeah, that, that actually wasn't too bad. I just haven't powered these yet, so let's quickly just do that. That spins the right way. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Come on, potato. We gotta go to the storage and get a funnel. Funnel's acquired, and let's head back. And now, hopefully, this one should be quite self-sufficient. Then, of course, we gotta power the crimson one as well in just the same manner. Oh, there comes our first crimson. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Seeing this whole area just working, making me logs is amazing. I've been putting off building essentials farms such as andesite, kelp, and lava for almost 400 in-game days. Today, let's change that and also build some extra to make sure I can continue expanding this world. But first, I think we have to take Potato for a final adventure. And to do this, I think I need to take a trip to the nether. And well, most of you have probably already figured out what we're doing. I also need a few blaze rods. 16 blaze rods should definitely be enough, so let's head back. I'm gonna leave one of my backpacks in here with most of my tools, so in case I do die, because I have a track record with ender dragons. And the first pearl. That way, okay. Oh, we've already passed it. It's already turned this much. This portal is actually really, really close to where we live. And we're going past it again, so it's right here. I actually think we live on, like, the other side of that. And I forgot my shovel, but luckily, not too much dirt. And now we can go down and hopefully find the shovel. There's a spider spawner inside of the starter staircase. Oh, finally. Oh, that took me so long to find. Let's kill this dragon. Oh, yeah. Last time I did this, I lost the hardcore world, so it can't get much worse than that. Okay, getting our first hits here. I haven't even gotten all of the things yet. There we go. Free the end. Oh, give me all that XP. Nice. And throw it in there. And now it's time to find an end city. And walking forward, literally 50 blocks. That's an end ship. Oh no, I just looked at like three endermen. No, 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 no. And Elytra. And now let's see if we can glide all the way back to the portal we came in from because it was so close. And nailed it. They're angry at me. They're angry at me. I'm sorry. Just get out. Yoink. Whoop. Aww. Stupid baby. No. Stupid. And now we can start material gathering for the first factory. Today I've decided that I'm going to use a literal metric ton of iron. I need so much of it. So we'll start off with a stack and then a second one as well. I might have to start the iron farm again after this episode. And I'm gonna have to power up the blaze burner for a hot minute here as we throw in one of these stacks of iron blocks because I need so much cast iron. And I can also buy a mending book. Quickly heading over here to... Oh, hello, spinning villager. Quickly heading over here where I don't have an iron build. Instead, I have one here, I guess. Let's apply on breaking first and then we'll apply mending and now we have an electro. And the stack of cast iron should all be done. Perfect. I'm also gonna be needing a bunch of dirt for terraforming because I don't think the terrain is ideal. No, 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 creeper, I saw you. Why do you always want to ruin my create build? Do I even have any andesite? Because I'm building an andesite factory, but I, I, need, I need some andesite to build the factory first. And of course, I am all out of andesite. I feel it's about time that I actually build this factory. Four stacks of andesite should be plenty. The thing that's nice about being a hoarder is that I almost have a lot of the blocks I already need. And the good thing about building a ton of farms is that I have a ton of wood. I don't have a ton of spruce. And with a lot of this wood, I've got to craft a bunch of slabs, which we then turn into barrels because uh, vaults? Yes. I grabbed up a ton of mud, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'm not running out of this today. Hopefully, do I have two stacks of wheat? I do. Okay, thank you. And now we can head over to the building spot for today's episode, which is right out here. Because we will be building a kelp farm and I want access to the water. And to start the first building off, I wanted to add in all of the create components as this building is going to be quite small and it will be easier to cover the machine instead of building it inside later. And to finish the create for this building, I'm going to need three lava buckets. Open up to these tanks up here, throw our lava in here, and now we can crack that in there. And now we can start extending in a few walls. Then covering up the cobblestone farm with some packed mud, and this is the same design as I used in the iron mine, and if you want to check it out, there's a link in the description. I also really want to build a giant chimney, and since an andesite farm requires lava, this could be the perfect place for the heat to escape. Now next up here, let's put a door in this building, as that's very, very important. And I've really been loving this kind of taller 
big door as it gets a really, really nice shape. Then up here, we're gonna add in some blue windows because blue. I need a special color in this build, to be honest. And flipping those upside down, placing that above right here. Place some fence under that. And add in some birch support here in the middle. And replicating this on the opposite side, of course. Then popping up on the roof, since it is a boring, even though this texture is really nice. We can add some air conditioning units, and maybe a chute, and a metal bracket going into that. And can't forget about the old classic rails on top. Now this build still is missing a little bit of personality. So let's start with some cast iron support here on the outside. We'll extend these up, and then around with some catwalks right here. Here, which I obviously have to fix and this usually is a pain but that was actually quite easy and we can extend up some train holes and a copper one and the final one actually let's remove this one real quick and extend a pipe into the building and boom. and to fully finish it off some andesite ladders to get up here with that final detail the andesite farm and factory is complete but it won't work yet because well we have no lava we can also ignore that the building has a hole in it but before we get working on a lava factory to actually get the andesite one up and running we should build the connecting one that is also a kelp, outer casing farm, precision mechanism, alloy, there's a lot happening. Now this next part is a lot bigger than the one I just built. And to start that off, do I have basalt? I have basalt. Wait, I didn't think I would have any basalt. <gasps> Wait, I ran the nether drill right. And is there more basalt in here? Because I do think I need a bit more. Nice. We'll have to turn some of this basalt here into cobalt basalt. Then a bunch also into polished. And wait, that isn't quite enough. Do I have a little bit of extra basalt hiding away somewhere? Oh, I do. Now flying over the fact here over to the wood farm. I want to make sure that I can use this area to craft up most of the wood supplies I've been eating, so I might just pop down a few extra chests. Also, how is the warp storage looking? Okay, that's actually not too bad. Luckily, the wood farms produce a ton of bone meal, so I can just plunk that back in here and get so much more. Oh yeah, that's that's a lot. And now we can stick all of the warp fungus in here, and oh, I actually have a backlog. And the same with fungus, perfect. I don't even know why I did that. I haven't even used any of the woods in this build. But let's spend a little time filling this box with some wood supplies. Perfect, a box of wood goodies for the build. I was gonna use the nether rack I had earlier in the end, but then I remembered I wanna use this right now. I keep one stack as normal, then we'll take one of these and turn that into nether pillars. Actually, let's add some more. And then I also wanna find some cobbled nether rack. Now, next up, I'm gonna need around seven stacks of wheat, and I have one. I have a few hay bales, but that's it. How many stacks does this get me? Four, so I'm not that far off. I think I know what it's time for. Everyone's Favorite activity, stealing from villagers. With about one and a half stack of hay, I think this should be enough. But this does really tell me that I need to start working on my farming area. I can't steal from villagers all day long, but this one's on the way. And arriving between the trees of my farming area that doesn't fully exist yet. And now we can stack up in a little bit of mud and just turn all of that into packed mud. Oh wait, has it been bone mealing this one? <gasps> oh, that's amazing. <gasps> that is so tall. And I already love this project with one of the buildings in, so let's start on the second one. And uh, this one actually starts down at the bottom of the ocean, as I want to build a kelp factory first. So I'm going to take the cylinder up to the surface here, and starting a new one, which we obviously also extend up to the surface. And then, since two looks weird, let's also extend in a third. We can extend this up two blocks above the waterline, before then taking it in just a little bit to prepare for what's going on top of this, as this is just foundation. Then, at the bottom of one of these here, we're gonna add in some stone first to hold a little bit of water. And let's take a water wheel, add that in here. Then we do a clutch before we place in a mechanical bearing. On the clutch, of course, we need a redstone signal, which we flip the receiver and put two kelp in. Then we can also get the water in right there. Perfect. My plan from the beginning was to instead mine this down into the seabed here and have the farm like below. But I've just had a better idea, I think. And now I have to hop into each one of these and build up the kelp farm. Ooh. And to do that, first I want to extend up a spruce log going up all the way up to the top. And the first thing I have to do on each layer is extend in a dirt platform. Fill this with water, fill the bottom with some kelp, and taking some deep slate running that out there with two mechanical crafters, I was gonna say, but these are harvester stem. And we have to glue these together, and then replicating this process three times in each tower so that we have nine of these in total. 
So let's work on some details here with extending in a little bit of polished deep state at the top of these silos. And then quickly using that netherrack I mentioned earlier to add in a few walls up here. And before we fix the roof, let's fix the inside here. Extending in a little bit of oak to cover these gaps here. Then I want a belt running all the way from there all the way to over here, which is actually the maximum length of a conveyor belt. Before I forget, I should definitely add some torches up here. Otherwise, there's just going to be mobs everywhere. Not that I'll be up here, but still. We have to add in our second deployer funnel on top of that. And over here is where we're going to be bringing the stuff out. So a conveyor belt there, here, and here. We put a conveyor belt here, and this one we'll fix a little later. And adding in just a few gearboxes here. But in front of these, we're going to need two fans and two campfires. That's a lot of smoke, but we'll add in a barrel up here. And on the bottom here, let's put another funnel dropping stuff. Another barrel right here with a funnel into there. Which, if I just head back to the storage, I need one dried kelp, which I can put right there. And the final thing, a brass funnel here to output it. So now I need to grab the sink and all of the cast iron I have and yeah this is gonna be the roofing block that's that's why I needed so many of it and at the windows I also want to add in double and then a sink line as well and I want to do this just to give the roof a little bit of detail at least and obviously we're just gonna stack this up just like any other roof and once we get to the sink we obviously add that in and then we continue with the cast iron and finishing it off right there. I want to come down here in between the towers now and add in a few cast iron trap doors going up. Then we can add some anisate ladders on these to get up here, which I've already added indoors because well, the water would run out anyways. But up here we can start adding in a catwalk, just running across here to add in a little bit of detail. I'm probably never going to go up here, but it might be good to have at some point. And the kelp towers are all done. And nailed it. Just gonna take away a little bit of terrain here to make space for the factory. And now to start the biggest factory of today's episode, I want to take some basalt and start extending up a foundation layer here. And as a little bit of a barrier block between the foundation and the walls, let's use some tuff there and then some sandstone right over here. And then back in with our tuff. Next up, let's tackle this little entrance here where I want to use some Dean bricks instead of the basalt. Then topping this off with a copper roof here for a little bit of splash of color. And we'll extend that down one block into the main wall here. Speaking about the rest of the walls, I went around and added all of those in as well. But we should continue adding in a few details here now and I want to try to get the roof on this whole thing. First of all, let's add in a line of squat gorge right here. Then I want to start extending in an inner roof because I'm not going to use this upper part. Creating the three-way here in the middle, which I cannot forget to light up, otherwise we're going to have a mob party up here on the roof. And mob party, I say. I did build a creeper farm and stream, which is quite epic, and maybe you should like and subscribe. Whoa, what was that? I'm just building a roof. What? No? Mobs? Huh? Subscribe? What? Do subscribe. <laughs> but let's stack up this scorcher here up and cover these as well, making a little bit of a steeper roof here. Taking a bit of inspiration here from some gothic architecture, adding in a few spiky details before we can extend that up on each side as well. And then let's start adding in another slab roof pick as well. Slab roof, yes. Now I gotta find some shoots in here and two campfires. As I wanna add in some cut dripstone right here. Then we can add a campfire in the middle right here. Do the shoots here as like chimney things. And then we can put that off with some polished anisite. I really like that. It's not going to let through too, too much smoke. Because we, well, we have this big smoke stack. With the top roof done and while I was at it, I added in the other one as well, of course. This building very desperately needs some windows. So we'll add that in real quick right here at least. There's, there, there, there's a few more holes. And why not let's make this one bordered up a little bit. Using a few trap doors and some of this for support which I, I i still absolutely love and oh i am missing a whole side of the build here let's quickly add in these windows though but i want to grab some green blocks here and this kelp is just to resemble a little bit of the kelp did i say kelp this green is to resemble kelp we're also going to grab a bit of sink here to do a roof. And this is very much nothing special, but this has kind of a green tone to it. So it fit pretty well with the green walls. And to finish off the last thing on the outside, adding in the catwalk between the andesite factory and this one. And now we can move on to the inside. So let's grab our spruce and start adding in a floor. 
And the final strip of logs right here. Now I can remove all of this dirt that I don't need. I just had to place it here so I didn't place any logs there. Because like always I make make cheeses with the create. And a few final builds here going in to get the andesite alloy factory thing working as well. One going from here all the way over to here as well to bring andesite over. And that should be it. And this down here and this and that. Yeah, I, I had to think a little bit. It's also 1.30 a.m. and uh, brain was not braining. But adding in a few torches over here and then we can just block this area off. We can access it from down there later on if we want to. But for now, let's block this off. And that world is looking epic. I still might need to decorate this a little bit more, but let's add in one more machine in here. So a depot right here to start us off. Then I want to run a shaft from here to over here. One barrel on there and another one here. Above this here, I want to add in a brass funnel and below this one here. Let's make some mechanical arms here. Take from this and leave here. And let's duplicate this two more times just so this is super, super fast. Put a cog in here with some shafts leading up. Into an case chain drive, which we can then turn using that. Then taking our finer gearbox here, putting that there in a shaft and then doing the exact the same thing as we did on the opposite side, right there. Then let's run a belt from here to here and three deployers right here in the middle. Also can't forget about the shoot on top of that. And then the three input barrels on top of that. And we'll mark these with three placards so we know what items to put in which one. And then an underside funnel here and here. Before we're taking some dark oak palisades and adding that in here just to cover it up a little bit. And I think that looks pretty good. I need to get the brass casing to put down here as well and over here, but I'll do that eventually. For now, we can at least add in a door. And with that, the kelp precision mechanism belt casings and the side alloy farm is complete. And it's a mouthful to say. No, no, wait, wait, wait. I've forgotten to connect these up. It's not done. Yeah, that definitely does look a lot better, but I also need to fix the port, but let's fix the lava factory first. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see here. For a lava farm, I need a ton of iron. See if this will actually be enough. It might. That's a stack. That's two stacks. And yep, two more. 130 cauldrons. But now I need to go grab more iron. But on our way to grab some iron, let's see. At some point a dripstone, but definitely not enough. This number was around 14,000 when I started. I've used so much iron today. And down into the caves here, let's grab, let's grab up some dripstone. Perfect, now we have enough dripstone and cauldrons. Also can't forget to craft up a bunch of pipes. And I'm already out of copper. And of course I decided to decorate with copper as well. But luckily, gathering copper with a fortune 3 pickaxe is so easy. And uh, now we can just smelt all of this at once, hopefully. Oh, that's a lot of copper. Yeah, I'm gonna age down like a stack of this now. And a field of copper. Now, question is, have I gone through any limestone veins? Limestone, hello? Oh, limestone. I should really, really look into setting up a farm for this because I know you can make one with honey and lava. I just haven't. Done it yet. This goes back to the point of me being lazy. Uh, at least I wasn't so lazy that I didn't finish material gathering. And to start this build off, I actually have to do a little bit of digging. And to start the lava farm off, I'm thinking we add in a deep slate foundation here, going up a few blocks. And then I'm thinking we take in our copper here that we oxidized down and use that as a border for a splash of color here. And then we can continue the walls up using a mix of worn and normal bricks. And now with the walls in, minus a few windows, let's start adding in some create components. So first taking our fluid tank here, and obviously we're gonna be making a three by three here, wide high all the way up to here. On the inside here, we should definitely start filling this bottom here with some pipes. Right over here, we're gonna do our pump leading into there with another pipe right there and then a cog right here. We're gonna then grab our cauldrons and place all of these right here. And now we can take the copper casing and cover all of these. Adding in a super simple stone floor here, just so we have something to stand on. And now we can start placing in our dripstone right above the cauldrons, and then our pointed dripstone into the cauldrons, of course. Using a few temporary blocks here, let's add in our glass trap door so that we can show the lava. Before we get to start extending the next layer of cauldrons, um, we're gonna have to fill this one. And to fill one of these layers, we need at least a stack of buckets. Before we, of course, hop into the nether. And I'm definitely gonna be clearing this area out while I'm at it. I have only a few lava buckets. And now we can start extending in a roof here above the second lava pit, which, well, if I fall now, that's gonna be bad. 
Next up here, let's take our cast iron train holes here and add that in on the dirt. I realized I shouldn't be jumping in between these because I don't want to fall down there. And then above this, we can cover in with our final little roof here. And now all of these, we can extend up another four. Before we at the top here, add in a campfire and then cast iron trap doors around that because there's going to be a lot of heat in this building. So we're going to need a ton of chimneys. With the roof chimneys in, I still felt like it wasn't quite enough. So adding in yet another giant one to the side. Let's quickly fill in these windows up here so it doesn't look too bad. And then going back to the first factory, I want to extend up some more cast iron support here. We'll do these three tall. And we can leave a two block gap and then extend up another one. Uh, help! <laughs> help! Then obviously adding in our cat box up here. Then our favorite decorative lot here, some train hulls going up just like that. We can pull a pipe from the building back into there. Then we can pull one from here to right over here. And then going up right here as well. We'll go make this one one block taller. And with that, we got some detail here on the back. We still gotta fix the terrain a little bit, but in a second. On the side here as well, we can extend that into there and that up there. And with a few NSA catwalks here, we can just extend that around to add in a little bit of decoration to the fluid tank here. And with that, the lava factory is completed. But I just need to give this power right here and this container is gonna start filling. And then we need to hook that tank up to this one right here so that we can start creating andesite. Yeah, it, it, it's a it's a process. But now I need to desperately figure out how I can power this whole factory. Now for my first ever steam engine here, I'm gonna use a design by Sear Zero and I'm gonna redesign it a little bit. But if you want to check out his farm, which is fully self-sufficient and is super, super small, there's a link to that in the description. So placing on our schematic cannon, throwing the schematic in there, and then getting ourselves a material checklist. It's not too much, at least. I'm gonna need some copper here. First, to craft up nine blocks of these, and press it now, nine gold, and grabbing a few andesite alloys, which we can craft into our very first steam engines. Also gonna have to craft nine blaze burners, which if we hop into to the nether here and fly over to the nether fortress which is so much easier now with an elytra and blaze and blaze two of them only have one blaze burners whoop taking these copper plates or sheets i should say and crafting 36 food tanks because that's a very important component to a steam engine and then just running around grabbing a few random create components now throw some barrels down, and then grabbing all of the create components we just crafted up. Running a quick material check, and we have everything. And the steam engines, and we should start to see the steam engines pop it in. Yep, that's perfect. What I think we need to do though is add shafts out here. Yep. For now, we'll run over here to the lava factory and grab up a few lava buckets manually. We can find these lava buckets right in here. Because the thing I've changed about this farm is that this used to have a lava generator here in the middle. I probably could have compacted it a little bit since I'm not using that, but I chose not to this time. And I did this because, well, we've just built a lava factory and I can just use that lava. So I just need to hook this pipe up to the tank over there. Now connecting this shaft right here to some cogs leading up into those. Perfect. Once I get the steam engine started, it shouldn't stop. And now I'm taking a hand crack to this and just going with this, this should start. Oh, yeah, it's moving. Okay, it's creating 50,000, 60, 80, 100. Oh, I should, okay, I should, maybe I should have listened to you guys and gotten one of these before. Right. Steam engine being very loud here, but we need that. And then bringing this up to right here and then another gearbox like there. After a bunch of testing here now, and this area is so, so loud, but we should start seeing our first anisite alloy come here soon. Oh, yep, we have 11 anisite alloys. Perfect. And something I'm very, very curious about is, am I filling up on this? Yes, this was at 21,000 when I started that machine and the steam engine. And it's still going up. Which means we have a bunch of extra that we can use for something else in the future. But now that everything works here, I need to spend some time fixing up the terrain in between everything. And make sure that it's not flying. Yeah. <laughs> To finish off the majority of the terrain, I want to prepare for a future train project by first placing down a few train tracks, then moving on to fixing the port side, adding in a stone barrier beside the kelp silos, and then transitioning into a beach. All right, next up here, we're gonna need a path connecting us to the old one, so let's throw some gunpowder in here, where I've already prepared a bit of resources, and let's shoot it. That, that That's the wrong button, stab. There we go. And well, we gotta use the schematic cannon, at least a little bit in each episode, because it's just so nice to watch it build for you. But while that's building, 
I've also prepared this little area right over here. So if we first take some stone and fill in this bottom here, this area was looking really, really empty. So I want to add in a fountain in here in the middle, which might look a little off right now, but hopefully with more details later around here, coming with some slabs above these, then we can place two slabs here, here, and over here as well. Running into the water here, grabbing two water buckets, which we then obviously fill this area with. In the middle here, let's extend up two stone bricks. We can get some polished cut granite here on the side. We'll extend those up three blocks. In the middle, yet another water bucket. And on top of this, extending in our andesite stairs around here. And then to cut back to the blue tone, we have the soul sand and light that with fire. Oop, I fell. Now this look maybe looks a little bit out of place right now, but as we get some details in here, I think it's gonna really fit in. And just in time for the cannon to finish its job. And now we can safely cross into the new industrial area, Al almost at least. And so let's go ahead and add a path connecting the industry area over to the future town. And uh, next up here, I'm gonna need, let's see, I'm gonna need some dark oak. I'm gonna need some spruce, which, well, I have a little bit of at least. And crafting up some dark oak fences. Let's throw that in our bag. Also gonna need a few granite walls here. I already have a bunch of mangrove leaves, so I won't be needing to get that up. Ooh, and some birch. I also have some leaves in this form, which that will be enough birch. And we can go and turn that back into regular leaves. But we're still gonna need like three times this of spruce. And flying back into my schematic cannon, which I've placed on top of the roof. And then we just have to throw all of the leaves and all of the wood in the box. And then let's watch that go. While that's building trees for us, we can come in here and add in some patches of rooted dirt in this because it's... It's a little boring with all of the coarse dirt, I'm not gonna lie. Can also come in with a little bit of regular dirt just to mix it up that little bit. Oh, and this area is starting to look good. Next up, I think the train tracks need a little bit of love next to them. So just taking away a few blocks to be right here next to the deep slate, all the way up into the tunnel, which we need to fix in a second. Then we can fill this back in with some dirt and pod salt. And this just looks a lot, lot better. And eventually, of course, this needs to connect up to the railroad system, but we don't have much of a railroad system right now. And to actually set up the train network, I think that definitely deserves its own video. Just gotta take a quick look here at how I did these tunnels. So this is cut deep slate. The roof is cut and side tough pillars. Also quickly gotta hop by here and turn that off as my elytra is very, very broken. And gotta repair the elytra. So first taking our tough pillars, stacking that up. Let's see, that's three, four, and five. Replicating that on this side, of course, here with our tough pillar. Then we can fill in the roof, which, yep, we do need to dig up one more block. Then we come in with our deep state walls, just all the way around like this. Around and around, well, in a straight line, I guess. And we have just enough slabs. Well, I, I misplaced one, there we go. And then we have to cover this a little bit on top here. Might look a little weird, but I'm terraforming, yes. I'm terraforming, okay, spam words. Perfect, that's looking a lot, lot more polished and flying through. And the trees also looks to have been finished. Awesome. I've just realized those trees aren't done. Um, with a final few details down here at the docks with some andesite piles, some just a little bit of storage and everything. I think this build is finally completed. There's still things such as a train loader and lava loader that I want to add in the future. But as I said, that's going to be its own episode. But I think this build turned out absolutely amazing. From the andesite farm to the kelp silos, this whole area works together to make sure I can keep building in this world. Lately, I've been running out of redstone constantly, and I am tired of having to mine for it. Therefore, I want to create a redstone factory to avoid having to mine it in the future. Now, I'm a little conflicted on where I'm gonna build this redstone factory, but I have just remembered I do need gravel and iron. Iron is used together with rose quartz to create electron tubes, and I need gravel to create sand because sand gives us quartz. Mm-hmm, it's a process. So what if we extend the train net? Why don't we actually use this tunnel here to the gravel line? And what if we continue straight on here? Where will we pop out? This was definitely further than I thought. And okay, right here. And that is there. Okay, if we could switch that over to maybe over here instead, I think that would be perfect. So, using this quick sketch here I drew up in fresco, let's get some materials going. Now, I recently found this new block here, which I'm gonna need a little bit of iron for, and I'm actually right next to this, and blocks of industrial iron. And I just thought these looked so cool, and they fit exactly the vibe I wanna go for here. They're also so, so cheap. And gotta flip on the machinery here as well, and press up some iron, like every episode. And then, flying over to the factories we built in the last episode, I no longer have any need to worry 
worry about andesite alloys. And while we're here, I might as well grab a stack or maybe two of belts. And now taking these sheets right here, proving making those into metal girders. Uh, yep, that's definitely gonna be enough. Oh, I love metal girders. Now the question is, I, oh, I actually have quite a bit of sink. And I completely forgot that they added in copycat panels and steps into the mod. All these are gonna be amazing. I'm gonna need about that many. And for anyone that doesn't know, copycat panels work like that. I can put lace any full block in it and it gives it like a trapdoor feel. I, I can't open it, but I can also place it like that. Now, question, do I have diorite? Two stacks. And I was just about to head mines to mine the rest, but then I I, I remembered we have this. Oh, yeah, okay, we, we have enough. It's it's fine. I don't have to go. You don't have to go. It's fine. It's fine. Ah! Now, a little bit of the sand that aside here has to be turned into walls and then also a couple of stairs. Now, look, I haven't used this hood off. I have 47 sand and oop, I placed one and a little bit of gravel. Adding up the bulk, which I, I I still really need to sort down into the main storage. Grabbing up a little bit of white dye here. I can turn that into concrete powder and this is 80. Not quite enough. Now, I don't need a lot more here, so just gonna grab a little bit of desert. No, Stam, this is not a desert. This is, this is sand. This is sand from a beach. Two stacks, that should definitely be enough. Putting away a few of this and then taking this. So we can just go down here and make a little temperate here because I don't really need a lot of this. And well, considering I've played 500 days in this world, oh, that's true, and have not used any concrete before, I think I'll be fine. Continuing to run around and grabbing up a few more resources. Final thing here, just gotta take some logs, make those into some planks, and anisite alloy. I'm gonna need a little more than that. I should, yep, there we have it. So we're flying over to our very, very temporary uh, mechanical crafter setup. Yeah, <laughs> eventually I'll get a proper spot for this. And now that I think about it, I actually have to probably redo this whole area here because I, I'm not a fan of these two spinning uh, blobs here. And perfect, two crushing wheels. Nope, four crushing wheels because you get double. So got all the resources in some bags and let's head over there. And flying all the way over, which is a very, very far journey to where we're gonna be building this farm. So coming down here, I think this is where we're gonna be bringing train out. So let's extend up three industrial iron and we can do four shoots. And then we can start our metal girders going very, very tall up here. I'm placing, I'm inside of it. Oh, uh oh, that's bad. Then we come back with our shoots and then finish, oh, up, up. And two industrial iron. I, I want this appear. Oh, I encased it. Whoops. And hopping back down and extending up four other of these pillars. Okay, yeah, I think this is a great start, but going back to my sketch here, I'm gonna wanna add in one more pillar here, then we can do one right there. Running over, lining these two up right there, and then this one with one right here. Yep, this is definitely better. And first of all, at this layer here, let's start adding in a few stairs and some slabs going all the way around. At this point, I'm really, really glad I got this elytra because uh, falling down here would it not be fun. To connect these, we'll do some stairs here and in the middle, we can add in a slab and then continue the stairs all the way over here for another industrial area. Then extending this over here out just that little bit extra to make this a little more interesting. Before we add these five gaps, we can add in two sheet metal, a slab and then two more. And here we'll also add in a little bit of detail over it because I do want to extend this area. That's not correct. Like, we'll do the same over here, but three slabs in the middle instead. And boom. Starting here, I also want to go around the outside of this thing, placing them that way. And remove the end bits. Then why these differ here is because I want to extend up four more blocks right here. And I stare. And now we just have to finish this final layer off here with a few slabs and blocks and more industrial iron. Next up here, I want to use the copycat blocks that I made earlier, so we're gonna play some panels. Not like that. So with a little bit of help of some temporary blocks here, we can add in these from the bottom instead. And then placing some brass sheet metal inside of these to finish off that floor. But before we move on to the next floor, I am afraid that this is gonna look a little weird. So let's add in some copycat steps right here. And these we can fill with cast iron. Adding in our slabs right up here. Then we can bring out our stone and I want to cover this in stone. And I actually want to leave this. This won't be temporary because I need it to be dark up here. And why do you need it to be dark, Stam? Well, you'll, you'll see in just a second. Then starting off with the ground, extending up a few walls using mainly terracotta, but also sprinkling in a little bit of granite. 
and some spots of mossy cobblestone shining through. Next we are pulling out our copycat panels again and our not metal guards or blackstone walls. Then together with some terracotta and light blue terracotta. First of all add in our blackstone walls which I have to get on top of and that's not how you do that stamp. You can do it like this and fill that down. Then on the front of this we place copycat panels every other block. And then if we just alternate a little bit of blue in here like maybe that. That might look a little weird but yeah that's fine. Just to add in like a little bit of a window thing and this is a trick that I did back in Skyfall where I was doing a lot of cyberpunk stuff which I think very much fits here. That doesn't make sense. I'm building something from like the 1800s or the 1700s with a little bit of fancy here and there and I'm saying it's cyberpunk. Uh, don't mind me. Now before we continue at the top here, I want to pop down here real quick to add in a few stuff and also start the create components. So let's see, we'll extend a metal girder across here. And we'll go for out from this one. We'll do three blocks out. That's one back, which I don't want. And let's see if we can get one down on each of these. And then I do want a portable storage interface facing downwards right there. This one I can keep for later because I want to place these into that, holding that up. And eventually this will mine down and this will become our train tunnel. But for now, shaft right there. Taking ourselves a funnel and placing that. That's the wrong mode. And we got to have it that way. There we go. And breaking into the mountain here. If I can place the shaft the correct way, we can add a belt. And ooh, I'm stuck in here. But that'll have to be fine. As I want to dig down a little bit. And this way over here to create a vault. Just a super small little buffer here. But it will allow it to stock up in a little bit of sand at least. Because yep, this is where we're going to be getting our sand from. Then on the front here, we'll add in one crushing there and one here. We'll give ourselves just a little bit more room in here to work with. Because I am feeling a little cramped. So now we'll add in a gearbox there. Take in some in chain drives and then another gearbox. We'll add in our redstone link right here, which I, ooh, I don't have the items for it. Well, we can quickly grab that because I need one quartz. And where do I have redstone now again? Hello? Oh, it's, this is the redstone chest. Luckily, I do think I have one stack of extra, right? Good. Anyhow, back in here, quartz on top, redstone on the bottom. And then we switch that to receive mode. And now I just need to take this chute and this shaft here and up. And yep, here are the holes I made earlier. As I need yet two more crushing wheels here to crush the product that we're making up here. It will all make very much sense very, very soon. And before adding in the create components to the top of the tower, I wanted to add in the walls. Using a bit of diorite, white concrete, and light gray concrete here to create a little bit of texture. Now on the inside here, this is going to be a spawner room. So in case chain arms over here, then some shafts running all across all the way there. Then I do know that this looks weird and is not efficient. But I chose to make the building look good instead of effective. Anyways, I'll need to extend up these stone blocks. A few more blocks so the blazes don't spawn or get stuck on them. And oop, I've just spoiled which mode farming it is. Yeah, it's a blaze farm. Chair here and then a slab right here to land the blaze on and now I just need to block all of this in with stone now up on the roof here We're gonna go super super simple with just a stone brick roof Then fixing up these holes here. That's not what I want to do I wanted to alternate these just like that two brick walls Actually replacing this one with an anvil and then a slab We do a campfire on this one and surround that campfire with cast iron trapdoors Then going around the whole tower to add in a few more details now, next up here, I gotta take a trip to the nether. But before I do that, do I have obsidian? Ooh, 24. So I'm gonna crush these three and I'm gonna do this until I have no obsidian left. And those 20, they can stay. Oh, there we go. We got 20. Oh, that's amazing. I'll just leave those spinning there because, yes. Now, if we just crank a little bit of lava into the spout here. And one final bucket in there. I definitely don't need these sturdy sheets now, but I'll need them eventually. So obsidian left that we can put in here and then we need to press these one more time. So we can first turn into brass casings here and then we can turn those into train casings. Now, we need a train station here and then one train casing to create a train. But I do have to gather up just that little more obsidian. Now the best spot that this could probably pop out is probably going to be on the roof. As then I don't have to travel this far in the overworld at least. So we'll go ahead and light that and then I'm not sure how you do these train tracks. Now this right here is quite the journey. That one might be closer though. But I should be able to place tracks. Oh that's amazing. This is a dangerous workplace. And I'm out of tracks. No, it's so close. Then we take our train casing, place that right there. Perfect. 
we can place our train controls right in the front that one to there and then the portal to there there we go and then assemble train yes okay move this forward gotta slow down over here because we're running out of track just gotta grab all my tracks on my way back because i really want these okay do i just run over these yep roadkill oh oh Oh, if this has gone off the roof, I'm gonna be so sad. Oh, it's here. Okay, good. Perfect. We have a spawner in the overworld. First thing I'm gonna be doing here on the roof is definitely dismantling this portal because that is so loud. And disassemble. Since I always seem to run out of card assemblers, let's make a new one. And back down and then perfect. That's in the right spot. Now I just gotta clean up that for myself. And ooh, I have all the obsidian as well. Now in this box here, I have most of the items I already need for this next part, like the industrial iron. I'm gonna need 32 of these, which do I have enough brass already? No, but I have a bit extra. I also do wanna craft up a bunch of trapdoors here and I'm gonna need like 19 and that's a lot of my brass supply. And the absolute final thing here, I wanna grab all those dandelions and one red dye as I would like to craft two orange dye and two yellow dye. Before we do get the belts in here, I want to take away a little bit of terrain under them. Now here I want a few brass sheets, slabs, because that's cheaper, on either side of course. Then keep in the middle super, super simple with just a little bit of coarse dirt here. Add in the funnel we grabbed earlier, that's gonna be an output, perfect. I need a list filter, putting clay and lint in that, because that's something you get from crushing gravel. And the factory won't be accepting that, so we have to add that there, and then some fire below. And eventually I might do something with that, but not for now. I'm gonna color the inside one yellow and the outside one orange. I wanna run under these right here, some trap doors, and three out from there and here. More cast iron, oh, that's the wrong, and then two more trap doors at the end. Down here we do some metal girders, two shoots, no, three shoots, then intersection, just like that, to make some support. Then to finish this off, we place a slab in this corner here, and then we go ahead with the copy steps here, all the way along the bottom of these. And then this will be our input into the main red stuff factory, which to start material gathering for here, I want... Do I have any brown mushrooms in here? It doesn't seem like it. How do I not have brown mushrooms? Anyways, nothing a quick trip into the nether can fix with brown mushroom. Brown mushroom, brown mushroom. And then we can take our axe and... Ooh. No, we can't because I don't have silk touch. Uh-oh. And I have lapis and books. Perfect. That's actually super, super useful because I don't have that yet. Oh, silk touch finally. Okay, good. But let's go ahead and apply that. Perfect. But now we can gather up these blocks. Perfect. I don't need a lot, but I do need a few. And how much wood do I have at hands here? I think this should be enough. As well, I would like to make barrels. That's 31. Mm, that's one and a half stacks. I, I need more. And 10 of these we can keep as normal barrels. Let's press that up. While that's pressed up, we can also prepare two stacks of copper. Now we're gonna take these here and let's craft up a stack of fluid tanks, a stack of vaults, and then another six, because they bit me. Yeah, I'm addicted to these things. They're so good. Let's quickly head upstairs, because I should be able to find some anesthetic casings. Perfect. As well as some shafts. And then then we can take that and craft not 25 of those, but we can craft six mechanical harvesters. And then we craft four whisks, which we can turn into four mechanical mixers. Switching gears here, gonna fly over the iron factory, heading past all of that into the lumber mill. And this is one of my favorite builds in this world. I need to just craft up a few different wood supplies here and bring that back. And flying back home, I should really... Oh, that's the wall. Then there was just so many items together, but I only needed a handful of them, making the process quite long and tedious. I've got a bunch of books here gathered up now. Also, if I sound a little weird right now, I'm a little sick, so um, yeah. Anyhow, starting this build off like I started most of my builds, clearing out a little bit of terrain. Now next up here, let's start extending in a floor, and we're gonna be going back to the roots, using a mix of stone and side and trodon stone here. Grabbing our coarse dirt, here i want to fill in a back little area so i need some place to store the redstone and there just wasn't enough space inside of the factory but i'll get back to this little area in just a little bit and then starting the first little bit of building foundation here extending up a little bit of stone then on top of this right here i'm thinking we extend in a little bit of dark oh should we then bring out our word stamp before we bring out our brown build palette starting us with a, some mud bricks then the smooth mushroom blocks into some normal mushroom blocks which are these and then packed mud and then continuing this wall pattern up a few more blocks 
Now coming up a few blocks here, this is where this gets a little interesting. Then we'll come back with our dark oak and do another layer on top of this. Then we have two block gap here and then continue this all the way over here. Now this next layer here, we're gonna shorten it off a little bit and just like leave this uh, one block this way. And that made a whole lot of zero sense. So I'm just gonna continue building. Now we're already up quite high here, but I really think we should take this one floor taller. And we'll wrap here at the top, we'll add in our little roof here with some rough dripstone. Then surrounding the edges with some cut tough slabs. Where we're still up here, we can actually add in some decoration, a two chimneys. And metal girders as chimneys look really, really good. And uh, it's it's on its way. Before fixing up the outside, I went around to the inside that totally has four walls and added in the create components needed to turn blaze powder into strength potions. Adding in one more bucket up here to make this an infinite source, and that's the create components for this little wall bit here, and it, it looks confusing, and it looks weird, and um, I don't really understand it myself. Now we'll start detailing off here at the bottom. I should have added in the trapdoors before. Trapdoors at the bottom. Then I want to take dark oak signs and run that across the leaves front to just act as a little bit of a barrier for them. Then some scaffolding for our windows in here. Some trapdoors here, so as, as window shutters that will stack down two spruce trapdoors there one right here and then two over here making our way up here we're still gonna add in our scaffolding walls these are window stamp not walls there's a trapdoors leaves and sides and then continuing on decorating all of the windows now this is looking a whole lot better here. Even added in a few vines. But to finish it off, I want a little bit of staircase here leading onto some catwalks and I want those one block lower. How do I do that? Like that. And then more stairs and then three more catwalks leading up in this direction. And yep, there's a little bit of string in my face because vines are so, so annoying. But a jungle or to finish the details off here. Hello, Wandering Trader. You sell nothing of value to me. Let me just to continue expanding the factory of course not killing wandering traders no i would never then bringing in our spruce and dark oak slabs here across right there then some birch buttons on this to give that a little bit of brightness then extending up some brick walls similar to how i did my storage room here i don't want visitors right now it's good you guys can leave bye Okay, they have backed up a little bit, but I don't want to go down there yet. So while we wait for those to leave here, we can start adding in a roof. Flying away around the chimney here, and we can fly all the way back and hopefully they're gone. I didn't want to have to fight them. I really think this factory is going to look so good once it's done. Super simple decoration on these, just a few windows, then the support here as our window shades. And why not use some campfires on the top here? I really, really need to get a villager set up because... Campfires are so annoying to craft. You can just buy them from villagers. On this side, I'm thinking a bay window is gonna fit perfectly. I don't know what it's gonna be looking out at, but hopefully I won't just place a factory right there. Perfect little extension to the back of this, and um, th th there's still so much to go. But before we get to that, let's get some create components in here. So this whole system works. Bring in a few tunnels here now, and we'll do two right over here. And the blaze swords are arriving on the orange one, and needs to go past the sand one, which th that's a design error by me. But it's fine, as if we add a filter on a, a denialist, with sand that denialist, we can place that right on there. I still need to get blaze powder to place here, so no sand goes into the mixer over here. If this ever gets full, this little line here. Then that's just gonna get put out here and then dropped into that fire. Now over here, we're gonna need two fans. This one's gonna have to have water and this one a soul campfire. So now let's go ahead and get another belt in up here. On the middle of this track here, we gotta place in a funnel going into there and out on this side as I need to wait for the stuff to get cooked on this belt here. Not cooked, uh, wash. The quartz we want and can end up in this vault right here. And then we can place a funnel going out right there, which will lead itself into a chest and a hopper, which is kind of an automated gold farm as well. It's not going to be the most effective one by gold, but to fully finish this part of the factory, I got to add in some soul sand up here on the next layer, all the way over here and across. I don't want it there. Please don't end up on the belt. Also going to want to extend out a few dark oak support here just to cover this side. And yeah, I am definitely going to be using almost every little nookie and cranny in this build. 
then water bucket right there and that should start spinning. Now I just need to plant all of the nether wart. Now this whole little side of the factory should be done in case I didn't miss anything. I, I really, really hope I didn't miss anything. I mean, it is missing a line of observers, missing something, but I think this looks pretty cool. Then starting to tackle another part of this factory, extending up some white looking walls with some smooth stone variants. Now for roof here, let's bring in our weathered copper for a little bit of a green tone. Then this all around the top layer here, or well, the bottom layer of the roof, I guess. Also adding in two industrial blocks of iron up here, and you'll see why in just a second. On top of these, we can extend in two on this one and a flower pot, and then on this one we can do three in a flower pot. And this building right now would just tumble down this side, so we gotta add in something here. And for that, I'm thinking the spruce planks bits I gathered up earlier, which we can start extending up in a little bit of an outcropping here. Now we won't go all the way up with this block, instead ending it off on this layer right here. But we yet again can come in with our same roof material here, which I think will work out. And then cast iron on the front here to round it off and add in a little bit of detail. I quite like this actually. Then doing similar details to what we did over at the other bit here, we add in some nope, that's the wrong trapdoor. I want some brass trapdoor as the windows. And for the windows themselves, we do some squared ones with some solid trapdoors on these ones that's on the corner bits. Up here, we'll add in our trapdoors like that. Then some flowering azalea and a moss block. Our windows, brass trapdoors, and a flower. And for the white part here, why not go for some green? windows adding in our dark heavy trapdoors here to add in some shutters adding in a two tall window up here we're not a two tall window a two tall wide one but one tall then before heading down i want to add in some girders right here just for a little bit of detail which yep that's looking good like i said here we'll add in some anti trap doors because they are very very white and some birch trap doors not that's fence gates before extending in some observers just across like this for a, another garage port we're gonna need an, another allium in there. Now this build is looking great already, except maybe there's nothing connecting the buildings right now. But we'll get to that in just a second, as I need some create components in here. First of all, a ladder, which isn't really create components, but that's gonna go up to here. Up here, I wanna add in some cast iron catwalks. And there's one item that I can't automate, and that's netherrack. So I wanna take this big space that we have up here, and use it to extend in a vault, which we can do like that, and then across here. And we can have a brass funnel right here as input, and then two of those, and two of the crushing wheels. As the netherrack needs to be crushed into cinder flour, which then needs to be potioned by the potions of potion. Yes, my brain is definitely not braining. And um, if you want to join me on this journey where my brain often doesn't brain, then maybe you should consider subscribing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But for my brain to be braining a little more here, I'm going to add in the fluid tank. And well, I'm going to use all of the food tanks here, extend this up 16 blocks, I think. So right up here. And um, yeah, we'll decorate this in just a little bit. And this is starting to look quite epic and oh, it's so compact, but it's also such a mess. And before we finish up this mess of a factory, I actually want to finish most of the aesthetics, connecting the two structures up, as well as covering the tank in some cast iron. Now let's see here, we're gonna have redstone coming off this here, so we grab a belt here, which we can extend. And um, can I even get through here? I can to the outside, as we could do some decorational pipes going down into the ground with a casing right there, and then a tunnel for the redstone coming out. But not all of the redstone is gonna be coming out there, so we need to add a tunnel going off in this direction with another bell right here and here. We're gonna want a funnel coming out of there, and that straight into a basin with a mixer right up here, which is why the cogs go over there. Now the back here needs a little bit of love, so let's start extending it in a wall here. On top of these here, I want to add in some mud brick walls, which we can then put some spruce fences on top of before a few oak trap doors to finish it off. Over here, some spruce and some more fences. And then we'll place a trap door on the inside right here, one on the outside, and oop, I need that one back, and one over here. Then we'll do two campfires and two trap doors as a little bit of an awning. This area here is looking a little empty though. I think we can add in an overhang back here as well. And we'll just do a little striped roof, which I think looks pretty cute. And then another fence over here. Those are wrong. And now next up here, I have to pop down and make a basement. And now with this sufficient space, let's build a machine. And now this area down here is all completed. So we're getting the sugarcane harvested here. Then this 
pressed right here is going to crush that into some paper, not crush it, press it into paper, which is then going to be crafted in sand in that basin right there and put into the deployer, which would polish the rose quartz. And then this over here is going to put the rose quartz together with iron and we're going to get the electron tubes. And I also added in the storage up here. I know this looks a little weird right now and I'm going to have to figure out every way to decorate this. Now, before we get to this material list here for our power, I got to go grab a little more food. And of course, we got to do that over at the pig farm. And up, oh, a stack is ready already and a new one. But now let's quickly grab all of this up for a steam engine. Crafting ourselves up nine blaze burners. And yeah, I saw all of the comments last episode telling me that I don't have to do this. It's that I can just do this. I'm also out of iron again making cauldrons of course. So quick stop at the iron farm and I actually added in a barrel. And now I've prepped the schematic cannon here with the schematic. Of course realizing I've forgotten the most important part which is gunpowder. Do I even have any gunpowder? It doesn't look like it. So we've got to head over out to sea and there she is the gunpowder farm. And oh, we're hearing creeper dying and yep, a stack, that's perfect. And flinging that in here and let's go. Now this steam engine here that is being built right behind me is built by my friend Skeesh. And I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. Maybe I should have cleared away this house before I built the whole thing, but eh. Up here we also have to add in these, of course. We're creating 2000 SU. I want to continue clearing this out with lava, so I might as well grab the lava from here instead of my lava farm. I could have compacted this down a little bit. As the power level 9 steam engine, I think you only need to actually have like 12 or 11. So once I actually get a building around this, I might shorten it down a little bit. And we're generating, yep, there we go, 150,000. Now that I think about this as well, I would like to move this. Now, there is a reason why I built this such a big steam engine, and that's because I want to redo the whole power for the whole area for everything here. Words. Basically, currently my iron farm is running of two blobs of wool, and my storage room is running of one and a few water wheels. Now, I've yet again become a little sick here, but as you can see, everything is spinning, and it's been spinning for a little bit. I also have a few electron tubes at that. Look at that over a stack, first of all, and then see it's more than three. That, that puts a smile on my face. But everything here works, and it's so much fun. Although, right now, we're out of netherrack and quartz. And quartz, we need to get delivered down here, which you can see I've also been prepping for a little bit. And there's some train tracks. Yep, I dug up some tunnels here on stream the other day, and I'm so excited to get these up and running. I also did a few more things, prepping up a few materials. So here is the schematic cannon building a train. And there it is. I wanted to go similar to the iron mine train, but I went a little bit different on the front of the train here, and there's also sand in the back. I know it's gonna be transporting gravel, but it looks cooler if there's different stuff in them. Anyhow, all of this should be working. Oh, except it's not a train yet. And we gotta name it. If you have any name suggestions in the comments for this train, leave them in the comments. Now, however, we should be able to just sit here and control it. And yeah, well, we can't see much, but we're moving. And around and back at the station. Oh, we're going too far. We're going too far. We're going too far. We're not going this way. Perfect. We now have a train and it's time to decorate the tunnels. I don't mind the train track flying here, but the tunnels are all completed. I also took the time here to hook up some iron, which you can see right there, and going all the way over there. And that's obviously to turn the rose quartz here into electron tubes. And now, how much iron do I have left in the iron farm? Oh, yeah, that's an issue. Okay, well, it's time to turn the train back on. Not only that, but we gotta flip that around. Wait, considering this isn't going in, that means this vault here is completely filled. Oh, I, I think we'll be fine. Picking a few train casings here. And picking all of those up. Together, let's say, a train singles. Th single? Singles? And we also gotta craft up a few Nixie tubes. Now, I have not played around with train singles yet, but I don't want my trains to collide. So I made this quick sketch here. And to explain this map a little bit, the lines on it are where we're gonna have red lights. I realized that this here and the train is going to be sitting right here, which means the other train can come in and arrive, which means I'll have to rethink this a little bit. But if we make this curve here and all of this track up to this curve here, one section, that should be fine. So our first stoplight will go right here. We'll do that, then break the top one there, place the dot up there, and then a Nixie tube on the bottom. And I hope I figured out how this works correctly. Then I'm going to need a train single block in this path off. And this one, we don't need a red light for, so we can just hide it under the ground. And we have to get a red light right here, so we can put a train single right there. 
Oh, we almost had an accident, but yeah, that should be fine. Yeah, so that's given a red light right now because there is a train. This one should also be red. Oh, that's so amazing. Oh, do I love trains. Oh my God, this is so exciting. Oh, that's not good. Why is it stopped here? Hello? Hello. Hello. So there's something on the blue track oh, right now. Oh, yes. The other train at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, at so the you end have of to... this tunnel. Oh. So you probably should put a signal over here so somewhere, always, yeah. Oh yeah, okay, that makes a lot of sense. I should put one right, right there. I don't know, I think signals are a lot of fun. Uh, I I would say you have too oh, few oh, signals. <laughs> hey, um, Llama? No, I can't do this again. Alright, you buddy. Alright, Pete. Anyhow, big thank you to Uber for helping me figure out the train stuff. It was such a simple fix, but it really helped. Now, what is the closest animal that's not a chicken? I see we're having a meet and greet here. Um, sheep, you wanna you wanna come with me? Oh no, oh, that's just burnt my lead. With a new lead, let's uh, join this pig instead. Come on, buddy. Oh, this is so cool. I can put a frequency in this. Oh, <gasps> that's amazing. Okay, so I don't even need this then. And I added in a threshold switch right here. So when this vault gets full of sand, that won't make the train go. And pig, I think you're good to get this. Okay, let's ride with him, I guess. Oh, let's not ride with him. Oh, it's stopping at the red light. That's amazing. I'm just going to sit here and wait for this one to leave. Oh, and there that goes. And once that goes past that point, we should see the other train. Oh, oh my God. It's a little too tall for that tunnel, but oh, that, oh, that's amazing. With the trains now in working order, I booted up my stream over on Twitch to finish up the front of the factory, connecting it to an existing path. Once the terrain and pathing was done, I also added in some trees to fit the build into the world a little bit more. Now there's one final thing which I need to do, and I need to give this track here a little bit of ground to stand on. It won't be the prettiest for now, but it will work. For now I want to go very simple with some cobblestone, and we switch the most sloped fill below. I have no idea how this is going to look, but it'll probably look a little weird and I'll have to fix it on a stream in the future. Okay, um, am I doing it? Uh, okay, we're reaching the end, I think it's working. I just thought about it, there's going to be a train coming right now. Let me just get that. Oh, oh god, here it is. We don't not need... A VP of what happened last time. But that doesn't look half bad. It looks pretty bad. Future stand problem once I get to that area, yeah. But the redstone factory works. And before I end it off, I really want to share the inspo picture which I used for the building behind me, which I just found really, really cool. I have a few plans for this area here in between the lumber mill, redstone factory, and iron factory in the future to build a few houses here, but that's going to be a stream project along with fixing the monstrosity I just created down there. I want to do a project I have been itching to do for months now, and that has been to transform this village into a city. This was the last city I built, and I wasn't fully happy with it, so today I want to top it. And also get a proper villager set up. And well, the first thing I've got to do today is tear away the old village. And I actually have a surprising amount of villagers here still. I'm quite amazed that they have not managed to die. Let's go ahead and what are you doing in here? And then why don't we pop over to this little mound right over here, and we can start digging in a little area. And now in here, I want to start placing a few of these beds so that we can get all of the villagers in the mountain. Hopefully this is enough beds for all of the villagers to wander in there and now i just have to wait for night time and in the meanwhile i want to rename the train and the comment i chose to go with here is sands wait that's that's the train station oops and, 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 and the train the train the train left the train even broke i have to go fix it because i changed the schedule thank you now i can rename you sands the train I thought that was a really good comment referencing Sans the Skelly. So, thanks so much for that. And with that done, I think it's time that we can start tearing down some of these buildings. Because, um, they're, they're pretty ugly. Sorry here, buddy. I'm, I'm just tearing down your little workplace. Don't mind me. Yeah, I'm not so sure you need to be using the door anymore. And with most of the villagers secure, I could continue tearing down their houses. And well, that might be a little rude, but I'm going to build them newer, better, nicer homes with less freedom. Mm -hmm. Now, with the area completely clear here, hopping over and drawing out a quick plan for today's episode as I want to get a rough idea on where I want these houses to be. And then down into the storage and grabbing up a few stone blocks. And now transferring over the those quick lines from fresco over into minecraft making some slight changes here and there so much more peaceful totally didn't go on a murdering rampage just now and booting up my stream over on twitch i wanted to get all of the pathways in now this is already a really really good start to this project but i want to try something new hopping over into a creative world here i've done a little bit of testing with a few different roofs as you can see and that's because i want to try to have all of the roofs in the city be the color red and i found a few little nice things with some modded really like the crim side here 
I also really like this. And I really want to challenge myself with this build and get out of my comfort zone. A lot of the builds I've built, I've previously built in Creator. And this helps me get a more refined build in the world. And it's a huge tip for anyone that wants to get better at building. Do the builds in Creative first. But with that said, I also think it's a good idea to experiment with not using Creative first. So hopping over to Fresco to draw a quick sketch for the first building. With my sketch now, I've also redone the floor plan of this a little bit to fit it a little more. And I've got some blocks here. Now I want to start off with stone bricks and to get an idea of how big this building is going to be i want to work in the archway first yes i think this is a good height now while adding in these foundations i'm building them first out of only stone bricks as i want that to be the main block. i get told a lot that there's mods such as quark that has a trowel that randomizes blocks i don't like my texturing 100 randomized so therefore i have no use for those tools now, before I can start deciding the height of the foundation to the tower, I need to figure out how I want to overhang I think this. I want to bring in some sprues here. First thing that comes to mind is some trapdoors and slabs along like this. With that, I'm thinking I take the tower down one block and extend those walls up. Definitely thinking we're going in the right direction here with this. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. Now, I believe compared to this, that's going to give me a darker tone. Actually, looks so different from when I'm holding it in my hand. And this is the things that you try and create. Yeah. It definitely does stick out. But behind a little bit of foliage, I think that could work. And this is one of the reasons I don't use a trowel, for example. Because this allows me to think of it more as a canvas than a building. And using some darker box here and there can create some depth that I otherwise wouldn't have. I'm going to use some eroded stone here to first mark out a little bit of a shape. And we'll take this two, three, four, five blocks up. Thinking going very simple on this one. As I was saying, going very simple on this one. I think we're going to just do a triangle one up here. This is going to go back over into the wall. That wall is actually going to go right across here. And also out one block on the side. I want to try doing some mangrove like this. And these are going to go off in that direction. And this one... Oh, I almost just fell. And this is a roof style I've never tried before. And I'm very, very curious in trying. Then we do stairs on top of that, skipping the corner bit. Now it's gonna be very tall and I definitely think I want to move it down one block and that foundation up one. Being a little unsure with your builds is totally fine. You just need to keep working on it until you either can tell fully if you are not happy with it or you like it and are gonna continue with it. The next logical step for me is just to continue adding in the walls and seeing if this shape is gonna work out. And I definitely have to say it's coming back to me a little more now. On the short side here, I think I want to use some logs to stick that out with some slabs. I don't hate it, but yeah, yeah. Think yes. Okay, now I'm getting the more pointier shape that I want. It was around this time where I realized why I use the workflow I do. Building in Creative First allows me to test out a whole bunch of different blocks and details. So to get the creative juices flowing again, I booted up my stream and together with chat, managed to finish off the building. How do you make a rope pulley? Wool, anisite, and iron sheet. And a rope pulley. And some redstone links. And I need to add a gate into this one. Let's see, so if we place some iron bars down here, then at the top here we'll place our rope pulley, which I think is the one I want. And then just glue all of this together. And yep, I think that's it. Shafts first, and then into a gearbox. No gear shift. And a power toggle latch there, and a redstone. Alright, let's see here. So large cog, with one of those at the bottom. And we'll just get those spinning. And oh, the bars go down. And now if we're down here, Press the button, nothing happens. It's a clutch, not a gear shift. And now if we press the button, it goes down. And oh, that is looking so awesome. And it's finally time to start the rest of the build here. So we got to tear away a little bit of terrain and our pre markings That's not a word stamp, but that is to make room for a little bit of tough in here and continue using that tough for our foundation. Now looking through here, I need some smooth sandstone stairs as I want to grab those and make a little bit of a foundation pop. That's not a word either. Words are not wording. That probably is because I haven't recorded in a little bit. I've just been incredibly busy with schoolwork recently, which means I haven't had that much time to record, which sadly means videos will slow down a little as school is my priority. 
to start the top part here, I want to run in some beehives. Over here, this one has to be facing that way so that we don't get a weird crack in a door or this weird little slot down here. I'm going to leave the side open here and you'll see why in just a second. Continue up with a few different oak materials to make the walls. I don't really want to build too much more here without getting this part in because I'm scared I'm going to have to tear down a few things. So let's spin the storage. I'm going to be needing a little bit of extra tough. Turn some sink into some copy cap steps. Do I have extra sandstone? Nope, that's going to be up here. Yes, I do. Also in need of some more honeycombs and a few more beehives. This can be turned down into more stairs. And how much mud do I have left? Oof, I'm running out of it. Final thing here is I'm going to need a few shafts and an andesite casing. And hopefully with this I can craft a mechanical bearing. No, that's the wrong slab. Now when I try to place this in here is where you might see the issue with building more of the house. And yeah, as you can see, it's it's gonna break a few things. So to be on the safe side, I'm just gonna go ahead and tear this down. I'm really hoping this works. It's probably gonna ruin a few things, but I'll fix it later. And the glue should be the final thing, so it should ding in just a second. There it is. Just wanna make sure I don't grab anything that I don't want. And everything should be glued up correctly. So let's take the water wheel shaft and spruce button. Water wheel goes down here. Well, I want to spin it in a direction, so I need a water bucket. Then the settings on this is going to be only place one anchor destroyed. And hopefully this will work, because I don't really want to rebuild it. I'm going to click twice. All right. Yes, yes. That's moving the correct. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm, yes, yes. So that's 10 degrees. That's 15, 20... I think I wanted to do 25. And we have a real diagonal building. Oh, this looks awesome. I'm sad glow liking doesn't work on this. It might, but it didn't when I was testing it out. It, it looked a little better with glow liking. Okay, road is at least cleared up. Now I've just got to fix this one instead. With the diagonal now built, I wanted to get the roof of the main building in using the same texture I used on the diagonal with crimsite and dark oak. Also adding in a chimney and a few roof windows. Some final details on this building, of course, with some Bruce, a few more trap doors. You gotta get up there somewhere, so some stairs leading up right here. Complete with a few airy trap doors, which I absolutely love having more of these airy trap doors. I love having more of every type of trap door. I can see this side having a really, really big view, which is why I've added in such a big opening, because, well, it's gonna be quite a beautiful area to look out at. Factories, smoke, quite beautiful. So, of course, we gotta do a big bay window. And back to the fact that just having more of the vanilla texture trapdoors, but like, instead of this being oak, it's spruce. Further up here, we're gonna get our warp trapdoors and get those in right there. And then two on the outside as well. Scaffolding for windows over here and then some white over here. And I, I messed up. I wanted a window here as well, but it's gonna look really weird because that building is going there and I forgot to remove a few slabs. Uh, maybe this will still look good? Yeah, still looks fine. And a little flower in the flower pot. Final thing is just gonna be adding in a little bit of glow light and a little bit everywhere. Perfect entrance into this part of the town. Hopping straight into the next house of the city, I want to bring in some sandstone here at the bottom before we can take a wider mix of sand materials to add in the rest of the walls. Adding in a bit of glass here to get the rest of the walls completed before starting some sort of an entrance with a mix of mangrove and dark oak. Hopping up onto the roof, I want to add in an oak trim. Before we can take our small crimside bricks again and add those in. To finish off the top, let's run a trapdoor line. With the roof complete, I can start adding in some of the final details around the windows here before adding in a few flowers and finishing the build up with a little bit of glow like it. And it was yet again time to boot up my stream and this time working a little bit on the terrain on the side of the town. Adding in a few boulders and stretching it out. Quite a big fan of this building here, but these buildings are going to need some sort of function. And to start that off, I need to construct this building. Starting with the foundation using some tuff, before I want to extend up some walls, using a bit more brick in this build will hopefully make it look a bit more industrial, as it is going to be housing a farm inside. On this little side here, I left a little opening so that we can start extending in a little bit of wood. Extending that up a few blocks, I think we're gonna do three. Let's leave space for a window. We'll do one more row up here, then I wanna grab a temporary block and place two out just like that. Changing the wood type up to some oak up here where we'll do one layer, then I wanna do the windows a little differently as well. On top of this then, we can start extending in a mango roof because all of the roofs in this town is going to be red, if you haven't figured that out already. With the side outcropping shaped out, I want to make sure to get the roof in. I want to try a more pink tone with crimson here, 
for a little bit of variation. Finishing off the roof here, I'm thinking we can bring in a little bit of limestone as a trim. Moving below the build, I want to add in a patch of rough mud before taking some metal girders and creating some supports here for the overhang. Even when the window's up there, this side looks a little flat. So let's add in a little bit of force dirt right here. We're gonna take some oak fences, extend those up three blocks. Getting on top of this here, we can add in our some spruce slabs for a little bit of a roof. Continuing that up and connecting it into the building here for a little bit of a shed or under storage words might have to fix the terrain a little bit but in a second as i want to shift my focus here to the entrance doing something similar to what we did right over on the building next to this one first up with a little bit of dark oak switching out the mango for some crimson however this one doesn't stick up over an underhang though so we can add in a few more details here and even hop on top here and add in a little bit of a root but it definitely is missing something. And I think I know what. I need to turn these into some stone bricks. Then turn those into some chisel. Down here I have the netherite ingots. Where we can create a lodestone. And place that right in there. And that definitely fits in. And with an entrance now complete. I think we should get cracking on the rest of the details. Few flowers here. Or well fungus I should say maybe. To finish it off. Now next up here I want to try out a clockwork bearing. Something I haven't used before. And to do that I need some wool as well. We can place that that direction. And ooh, I need to add in the chimney. On the back side of this we can place a shaft. And then a windmill bearing. And then we do eight wool blocks here. To get a sail. Don't think the direction of that matters. But we can update that. And that's going to be generating 500. That little. Water wheels really aren't worth it. On the outside here let's add in a metal girder right there. We extend this up twice and a flower pot on the end and glue all of that together. We now update the bearing on the inside. Contraption o'clock. Oh yeah. Okay, so it's stopped there. It's saying it's roughly 3 a.m. Okay, 3 p.m. stamp. With the chimney into that building now, I want to do a little bit of work on the farm part of this I mentioned earlier. Then I need water right in here because this I think is the middle. Water right there and then I can hoe all of these. And well, our city needs some sort of population, so I want to turn this area here into a villager breeder. Which is something I still don't have in this world, and I really, really want. And well, this isn't a design or anything, I'm just going off what I know villager breeders look like. So there's a chance that this doesn't work. We'll go ahead and place a composter here in the middle, and we can place one right over here. And now I need to take two villagers from down here, up to over there. The one guy which I can't take. <laughs> Um, uh, wasn't me. But this guy can be our first worker. Now, I really hope I have a bunch of potatoes. But I've just remembered I have a pig farm with a bunch of carrots outside of it. And that should definitely be enough. Okay, the other one should also become a farmer. And oh, they're gonna make a baby now. Ah, first villager in the tube. So, so, humane. Am I right? But now we can let this run and I can continue working on the city. And next up on my list is this building next to the one we just built. And why not do a quick time lapse on this one? I kept it simple, going back to the lumber mill for inspiration when it came to the build palette. And then adding in a red nether brick roof. A block I've never really used, but I think it fit very, very well with the style we have going. This square is starting to look really, really good. And we're also starting to get a few villagers. Cool, I think I'm gonna want a few more before I start working with them though. While we wait for more villagers, I want to start another building. Starting off with some acacia and cyan terracotta here. And on top of this, I want to come back with the texture I used for the gate building. On the side here where I have been storing my shulker boxes, get some oak fences in. On top of these here, I want to place some crimson nylium right there. Then we can do some smooth quartz in the middle. Extending this down one block right here, continuing the stripey pattern. And we're going to connect that up into the wall right over here, which we should be able to. Yep. And boom. I don't want any mobs in here, so let's get some palisades and a fence gate in the middle. And taking out some terracotta, we can run that at the bottom right here. Leave an entrance. And stack up a few white terracotta blocks. Super simple roof on top of this, of course. Where we can add each side and also place in a few trapdoors for that little bit of extra detail. Throwing in a door right here, we can place a barrel. Let's get a flower pot on that. Some leaves, flower pot on both of the windows. Also need some extra little details on the side here. Just to finish off the down stairs details. Of course, can't forget the windows themselves. With those details out of the way, I want to start stacking up the tower in the back using a mix of tough blocks. Up here, bringing back the same textures as the wall, and I'm thinking some spruce might work well in here. To finish the tower off, using some red nether brick for the roof again. 
and finish the tower top off here. Let's do some iron bars. We'll remove the bottom one and add in a lighting rod. Tower is looking awesome. Finish off some details on the side here. Let's add in some scaffolding in these windows. Switching out for our brown here. Some bushes and fence gates to finish that off and on top of here we can add in two shades on the side here let's add in oh i was gonna say let's add in yet another bay window because i absolutely love these with the exterior now complete i only have the roof left to finish do i now have more villagers uh, still only looks like three that's not good i think i have to switch out these farmers because they keep replanting wheat you need to be fired thank you we've already done so much today if you compare what we started off with and where this project is now, it's insane. But there's still four houses that I haven't built. And I want to take a small little break from building. Oop, that's a wall. I prepped most of what I need, but I need a few workstations. First of all, craft up a bunch of stone cutters so I never have to run out of bricks in this world. I'm missing a couple of lecterns here as well. Try to make four grindstones. I also need to make four blast furnaces, which I luckily have all of the mats for. There we go. And finally, I want a bunch of smithing tables. Probably even more than that. Turning some brass casings here into redstone links. Now I've done a little bit of digging on some of these houses here. That's because I want to install a villager switching system thing. It, it sounds weird, but it's really quite cool. Uh, why don't we start with the biggest one, which is the masons, because I, I, I know I want a lot of masons. So why don't we start down here at the bottom, where I want to go down in this little hole and extend up eight of these. That's four, six, seven, and eight. This one, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we want to do one here that's four blocks tall. On top of all of these, I want to add in sticky extending pistons things. That's definitely what they're called, Stan. That was correct. I need to roll Okay, nope. I need to rotate you. Nope. Okay, there we go. On each one of these, I want to add in a gear shift. This one needs two shafts. This one needs one. No, this one needs three shafts. This one needs two. And this one needs one. For me then to run a belt, connecting all of those. So power is super, super simple. And on the side of these, I want to add in some of those. Switch all of those to receive mode. And hopefully I don't forget what I put in them. And I've also crafted up a bunch of seats, which we can recolor in the future. But I want to just get it in. So stone cutter, seat. Stone cutter seat, and then we continue this all the way along here. So that's going to be one row. I can just run some glue across here, and that one is done. Now, this is our three layers, and why I haven't just done these at the same level now, I realize I don't really know. But do I ever have to run some iron bars going up? It's up two three and four and then here we can have our floor which is the correct height perfect because i need to have a floor the two in the front so i can access the one in the back also just realized i'm completely out of food and another stack is ready perfect and that's this whole system completed i just need to hook up the power now to run 12 of these at 128 rpm i need like 6,000 stress units that's quite a lot and i've had some issues with that machine over there because it keeps just stopping and it's incredibly annoying and it obviously won't reach over here but what i think will reach is the one down at the andesite kill lava everything factory yep that's that's its name now but before i get to that let me get the other three of these in Now I'm gonna need my kinetics box here to hook it all up and maybe even a few extra shafts and i should be able to take power from right here Oh, they're not all supposed to go up. They're supposed to be down in this position. I could go down there and change the rotational, but I'm too lazy with that. So an extra gearbox should fix it. Now they should all be down instead. Perfect. Now I just have to hook up the rest of them, which really shouldn't be that hard. Now all of these have power, and I know they go up and down because literally all of them was powered the wrong direction to start off with, but I have no way of controlling them. So I still need to create the brains of this whole thing. Now I really had no idea how I was going to get one button to cycle through three different redstone outputs. So I had to contact my friend Galotz and he sent me over a Lightmatic that I literally just copied. And the only thing I changed with it was adding in a few redstone links so that I only had to build one of them. And this down here is the brains of the operation. Huge thanks to Glotz for that. Now I just need a button to cycle through them. And if I were to press that now. Oh yeah. 
Oh, that's so cool. Um, these I'll fix the button for a little later once I actually have the house around them, but this one can also get a button. And it works even over here. Oh, this is so cool. And the villagers also seem to be stocking up. Oh, that's amazing. But I think I'm gonna do some more building. Definitely not putting off moving the villagers. No, 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 no. I, no, no, I would never. So to do that, hopping over into Fresco, I wanted to draw up the three remaining buildings to get a rough idea on how I should start the designing of them. And this should be the final time I'm using these villagers. And I mean, I might as well actually move these down there because this isn't the nice living conditions. Not that the new ones are much better, but I should have a lot more brick in the future. Yeah, and I take my over wood from the rest of the building. Still, I am amazing with words, but I need to head over to the lumber mill and get some more logs running. All the woods gathered up, perfect. Continuing to gather up materials, I had some construction going on outside, so I had to turn off my microphone. With all of the blocks now gathered up, I can start building the first of the final three buildings. This one yet again going back to the gatehouse with the same build palette to kind of tie this whole build together. I also wanted this one to have an open balcony looking down towards the factories, which I think turned out absolutely amazing. Preparing here for the next build, I've really got to go and repair my tools. Tools all repaired. I want to start this next building off with, of course, adding in a foundation, using a mix of tuff and cobblestone for that. Then on top of this, we can run a ring of cut blank sandstone before we come in here with a mix of sand to add in the walls. Gotta board up this hole here as well. So let's add in some planks and then I want to extend up these one, two, three, four, and five both for these corners. And I want to add in a quite a big window in here in the middle or we can do some stairs and trap door. Now I could do trap doors here, but we do have the copycat blocks. So let's put some logs in that. Oh, I rotated it in the offhand and then we can stack it up. Jumping up here, let's add in some oh, logs. Then we can come in and add a few slabs and a stair. And a beautiful little roof. Finishing the bottom foundation here with some fences as windows. A few more details on the side. Before switching around here to the front, where I want to bring the foundation up a bit. As I want to turn this into yet another little balcony. We'll add in a door. Before doing that same mix of azalea and moss up here. But switching it up a little bit on the outside, I want to do some warp trapdoors instead for a little bit of a blue hint. Okay, maybe not so little. It's, it's quite a few trapdoors. Very blue hint. Main door as well. And we'll do some trapdoors on the side of that to make a little bit of big of an entrance. A little bit of a big of an entrance. Good words. Strumbling over where it seems to be the only thing I do. Except building in Minecraft, of course. So, continuing on this roof here with a few windows. And let's make a chimney with some stone bricks and yet yeah, another building completed and now we only have one left wait i haven't built this one yet i completely forgot i even think i gathered up all of the blocks i just need to find them where did i put them oh found them i think yeah here they are smart stamp smart let's get that schematic loaded up here now let's see here can we get this in here without destroying anything else oh unlikely and um yeah it's gonna ruin a little bit of the terrain back here but that's all good and um i'm gonna have to tear down a little bit of this house of course i forgot the gunpowder and yeah hello finish please do it now there you go. Now, is everything glued correctly? We're not bringing in any terrain. Yes, we are. We do not want to do that. Just gotta add in that to make a turn. Then water wheel, sequence gear shift, and water. Then we're gonna turn this by 45 degrees. And let's pray. I, I th yes, I think. Oh, that looks so cursed. Oh, it's so, so cursed. Why is there one block missing? No, why? As much as this looks cursed, it's still really, really good looking. And I mean, the door even works. Quickly jumping into the final building of today's episode where I'm starting with a bunch of dark oak. I wanted the bottom floor to have some big windows looking over the rest of the town. Meanwhile, for the second story, I wanted to bring the bricks back in here since this will be our mason building. So clay here for a little bit of a wall. I need that one actually right there. Where I want it, add in a door because this is going to be the entrance into the thing. A simple, simple spruce roof on top of this makes a lot of sense. And if you're wondering why I'm sneaking so fast, I went to an ancient city on stream. Because Swift Sneak is so nice, and I should have done that at the beginning of this video. Some green windows that are looking beautiful right there. And a few flowers. Sheep, you're very much in the way. As I want to add in a big glass window here in the back. 
And yeah, the rest of the city is going to be out there eventually. And I want to do another entrance here on the side for a second story. If I maybe need more villagers in the future. Another window right up here with a flower pot, of course. Some simple windows here with some glass on the inside, leaving this top story just full of glass, to be honest. And some ladders on the outside as some shutters. It's definitely looking good so far, but this corner is missing. So let's use a sprue support here to extend this out. Then let's bring in some stripped sprues logs for a little bit of a tower side here and some blue windows. And to continue the blue here, let's add in a fence, a leaf, and some warp trap doors on the side. We can also put a little flower in there. And to finish off our final roof of today's episode, bring him back in with the oak trim and a mango roof. This project is so near its end now. Or well, maybe not the whole project, as I still have all of this to do. But, but future times, future times. I've already spent way, way, way too many hours on this video. I think I've been playing Minecraft for well over 30 hours. Something I've constantly been running out of throughout this project has been glow lichen. So thank you to my mod Viper who sent me over a light magic, which I'm now building up for a simple lichen farm. If I just split some bone meal through all of these, and hopefully my issue won't be glow lichen anymore, it will be bone meal. But let's go ahead and give it a try. Yep, I'm gonna give a wild shot and say that that definitely works. There's glow lichen everywhere now. Running around with that glow lichen now, I added it into a ton of buildings that were missing them. Glow lichen a little bit everywhere, I love it so much. Maybe it's not everyone's favorite, but I really, really like seeing glow lichen on builds. It just makes them look like they've been there for a little longer. Now next up, I have a few terrain things to fix around the whole city. I hate to say this, but I I, I think this whole site is open. My villagers would die the first night. Also, I, I, I have a, a lot of villagers now and I, I fixed a, a villager setup on stream starting to tackle all of the terraforming around the city that still needed to be done now and what I'm currently doing here is another great tip if you want to make your builds look that little better just adding a little bit of coarse dirt maybe some rooted dirt around the base of the build will make it look like it's in the ground instead of on top of the ground it also helps if if the ground is connected. Okay, I don't have that many oak leaves. So flying over the river here, I've just got to grab a few leaves. With those leaves, of course, building up a few trees to border off the city. With the trees in now, the only final thing I want to add in is just a few little leaves all over the place. Just to tie it more into the nature. Areas like this where the nature has just been climbing up. And yep, already that looks so much better. Oh, is that... Oh, I've never really had one of these, I don't think. Okay, I guess I have skeleton horses now. I'm fully aware that this area here needs some work, but that's why we're making a part two. Yeah, I really couldn't build a whole city in one episode. I've already spent probably 30 hours in the world in this episode only. But I am so happy with this build. I finally feel like I have a city build that I'm happy with. I've still got to clean up a little bit, but I would like to say I'm done. Except moving in the villagers, but I'm going to do that in my own time and stream time. Inside my create world, I have this big empty area over at my pig factory which I built before day 100 in this world. So today, let's give this area a revamp, turning it into a massive farming zone, which means I'm going to be creating auto farms for all these different materials, which means I need a lot of space. And right now, the area which I want to expand around my pig factory isn't the most suitable terrain. So grabbing a shulker here, let's grab a bunch of buns. Let's grab a bunch of grass. That's what it's called, Stam. And let's just get the terraforming started. I had a rough idea on where I wanted buildings to go on this, so I tried to create the terrain from that. And I'm all out of dirt. Two hours later and this is what we've got. It sure is starting to get there. Gotta just craft up a bunch of torches before we get more dirt. Because I don't want a thousand mobs down here once I do fill it in. Um, hello? But your, your lamp off. Anyways, I'm gonna continue placing blocks now. I see ground. Oh my god, there's no wireframes anymore. I still got more work to do, but um, let's repair my shovel first. Yeah, it's been four hours. And with our shovel repaired, oh, the terrain is done. I definitely want to get some building going because that was about five hours of placing dirt. Also, just don't look at the green side. Okay, thank you. And I've obviously got to get some blocks to build. And do I have Viridium? It seems like I do. That's lucky. Although I would love a little more if I had it. Uh-oh. I guess let's go ahead and take our drill. Here's Crimsite, but that's not what I'm looking for. Oh, oh, yep, here it is. 
Yoink! Uh, it's definitely enough. Let's get out of here. And drill back in the garage. Let's flip and unflip that lever. And let's get it all unloaded. And now we have so much more viridium. It also mined a chest. So I got some beetroot seeds and melon seeds. And I missed the staircase. But we're gonna be needing those later. And all of these I want to turn into cut viridium stairs. And uh, yep, yeah, that's all I needed. But we have extra. Oh no, I only have three end rods. Well, gotta head over to the end. Say how to potato. And jump in the hole. And end rods. And a stack should definitely do. I also only really needed three more because I, I I only need six. Aww. Gotta grab a few stacks of iron so that I can use the villager setup I spent so long making. Give emeralds. This is absolutely amazing. Now obviously with these emeralds, let's run over here and um, oh right. I, I, I'm yet to fill this one up fully, but we have six of them at least. And I need a ton of bricks. No more struggle for bricks. That was only one row of the villagers and that tripled my brick output for a day. Now is this enough cobble? I hope so. Let's grab some redstone and some iron sheets and craft those into redstone contact. Yep, definitely enough. Looks prepared and I think this is gonna be the location. Because I want this to be the most factory looking one. Although saying that, I have no idea how I'm really going to do the other ones. So the other ones might also look like a little bit of a factory. But this one is at least going to be factory-like. So I'm going to put that one closer to the other factories. And then some more buildings like this over in this direction. Now let's get some foundation pillars in here. Just to kind of try to mark off a little bit of a size here. And I think around about there. Obviously I can't fit the moss farm in here. Uh, but... But we have this underside. I just want a cool decorative building, I can't lie. Anyways, let's go ahead and extend up these build- Anyhow, starting to stack the pillars up a few blocks. Before I wanted to come in here with some granite. Using some stairs to give this a little bit of detail. Above this, going in with some rough tuff. Before you're taking the redstone contacts I made earlier for a cool, like, trim. And I've gotta be honest, it has a really nice side texture. And bottom one. I really, really like that. Now let's take a little bit of mango on top of this right here and add that up on either side, of course. On the outside of this, let's add in some dark oak trap doors and some dark oak palisades. Going up two blocks, yeah. And this is just to give it a little bit of a border and also a little bit of support for the roof. Which we can come in with that viridium and start adding it in. I want to go for a very flat roof here, so only using a few slabs. Switching the focus back to the main building, going for some bricks to build up the main walls. We're at the top here yet again, want to come in with that viridium to add in a roof. Now I do definitely want to add in some chimneys up here. That's going to be facing sideways. Okay, let me just remove that. And downwards, please. Then we can stack these train holes up a few blocks. And this one too. Just like that. Realize you forget the campfires and have to jump all the way down and grab them. Placing the campfires and some caster and trapdoors around that, of course, just to cover up the wood. And then why don't we slap a millstone on top of that? Also tying these chimneys down to the ground a little bit with some iron bars here. I think that's going to add that little bit of detail I want. And to be fair, let's also tie them over here because this is a very open field and I, I don't I don't want to tip over. Now let's grab our copycat steps here and I want to outline the granite here on the bottom as I think we just need a little bit of an outline. Yeah, I don't really know why I liked it. Which looks absolutely lovely. And now we gotta do some windows here, so... What is this? Stam doing an interior? Yep, I'm very much doing an interior. Well, we'll check that out in just a second as I, I really wanna get the windows in. And some ladders on the outside of that. Not up there though. Thank you. Final things here on the outside, I want to do a few small pipes, which I think would be really cool. Just something like that, and then we can outline this with a little bit of acacia, trap doors. These are the wrong way, I want the little black thing facing downwards. And yep, that looks pretty cool. And now there's one more thing I want to do, and that is a drain. I haven't done one of these in ages. So some shafts there to connect it to the building in just a second here, using some metal brackets. Which they just add a lot to buildings. So why don't we add one over here on this side as well? And um, maybe this one won't be collecting the most water, because it's at the top of the roof I just just thought about but it looks good now on the inside here we need to spruce it up a little bit and i mean that very very much literally so some spruce to support up the windows i also want to add that on top of the windows oh 
And while we're up here, I should really start extending down the chains. And I wish you could place these like you place stuff in Create. On either side here, let's add in some spruce support on the side of the window. Swoop. Before also adding one in the middle. And in there. Under this, some moss with some every trap doors in front. And then I want some glowberries hanging down from that. Let's get these chains down one more block. Before we take some dark oak support on the side of that. That's the wrong way. And then some end rods on that to light up the farm. Adding in a little loft with a bed that you can sleep on because why not? Maybe I need to sleep and I'm in the area and I can just pop by here. And believe it or not, I actually really, really enjoyed making this interior. I thought it was a lot of fun and I might regret saying this, but I'm going to try to make some more interiors in the future because they look so, so good. I also added this little secret entrance back here, which I still need to build a moss farm. And this design is by Raceworks and I will leave a link to his video in the description. I'm actually not sure how you would make a create moss farm, so I'm just going for the vanilla one. But we're going to need some place to store all of these resources because I am way, way too lazy to run around to like five different buildings and gather up the blocks. And that's why I've done a little bit of material gathering here to build a barn warehouse thing. Getting a head start here on the barn for the main portion, I went with birch walls and for the other bit, some Dean bricks. Topping both of those off with mango. Now let's see here. I want to start working in a roof and first some support to that roof and then coming in with some work down here on top and towards the end here I want to bring in a little bit of copper just to mix up the roof a little bit otherwise it's gonna get pretty pretty boring then we start with our slabs going up a few blocks here into the middle without falling starting to fill this first roof in here before we can do the same style on the other but a little bigger leaving a gap up in the middle of that where we can bring up some spruce walls on top of this, let's come in with some deep slate here. And I think I did something similar back over at the lumber mill, which I know I really, really enjoy. In the absolute middle of this, let's take away six blocks of the roof here, where I want to come in with some beehives facing... Well, that's not correct. With a barrel in between, before we can bring out some mud, and then some fence gates to cut those off. Then on top of this, coming back with the warp to finish up this little roof here. Just like that. A few trapdoors on the outside of this. On this side, let's do some in here. Open those up, or we'll close them. Then we can do some open here on the outside. Yep, that looks good. I've also prepared a little bit of support right over here, which we'll get to in a second, because this barn definitely needs a windmill. Let's start getting some windows in here already. And as we move in there, very fast with this build making the entrance a little grander with making an archway but it looks a little flat so let's flip that upside down and place some support just like that of course i forgot some moss and warped so you can never really go wrong with a flower bed here in the back i also for some reason added in a door up there so we got to get a staircase leading up to that and we'll use some catwalks and uh, yeah i'm definitely going to be able to use that door that you're going to see in a second mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but the front is starting to look good i want something coming out up here but i need to work a little bit on the interior uh, yep we're going two for two on interiors for this one well, this is exactly what i didn't want happening but in the front here let's add in some shafts fight off some mobs more shafts where we can come in with some brackets on those and then some lanterns on the bottom of that just to give it a little bit of light here shifting my focus to the inside now let's add in a coarse dirt floor and now let's take a whole bunch of sprues and make the inside a little nicer and yeah here we go blocking that door i already said that we couldn't use earlier we now start popping in a few chests right here since this is going to be a storage building uh, let's pop in a door here. Um, we definitely need something on the side, but in a little bit. As uh, so this is going to be our input, so let's learn a mechanical belt from there all the way over to here. Before in the back side of this, we're gonna need a ton of funnels. Then grabbing a mechanical arm, I gotta select all of these, which I absolutely hate doing. Select some to grab from. Find in the middle here, and we can place that right there. Gearbox, cogwheel, and a shaft to power that from there. Where we now just repeat that right over here. Right over here, one more shaft, and this belt line we can extend out just a few blocks this direction. And then we can place a tunnel right there, because I definitely don't want this to overflow, so I'm just gonna 
burn everything. In this corner here, we can get in a little bit of moss. Getting some baskets in here, and these are such a pain to craft. Over here, I only have three of the crops right now, so we can add those in, but I still need to get barrels of the other ones. On the second floor here, though, we can add in a little bit of wheat and our remaining carrot crates. Then I want to take a metal girder and run that across the roof here, over to that point before we can take an industrial iron, and then girder, one, two, and three. At the end right there, we can add in a grindstone, which I want to extend down three rope from. And yep, that's looking up. It actually looks a little flat up here right now, so some copycap steps with some polished tuff in right up here. To get some power going for this building, I mentioned it earlier, I wanted to add in a windmill. Taking the design I used all the way back in episode 1, but making it a little bit bigger. We need some way where the items are going to be in here, so let's add in some jungle. Then on top of this, we could come in with some strict jungle planks before adding in a roof using a little bit of spruce. Popping down from the roof of that, let's add in some leaves right here. Windows far back in here. Let's get some flowers going on top of these. And some trapdoors on the corner. Now, on the side here with the conveyor belt, I want to start extending up my silo to burn everything. And that might not make that much sense, but it's Minecraft. It doesn't have to make sense. But what I know does make sense is silos in a barn. At a barn, in a barn, yes. Now, one final thing I want to add here is just a few tracks on the back side of this. We won't be using these today, but I just want them there for the future train episode. Yep, a train episode is definitely coming. It's just not right now. Episode 10. And that's also a world download, by the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can get this whole world for free. Which, well, if you don't want to miss that, you should definitely consider subscribing. And uh, it also helps me out. Thank you. Now with our storage fixed. Oops. I want to see, do I have any anisite casings? I'm out of anisite casings. I'm definitely not out of it, but why don't we make a few more? And then we can craft a bunch of Gantry shafts, that's definitely gonna be enough. And we're gonna have nine crop farms, so I'm gonna need nine gantry shafts. I already have the shafts, I just need the carriages. Now I just have to figure out where to place these. I'm just gonna get started right here. Which, yep, that is definitely looking cool. And I've gotta be honest here, I really, really like these fields, but... I'm a huge fan of these rectangular fields. I think they look really, really industrial in a sense, and I don't know, they look pretty cool. Let's try to understand how this works. I've never really built any gantry shaft farms before, so this is gonna be interesting. I know I need a gantry shaft. Yep, that, that's it. And a gantry. And I can actually place that sideways. Okay, that was one of the things I was worried about. And I know these are very, very small, but I don't think I'll be using a whole lot of crops in this world, so... I'm fine with that. I've also had the Farmer's Delight mod for a few months now, and I'm yet to craft anything in it. Except detail books, of course. Some trapdoors above some spruce planks. And uh, I forgot harvesters. Ooh, a bunch of mechanical harvesters. Why don't we actually be a little smart here and use some barrels instead of planks right here to store things. Then we can place the harvesters on the front of these. And yeah, that's kind of it. Now let's see here. So I want to get in a gear shift. And then we can take away those. Place two shafts and a vertical gearbox. And that should be able to power it. And then if we just put a redstone link on top of there, that should hopefully work. Or at least it will with a little bit of glue. And now we just have to repeat that eight more times. Now I'm gonna come back to all of these crops here, as I need to do a little bit more material gathering. Let's see here, I need one stack of sand and a stack of gravel. Realize I'm all out of black dye, and I think I should be able to crush coal. That worked. Why have I not used that before? Oh, and... Oh, oops. Anyways, let's turn that into light gray dye and craft that into like a concrete powder. And now I have no idea why I didn't do this last time, but I can, of course, wash the concrete to get concrete instead of having to place it and break it. So many people told me and I don't know how it crossed my mind because I've done it in the past. And we can turn half a stack of this into some bricks. I somehow magically fixed the lag I was having in my world, which I'm so happy about. And to celebrate, let's use some crimson. A wood I don't think I've ever used in this world yet. I also don't need a crazy amount of it. And just a whole bunch of blue blocks that I now have. I actually don't have all the blocks I need because I need some oxidized copper, which I have not had the time to oxidize yet and I do not have the time to wait for it. Since I'm going away for a few days here and now I really, really need to get some recording done. Uh, I did something wrong when I counted, but that's fine. And now let's get our blocks ready. Getting us started down here at the seabed. Let's start extending up some polished tuff up a few blocks to the surface. And using some light blue glass here, let's do three blocks before we can get the tuff back. And then this 
we can extend down into the bottom as well. And if you're wondering what I'm wearing, I'm wearing a back tank and a diving set, and I look pretty cool. Stream forced me to do it. Here we're gonna play like clutch, and then we do shafts, three of those. Before we take three large water wheels, which is gonna be powering all of this, and we can put some mango on those because I think that looks super good and didn't even use the planks. Then to actually get the spinning, we need to place down a few temporary blocks right in here, which we then go ahead and break that spinning beautifully. We need to fix some details over here, but in a second. And this is actually eventually going to be powering our sugarcane farm and bamboo. While the water wheel has to be down at the water, I don't want the house to be sat right at the river edge. So using some cobblestone to make some foundations where I want to bring up a couple of walls using the lightweight concrete from earlier. Now it's looking quite weird right now. So to fix that, let's start off with extending up some support pillars here some cross beams right down here because well it's probably gonna look lovely then one at the top over here let's extend that one out one block that way and all of these can get a industrial iron block on them connect all of these up right here Eventually, there's going to be a floor right there, but we can get some spruce support in the middle of this. Meanwhile, we can already now take some oak planks down here. Stand that up two layers. I think it's going to be absolutely perfect. So let's grab some logs on top of this. And one layer up with this. Starting to get a rough shape. Now, I want to come in with our crimson wood for another part. While I'm still waiting for the copper to oxidize, at least I can add it in this roof. I want to get some cool aspects into this now. So bamboo, bone meal, sugar cane, and string. And mud line going through here. Then we're going to do vertical sprues right around there. And behind this, stack these up a few layers. I actually need to get some things on the inside done as well. Mainly just a few trap doors that we can block in some water with, which I should be able to grab around there. Perfect. Which means we can now get some sugar cane here in the front. And since we have string, that means that we can place it up like that. And then some string on these two and they will never grow. And as I was about to forget, I'm just going to add in some windows in front of these, which is looking awesome. Except the scaffolding and then the details up here. Here I also want to get in mud, but a lot bigger of a patch. And here we can already go ahead and get in some windows. Now the bamboo I want to do a little differently because I can plant it right here. But if I place bamboo on bamboo, it's just going to look like that. And that's not very nice. But if it grows naturally, that's how it looks. Why Why is that? You, why, why have you just grown twice? It also does that when you bow me. Like. And yep, that's definitely looking good. And oh, I, I haven't added in the stairs yet. Going back outside now to add in some spruce details around the first walls. And I should probably work on the staircase going up as well. Just so I don't fall down again. On the inside, let's go three for three on interiors for today's episode. And the ship had a bunch of different like bamboo blocks, which I don't have in this update yet. And I miss so, so much. And since I haven't really shown off the cactus yet, let's place that up there with a cactus in it and a lantern next to that. Because yeah, this is also going to be a cactus farm. They're not going to all fit in here. None of them are actually. Interior is also very, very scuffed because these aren't lined up. So let's get some stairs. So we can add in a floor of andesite, which on the bottom, we can add in some levers right there and flip those. And while we're down here, we can add a redstone one right there, block, and a sticky piston right there, which coming from above looks just like this. We add in some of those and a lever in here and we can now turn on and off the farm and a few more details in here a lantern and some ladders perfect little control room and i don't think there's much more i'm gonna do to this building except that in the roof so let's grab up most of the copper which is actually oxidized being quite eager to slap on the roof now i just went ahead and did it building with a roof in is looking absolutely fantastic it's features have well they haven't really seen better days to be fair so let's start working on the actual farm now that we got the building situated and um yeah i'm gonna use the majority of the room that we have down here well not the majority of the room but the majority of the farm is going to be in the room we already have That's definitely not enough moss, so let's run the moss farm for a little bit. But this should be close enough for that to keep running, so I can just start placing in the moss already. Alright, putting water in all of these is gonna take a while. Oh yeah, it's stacking up now, but I'm gonna turn it off because I need to leave the area and I'm scared of it breaking. And of course I have no casings here. So heading over to the Kale Factory, which is such a better name than Kelp and the site. Lava everything factory. The person who commented at your genius. Let's craft yet another gantry shaft, 10 harvesters, and 10 mechanical saws. 
Perfect. And now we can get a gantry shaft running from here. And if I place a gantry, we can make sure that this goes all the way over to the end. Now, actually giving it a little bit of thought here, I don't really want to use a barrel. I want to use a chest instead. And I want to place that as high as possible. So we're going to place that going out just like that. Then this is never going to be seen. So just some spruce going down right here and across on either side. And I have exactly the amount I need. Perfect. On this side, we do harvesters as that's what sugarcane needs. And I won't lie. It took me a little time to figure out that you needed sauce to do bamboo. Yep, this is gonna go and um, it's a little slow. I won't lie. So we gotta speed this up and uh, this won't be pretty. And then we can speed this up maybe all the way even and yeah, that's gonna be perfect. Um, walking on this field is very weird, <laughs> which means our output will be right under here. And I'm thinking we could just do like a shoot onto a belt and up to the storage. On my way back here, I'm actually just gonna clean up this bamboo because I don't need it. And I need bamboo down in the farm. Mess of day one create. Also clean this up as I don't want this here anymore. Yep, sure, okay, and you too. And now we can start planting in all of this. At least the bamboo is growing. The sugarcane hasn't yet. Let's go ahead and make sure it works. It's quite slow cutting down the bamboo, but it does look like it has made it to the end. While in the mood of building farms, I also decided to build up the cactus farm real quick. And so I've gone ahead and connected that up leading into here. And we're already starting to fill up on a few different materials. But I've also prepped a few materials here for our next building. And I'm lazy, so we're gonna do this one with the schematic cannon. And this is gonna be our melon and pumpkin farm. And will also be the only house to today that does not include an interior. I've been super happy with the interiors I have made, but I just could not fit one in this one. Gonna have to craft up a hopper here and a minecart, and that gets us a minecart with hopper down right here, and we place that there. Hopefully this will make it out. Now it hasn't come back, so I'm guessing something's wrong up here. Huh? How are they unpowered? Okay, that works now, and we can push you off, and that should work. And now I need to do some planting because the schematic cannon wasn't the best. Uh, oh, I've also done that wrong. Oh. I've got to redo the whole- It's not the most annoying fix, but I have to take away all of these and replace them. And well, yeah, this is why there's no interior because I can't even get in there. But we are producing stuff. Now we just have to get the output here hooked up over to the barn. And that should do it. We should see- Yep, there they are. Return them back up here to the storage. We should see them arriving here in just a second. That's a cactus. Yep, here they are. Perfect. Let's see. We now have sugarcane, bamboo, pumpkin, melon, and cactus all flowing into the system. And we might as well get the moss hooked up here. But I do want to make a small little change. As this one can be our bone meal. And this one be the moss one. So I want to send these two hoppers into some composters. Into a barrel. And if we just place a funnel right there, right, I have I have nothing in here, but I could place some bone meal in there. And that's making its way around here and eventually arriving over here. This little mess and yes, perfect. And now we're stocking up on most of the things. Okay, maybe not most of the things, but a, a, a bunch of them. We still have this row here to stock up on, but I need to build another house for that. And I kind of want to finish the crops farm. All I really need is to see if I have seeds. I've got wheat seeds. I've got a few cabbage seeds, some potatoes, beetroot, netherwort, a tomato, tomato seeds, tomato seeds, cabbage, and onions. Perfect. Gonna want some water here in the middle. And this, this is why we double dirt. Just building on top of it is so, so much easier. Here. Over in this one, right over here, closest to the moss factory, is where I want to have my tomato field. And it turns out that you can't make cabbage seeds. So, where you gotta do some exploring to get those. And over here on the final field, let's get some netherworts in right over here. Now, I'm actually not sure if this is going to produce a lot amount of netherworts, but over time, I'm hoping it will stack up. And now with all of the crops that I have at hand right now planted, we actually have to get these up and running. Now, all of these shafts you see here in the floor is the power we need to hook up. And I was planning to do that first, but it might only be easier to hook up the output system, hook the belts up from there to those. Now, it's definitely not the prettiest right now because I had to redo the sizes of them a little bit, but it works. We can press this lever here and all of them will fire and then we can retract them all. Perfect. Now, let's see if we got any goods. We got wheat, netherwort, tomatoes. Yes. And cabbage. Oh, we got cabbage seeds. That means we can extend that without having to go exploring. Oh, we already have half a chest of 
Bamboo. But now I think it's time for our final building. And there still is one more farming product that I miss. And that is honey. So how much copper do I have? Not a lot to be fair. Yeah, that's an issue. So let's just fly over in this direction because this is one of the directions I haven't been mining. So let's just mine a little bit of copper. Out of the caves, and that should last me for this episode. And I still love this waterfall so much. Let's have all of the smelt up. While we're waiting for that, let's grab some planks and slabs. And we can craft 25. That's not enough. So I need about a stack of barrels. That's a few extra. We're gonna take our copper. Let's press some of that down into plates. Let's create a whole stack of fluid tanks and a bunch of fluid pipes as well. Three of those we can turn into pumps and quickly smash down a gold sheet. We can create a weighted ejector because I'm quite excited to use a weighted ejector in a factory because uh, I've seen other people do it and I, I really want to do it. I want to craft up 15 beehives as well. And all the way back in episode four, I created this temporary beehive area right over here. And I now need to fill these with bees. So I'm just going to stand here and breed a bunch of them. All right, bees seem to have run out of homes, which means that they are crap. There's no campfires anywhere. I hope you guys don't hate me. And I do think I need a few more, but we will see when night comes here. While we're waiting for night, I I need I need a I need to see pickle pickles pickles. Now, hopefully, yes, it does look like they don't have homes, everyone, which means I can grab these now, and all of them should have three bees inside of them. I'll clean this up when I get the time. A bunch of blocks now, filling almost five shulker boxes. For the final building of the day, I still have a bunch more work to do. Starting us off with a foundation here, using a bit of deep slate, before I want to bring back a build pallet from the city, using a mix of white blocks. On top of this, I want to bring in some red with our mangrove to finish up the walls. First of all, we should definitely start working on a floor down here, and um, the double dirt wasn't sufficient right here, but that's fine. Towards the door here, we can sprinkle in a little bit of coarse dirt as well. Let's also start to get some polished deep slate on top of this. Put some flowering azaleas in front of that. And let's say casing back here going up to blocks. We put that in our offhand. I want to place a few of these going this way. And this is where a few of our bees are going to be sitting. And we can even have some glass trap doors in front of this. Close all of those down. Replicate that on this side as well, of course. Now let's see. So we're going to want pipe all over these but actually I have to place these one by one I've just realized I gotta place it like that and then make it one of those place the next one next one because it definitely looks better with individual pipes above this we can go in with some regular ones and we can have a pump going up in that direction perfect we wrap that around here skipping one block here where we can place in a pump This is going to go over and up into the wall over here. We can have some of those. Now for some power here. And this is where the beauty of andesite casings comes in. Because I had to get a little smart when hooking stuff up here. So we can cover all of those. And then we can make the rest of the floor out of andesite casing. Before we continue with the upstairs, let's extend up some caster and support. Five blocks there and two blocks right out here. On top of these, an industrial iron and then some cast iron in between here, along with some copy... No. Copycat panel. No. Copycat panels, just like that. Connect... Oh. Uh oh, connecting over to here, where we can place some sheet in that. Perfect. I'm gonna get this in right above here so that I easily can place that with the sheets in them. To actually get up there, we can place these going up. And then once we're actually up here, we do some andesite catwalks around here on the inside, all around to there, and all the way over this way. Right under the windows here, I know I want some leaves later, so we're gonna do some trap doors instead. And then with a wrench, we can just simply fix all of these because I do not want the rain. Because I want to make my own ones with a few shoots up here. Cast iron fences that we already placed earlier. And then on these, I want to do some dark oak just to connect these a little bit. It makes it look a little better. And then one final decoration here in the front with a few shafts on these two. Metal brackets. 
and up, oh, that's the wrong way. And then a soul campfire below that. On the side of this building, I want to add in a chimney and using a bunch of different andesite blocks for that. Next here to the chimney on the front side, I want to take that boiler that I had in the sketch from earlier and start building that up. And before we top off the top there, let's add in our windows and then we can take this fluid container and stack that up to here before we make some copper slabs and a ring around that. And then we take some pipes from that and lead it over into here. So now our pipes connect from these into a storage tank up and into the chimney, which if we come to the back here, let's run those off and into there. Some windows and that. And now our honey is right here. We can run those food pipes down and into a basin where on top of that, we can place a mechanical press. Finishing the upstairs with a few trap doors, which we can go ahead and remove. Then a mechanical belt running from there to right over here. With some more casings on top of that. And this. And this over here. Casings everywhere. Or we only see that too. And that. Now I need to remember where I set this to target. I'm gonna set this weighted ejector here now to target that block from there. Which hopefully works. I, I, fingers crossed. Otherwise, I'll fix that later. So there's the ploris back here, which we can put shears into from the top. Then there's going to be the beehives back here, obviously. The deployers. Oh, I need some funnels on those, right. The deployers are going to be on there. Honeycomb is going to end up on the weighted ejector, fly up, land on this belt here, and down and over into the barn. And then the honey will come here, become blocks, and also go that way. And now Uber told me if you put shears, can't have that as the filter. Uber, you lied to me. Uber, you lied! Wait, I just can't see it. Okay, I think it's there, but I can't see it. We can actually confirm this by placing these here. And if I input that, that won't end up there. It's going to be in the hand, which I can't see. Perfect. With the create components fixed here, let's start making a roof. And for this roof here, use this on dark oak while going for a very barn styled roof. The back here does look a little weird, but I do need to access the hopper somehow. And um, I, since I really wanted to use the weighted ejector, I, I needed a hole in the roof. Can you really blame me though? They're pretty cool. With the roof now done, I hopped into the inside to finish off our last interior. Little pickle on the desk here as a cup. And it's turning nighttime so we can go for a sleep back in the bed. And one thing as well, I want to add in a crafted blueprint because it looks pretty cool. And this interior looks quite nice actually. There's a lot of spruce, but spruce is good. We like spruce. With most of the building done, there was only one thing left. And that was to fix the back. And I ran out of detailing ideas, so opting to add in a tree as well. Now there's only one more thing for us left to do, so that's to grab all of our 15 beehives. And I'm gonna place in this one first. There should be a lot more bees in here. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Mistakes were made, mistakes were made. Blocks! <laughs> Give me blocks! Alright, note to future self. Uh, work with bees during the nighttime. All of them in, and um, yeah, that's way too few bees. Down here is where I want to hook all of this up. Output should be simple enough. Gonna run that conveyor belt all the way back here, and that should be fixed. Are we seeing some items pop down here? I just got honeycombs. Oh yeah, because I only have one shear set. And I get honey blocks already. Okay, it is working. Now with all of the farms in working condition, we've got to get some paths in here to connect them. Getting all of the paths in here, I absolutely love this point of a project where everything starts to kind of come together. Now, I've already done a few fields right over here on stream, but to fully connect this project, I think we need a ton more. And I mean a lot. Filling almost all of the dead space that we have in between the buildings to cramp in as many fields as possible. I love the fields. I always love fields in Minecraft. I've actually done a little bit of a rethink here on the backside as I have this train track here and my plan was to run that down here. But instead, I think we're going to have it go this direction and there's going to be some turns and some things over here and it's going to go down by the river side instead and then over to the bridge. I'm not doing that today anyways because that's the train episode, episode 10. Very soon, you should consider subscribing if you don't want to miss trains because I'm so excited. Ah! But if we check our storage here, we're actually missing one of the nine crops. I I've yet to make a rice farm and I can't lie but I'm a little scared I might not have any rice at all no I I don't I 
don't know where they spawned. I'm just gonna fly off in this direction. Cold biome is maybe not the right one, but um, why not? And I've explored a lot in this world and I've seen a lot of biomes, but one of the biomes I don't remember I've ever been to is swamp biomes. And it would make sense for the rice to grow there since it grows in water. And that's a swamp biome. Let's test. That's gonna be onions. Oh, and alliums. Okay, actually, I'm, I'm not gonna complain about that. This also does not look like rice. Nope, this is beets. <gasps> Oh, yeah, I, I was correct. It grows in water and I can just harvest everything else I need should already be here. In gantry shafts, a gantry carriage, harvesters. Now I want to pop down behind the farm here and I've left this terraforming a little unfinished for a little while now just because I know I want a rice field in here. Okay, so we're gonna want the gantry shaft running from here. Under here, we place a funnel on the bottom of that. Right into a belt going off in this direction. And that's the rice field set up. It needs to grow. I've planted the few crops that we do have. Excuse me? Okay, Halloween. I completely forgot about that. And now we forgot one thing left to do. And that is to grab a bunch of these seeds. A whole bunch of onions, carrots, and potatoes. And now I've just got to start planting. With our fields now planted, it's finally time to round off this episode. And this has been one of those projects which I've had on my list for months now. And with it being done, I can say it turned out 10 times better than I ever could imagine. And just walking around down here between all of the buildings, all of the farms, it makes me happy. I have found a few issues with my survival create work. Mainly I've been starting to experiencing lag with the ever growing amount of factories. But not only that, this steam engine powers over half of my world and it's not cutting it. So today I want to build a giant steam power plant. And speaking of the devil, it's already turned off. Yeah, I really need to get a new steam engine rocking in this world. Also, do you like my cat? Gonna need some iron plates here, turning these into 36 empty blaze burners. Because I don't only want to make a new steam engine, I want to ensure that this can power basically everything. So I need 36 of these. And what 36 of these blaze burners will allow me to do is to create four level nine steam engines. And in the last episode, yeah, I used all of my copper supply for the second time. So let's go ahead and equip our back tank and diving set and go for another mining session. Hopefully this is enough copper. Almost done with the material gathering here. Last thing we need is a few anesthetic alloys. And do I have gold? Oh, okay. I just have enough. With those into gold sheets here, let's craft up 36 blocks of copper and 36 steam engine. And yep, yeah, here it is. And I can actually leave this running because I want to build it right to the side of this. However, I can't leave this villager house here because it's 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 right in the middle of the way. Let's just take away the top layer of terrain right here. First thing I want to get in here is definitely the floor. On each of these corners here, I want to start bringing in a few stairs, which we can run around, making this into one squared platform. And then don't you just love the look of a cheese? In the big holes here, let's add in some of our blaze burners. In the middle here, let's get some depots all around with funnels set to input on these sides. And now we're going to pick all of these with our mechanical arms. This is also going to be an input and this is going to be the taking point. With all of those mechanical arm settings copied to the other three corners, I pop down below to hook it all up. On the other side here, let's extend up three, four, five, six fluid tanks with a fluid pipe on top. Then going out from this, I want, oh, like I was saying, going out from this, I want one on that side and a pump on this side, which is going to go up one more block. Then it's going to go to the side, down and into a spout. Then I also want to take these out one more block on either side and slap a red valve on that. And this right here is our lava setup, which right above this, I want to bring in some metal girders. 
which, well, it's also flying, but we can add in some metal brackets to pipes, which is something I've just recently learned. Why I haven't thought about even trying this before, it's beyond me, but it looks really, really cool. Final little detail down here is gonna be some of these, lining this off just as a small little barrier, and we're gonna put some polished anisite in that. Grabbing up our fluid tanks, let's start extending those up. Which on top, of course, getting in our steam engines. Finishing these off with some shafts, of course. Let's get a belt in between those right there, just because a belt looks really good connecting up these. And we're also gonna poke some holes in these and extend some shafts across here, connecting these up. Finally, the thing, having a few cogs here in the middle and a gearbox. And that will have to connect from above eventually. They don't want it on these lines because these are the steam engines and the steam engines need lava to work. So if it somehow turns off, I want it to be able to turn itself on again. Being down here, even without walls and everything, it looks really, really cool. But it has one major issue and uh, I, I, I don't have any lava. And well, I don't think one of these are gonna cut it. So they didn't want to say infinite lava pool yes now for this lava i got a little bit excited on the stream the other day and i went ahead and made a few mechanical drills about 400 to be exact with all of these drills i also need an anisite casing and a block of wool to craft a rope pulley and i guess i could take the power from the steam engine so i don't need a windmill a few barrels might honestly be a smart move as i have a feeling i'm going to be mining a lot of blocks but that is really it but i got head over here to the string factory real quick to get a little bit of XP for my tools. And then with our tools all repaired, let's get to digging. Preparing the area straight below the steam engines for our infinite lava pool. It was quite a big area, but this is a 20 by 20, which means 400 drills, which is what I have. Now I just have to figure out how I'm going to place these. Can I do... Can I do this? I can. Well, maybe this won't be too bad. And the final few mechanical drills, and yeah, it looks a little weird, but it's pretty cool. And now I think going off in this corner would be smartest. Yep, 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 I am correct. As we can pull out our rope pulley, oh, and the barrels. Can't forget about the barrels. I'm gonna just place those in a row right over here. Quickly run some glue over all of this. I hope I can glue it all in one, because that would, okay, I can. We're just gonna have to go from there. And finally the barrels, perfect. Now, if we go to this corner here, we place that right there and I have the box on me perfect let's get ourselves a gearbox and let's hook that up and it sounds like it's going <gasps> oh oh that's so awesome this is so cool why have I not made one of these before okay I've stopped it it's gone down so far already let's see if we try this corner here what level are we on 75 that's the one I want to be on perfect now I just have to nuke all of these and I'm gonna have so many mechanical drills over after this and uh yeah we <laughs> We got a little bit of cobblestone here. And um, I'm not sure if it's even worth saving that. Just getting it out of here is just gonna be a hassle. So we're just gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th I think that's that's for the better. And the good thing about a post rope pulley is that you can climb up it. And I, 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 I can escape. Escape the cobblestone. Oh god. I wanna make a bit of copper scaffolding here. As I think it's gonna fit the vibe. I also need to make one of these. A host pulley. Which is very, very simple to craft. And this is what's actually going to be filling it. I've also gotta craft a bunch of more fluid tanks. I was gonna use that as a smaller bottle. Buffer, but actually I'm gonna just save that for another thing. So let's take our copper scaffolding here and do a ring around the top here. And the scaffolding going straight through the middle. Adding in our hose pulley right here. Let's just pull some power to that from this side. And I've got to be completely honest here. I've got no idea what I'm doing and I'm just gonna pray that this works. And can I, like, change the mode of this somehow? I, th I think that's what we want. I actually got no clue what I'm up to. Oh, I'm so lost. Luckily, I have a bunch of extra terrain controls and stuff here. And a 
few tracks at least, this might not be enough. I also did this little track here, which is very, very temporary. But I need to get a train over from my lava farm over up to the mountain where I can put it in the infinite lava pool. You can see right here. I think it's even, yeah, it's even missing a few tracks back over here. We've connected it up all the way over to the storage house at least. This is gonna be something very, very temporary, but it's gonna work. Getting our fluid tank in here at the back. And why not a few extra fluid tanks here to decorate the front? It looks lovely. Look at this beautiful train. I'm gonna add in a second train controls here for a future little blaze burner to sit here and control it. For the exporting here, where do we do that? Because it doesn't have to be super, super aesthetic, so I can just put it at the back. Well, not into the back, I guess. There. And one of those there. Getting a pump in right here. Few shafts, connecting these two up, and that looks to be working. Yeah, it's pumping lava all the way over here. Now, all I would need to do is... I'm gonna go get the base burner. Place him right in there, and then we can assemble. Attach at least one forward-facing train controls block. Oh, glue. I am very smart, and I definitely don't forget the, the most important things. Assemble train. Lava express. Is that... Oh, yep. They're filling up the tanks. Perfect. I'm gonna let this work on that because I've got to try to connect this up to the lava pool area. Another small little temporary train here, but hopefully this is able to clear the tunnel out without breaking my storage building, preferably. Looks like it. Yes, looks like this is going to be sufficient enough for breaking the tunnel. All right, taking off with the train's first trip here. Hopefully the path is sufficient and I might actually fall out of it now that I realize. I'm just going to take it a little slower, a little slower. Oh, I'm standing inside of the blaze burner. Okay. Yeah, that, I, I, I thought that was gonna happen. Oh, what if I just stand like here? I mean, it's kind of working. It actually worked. Oh my God, how I did not die there. It's a miracle. And oh, ooh, ooh. I'm just gonna wanna back you up that little bit. And our portable interface on this side. And now do you hook all of this up? <gasps> Wait, it's working? Oh God, it's working so well. <gasps> Wait, I was not prepared for this to work. <gasps> That's amazing. That's amazing. Oh, please fill the full bottom layer. It's 400 buckets and I don't I don't think the train has the 400 bucket capacity. Yep, seems like it's empty, but the lava isn't flowing, so I think that's good. Now to set up a train schedule. Travel to station, lava farm. Okay, it's leaving the station. Let's see if we can meet it down at the lava factory. And honestly, that is so cool. Oh, this is hyping me up. Because if you didn't know it, next episode is going to be a full-on train episode. Which means there's going to be a lot of that happening. Especially in the area right behind me, because I'm going to be building a train yard. And if you don't want to miss that, it's also going to be a world download so you should definitely consider subscribing okay are we filling up the lava again yes we are and i presume it's gonna start filling the second layer as it's done with this one all right i'm gonna check back on that in just a little bit but i wanted to get working on some other things while that hopefully fills up now we have to start encasing the steam factory oh no to future self don't find a light and look at yourself no 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 but like i was saying to start encasing this i need to do some block gathering and our first stop when it comes to that will definitely be the lumber mill as I need to grab up some mangrove, jungle, and warped wood. A steam power plant also needs a bunch of bricks, which I already have, thanks to all of the villagers. We can keep three of these stacks as normal bricks, then heading over to the mason table here. Let's turn another three into etched bricks. We also... not that full third stack there, as we need some flat bricks as well. I also, for some reason, want to make the roof out of cast iron, and I'm slightly running out of it. So, taking a little bit of coal, throwing that in that blaze burner, and then some blocks of iron in no that, that that's a, that's a mixture stamp i mean this place burner here we go that should end up over here making some more cast iron for us while we wait for that i did actually notice i need i need a few more bricks so some more emeralds turn into even more bricks and why is there one missing what oh no that is weird. However, with the cast iron we now have, we need to turn... I'm gonna go ahead and turn all of this into sheet metal. And even this won't be enough, I don't think. I need seven stacks and a bit of slabs. Yep, we're gonna need to make some more. Let's place all of these down and eagerly starting this build off. I wanted to start with creating a foundation with our cobblestone mix before starting a train platform to house a future train. Now, before we can continue building, I, I I need to dismantle this. You've helped out an okay amount. You're free, B. You can finally move around. But you could just get stuck instantly again. Works too. 
and then pfft, <laughs> you can't even make that up. Moving on from the tragic death of that bee, I want to start encasing our steam engines and using a brick mix to do that. On top of this brick here, once we are above the steam engines, I want to come in with some mud. The mud up there is to give us a little bit of border because I do want to extend the brick up a little more, but I will do that in just a little bit. As I want to come down to what is going to be a lower part of the building to start adding in a white mix of blocks. Grabbing our warp board here, let's start adding that in on the short sides. Leaving this block as I want to come in with some supports in front of this block just because I don't want the warp visible from the long side, aka th that one. So we're going to have to get a little bit creative here and the supports are perfect for this. Because this allows us to come in with our jungle on the side. Stretch that across before we're extending in the warped again. And take it a few jungle planks above this. Extending our jungle up just a little bit extra to get a very nice kind of rounded off shape. I already want to start with a few simple details. Going back to my favorite lantern trick here with some metal brackets. Hanging those down just like that. Before I want to come in with a display board. And this is actually the first time I'm using a display board in this world. Which we need to power through this little hole up here. And let's see a shaft from that. Up, oh, uh. There we go. Also, a few more details just above this for the window as well. And this side is going to be quite cool. But right now, it's not cool enough. So, a few birch fences on these. There's a redstone contact at the bottom here as I'm addicted to this block. And then we get some servers over here. We get some servers all the way up here. And can I place... No, I don't... Wait, I do want to place those like that. No, do I? No, I want to place these just like this. And a few more servers up top. While we are in the area, we might as well well finish off this little loading dock here adding in a few brick walls and then using some coal for decoration and well the idea is that the coal is what's going to be powering the steam engines it, it, actually it's lava but for the lore we could say it's coal sounds good right now the walls i've built up are unconnected so going ahead and filling in the area in between with some mangrove before extending in a roof using the cast iron over the warp and jungle mix shoot up this way one more on top of that going sideways we can get a trapdoor on top of there let's have it go one more sideways and then one more shoot just like that for a little bit of decoration on that. Flight above the newly built. I really, really like this roof. I like the little hint of blue here at the top and I also really like the use of copper where I wanted it to kind of be rust. And like honestly, a rust block, iron, rusting, just like copper does, I, I, I would not complain. But I think the copper works pretty good as rust. And um, I, I don't have all the materials yet so I'm gonna address the holes later. On the front of the brick building, I left these big open areas and of course we gotta fill them with some windows. On the smaller windows here, let's grab some andesite ladders and place those down. This side as well, of course. I, I don't want it up there. Then I want to take some limestone and copy cap steps and make a little order at the bottom, which looks really, really nice in my opinion. Then extending our scaffolding up a few more blocks, specifically up to the mud here. I do want to start bringing in a shaft going from the side here. And we'll end that off two blocks from the end on each side and cap it off with a valve. Because I am starting to like these valves. They're very cool. Yep, definitely satisfied with that. But let's go ahead and get that shaft valve combo done on the two other sides. Preparing that little bit here for the future where I want to bring in a little bit of mud. Still really, really love this rough mud texture. On this side, let's start adding that in. Two blocks down, some stairs. Oh, that's the wrong way. Stairs like that. And then into the ground as some sort of like a vent. Jumping into the inside, I want to start adding in a few create components to eventually get the steam power plant running. Now I've got all that hooked up, except this little bit over here. So shaft leading from there. And well, yeah, we need to power all of the water things. And that's what we're going to be doing over here. Let's see a whole bunch of gear boxes, which I, I need to flip to the upstate. And on the side as Okay, well, I forgot it again. I need to do it this. Then in between here, taking our windmill bearings. I mean, yeah, we're making another world blob. I had to. The steam plant needed like 7,500 SU and like I'm not about to get that with water wheels. Water wheel 
tools suck. They look really good, but they're also really bad. And to connect all of these, some shafts. And we're going to do shafts on all of these. Because, well, we need the rotation power from them. And on these right over here. Oh, why are you the wrong way? Oh, actually, because I don't need one there. Perfect. We're going to run a belt from that one to that one. And this one to this one. And then one there to there. And then we do one more belt right over here to connect the three as well. So we get all this. Before we can take a gearbox right here to connect it up. Now we just need to take away a little bit more terrain below these. As I do want to add in a wood. Hey blocks down here we need to start adding in our glue well our wool first and then we can take our glue on these and this windmill setup i've seen used by the jojo and it's a really nice one because it's not just one giant spinning blob it's multiple and uh, i don't really know why it's nice Final two pieces of glue, just like that. Perfect. Now those windmills aren't quite enough to power it. So some water wheels here on the side as well, which is going to be nice with a little bit of river and maybe a small lake up here. But I'll do that tire forming a little bit later because I actually want a small river running down here next to this steam engine power plant and into a bigger reservoir slash lake down here later. I'm really, really excited for that tire forming project. But yeah, uh, overstressed because I haven't turned on the windmills and I don't want the steam engines to start just yet because they are so, so loud. And I uh, I'd rather build in peace. Now with the majority of the steam power plant done, I want to take a little bit of a break from building. Because I've recently been experiencing a bunch of lag in my world. So what I want to do for the second part of the steam power plant is add a control room where I essentially can control all of the farms inside of my world and turn them on and off. And I might have been a little lazy or dumb when designing my farms as most of them don't have on and off switches. So we have to install those and probably make a few other small changes to certain farms to add some buffers and all of that jazz. But luckily, I think we have, yeah. 17 redstone links that should do us and i think we should start from episode one and work our way up to episode eight and well the first thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna remove this because uh, i don't use it and uh it, it's it's no need to have it Next one is going to be super, super simple here, which is going to be our iron farm with a clutch right here and one over here. We can now turn this on and off. Leave my storage building. This is one of the areas I definitely want to improve because I actually have clutches prepared for every single tree farm. I just don't have any way of turning them on and off. I'm going to make some threshold switches to self-regulate that. As we break the roof here and hop down and remove some mangrove support, we can add a super, super simple self-regulation here. These can look all down into these redstone link on top of these and on the side of this one i just guess oh well that is an issue that i did not think about a little dirty but a functional fix so i just have to get down here here to all of the clutches of these the redstone one of those and our thingies and switch it to that now it's off We're running around to all of the other ones and placing in the switches for them now these two i don't know how to stop actually i've got an idea if i replace this lever remove that will it stop it will okay then all i need is a redstone link instead with button and dark oak Turn that on. That's going to turn on now because I need to go inverse the signal. Now, I never think I'm going to have enough mangrove. I did actually fix the mangrove farm, but I don't think I'll ever have enough. But I'll add in the switch nonetheless. Perfect. Most of the farms should be stopped now. That's amazing. Just got to add in one for the whole farm. Perfect. Quickly getting the hang of this now, I just had to run around to all of the other factories to hook up some on and off switches. Now, I think I've gone around to all of the farms. There's one more thing I would like to do, though, and that is to add them to train stations as well, so I can stop trains, because trains uh, are loud and they probably also could be laggy. Right, you don't even need a redstone link, I forgot about that. Just simple like that should be it. Link of train casing, redstone dust, perfect. And the same for our second train. Now, I gathered up mostly everything before, and I just went on a mining spree on my stream and have a bunch of copper because well i need about eight stacks of fluid tanks yeah and i definitely do not have enough of wood for those barrels in my storage room so we've got to use this one this will create six stacks of slabs and that's another six and then turning all of these into barrels very, very slowly. As I might have, I have a few too many slabs, maybe. <laughs> That's a lot of barrels. Very, very nice. And I even made an extra stack. Okay, nice. I'm keeping that. Because you can never really get enough barrels.
wilds. Another thing I did on my stream, as I knew I needed to craft a bunch of fluid tanks, is I prepared a little machine. Because my one metal press is just a little slow, so I built one with three down here instead. So I can just throw copper in here, and this is gonna take less time. While that is working away downstairs, I need a few anisite casing and some shafts. I actually misremembered it. I do not need anisite casing. I just need a little bit of stone, and I can craft windmill bearings. And I definitely won't be making any blobs of wool underground, no? Why would I? I also need to take some electron tubes and for the first time in my create career, make a few display boards. And taking a brass casing in here, I can go ahead and make a dried kelp block and then that in the middle, iron sheet at the bottom and a brass casing will make me an elevator pulley. And I, I still haven't made an elevator in create and I, I'm, I'm really excited about this one. Now are these done yet? does not look like it. They've done a few, so we should be able to craft up a couple of fluid tanks here. And just short. Okay. And this should be the final fluid tanks. Perfect. With the final components crafted up for this build, getting straight back to it, adding in three tanks on the side. Switching back to the main building, I want to finish off this brick part that we started earlier. On top of a few spruce supports here, we can start extending in a roof on top of this, of course. Incorporating our rust as well, or well, copper, and bringing this up together. Now I haven't fully connected these as I do want to come in with another building up here. Oh well, I guess it's the same building, but it's a different part of the building. And I promise these will be the last walls added to this building as I want to add in a small little mangrove top to this. Topping these two new wall bits here with a couple of roofs. With the shape now in for this whole building, I just need to detail the areas we've just built. One final detail here on the outside now, another drainage pipe, right? Oh god, I hope I'm not wrong in that. Connecting that up to the wall, a chute, and some more fences. Actually, lie, there's one more thing I want to add in here, and that's two giant chimneys. And this is ma the majority of those flue tanks we made earlier. Um, they're, they're being used for decorational purposes. Take away two in the middle here, add in a hay bale and a campfire on top of that because that's going to go further. A few more campfires to support that and then we can round this up with a few copper trap doors. And well, yeah, I have another hole here because, well, I, I, I want to add in a second one. Yep. Yeah. Yep, that's just what this build needed. No, it's actually looking kind of like a power plant. Although, if we head inside, um, it hasn't seen better days, but we need to fix this. I'm currently doing interiors and builds. I don't know why, but I, I like them, so we're gonna continue. But first, I've gotta check up on how our train is doing filling the lava pool under here. Oh, um, it, 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 it hasn't gone very far. I, I don't think this is working. So, we're gonna have to combat this in a new way, and I don't want to use this train anymore. So I've gone ahead and prepped a few materials. So let's watch this schematic cannon do its work and build us an amazing train. And it's a beauty. Before we can get it on the track though, I want to clean this up right over here as we won't be using this method anymore because it, it, it wasn't working. And I, that means I also need to retrieve schedule. Okay, perfect. Because um, this assemble train, I, I, I don't want this one anymore. You can all go into my pocket again. Like I said, this one was really only temporary. It was pretty, pretty ugly. And as a bonus, we get a train station over which we can plug this train into just like that and create a new train perfect and assemble front most boogie must be at station marker oh create new train five bogies assemble train perfect lava express oh yeah it's a beauty now we just need to get it onto the track and i wanted to face this direction perfect in here it's a little cramped but there will be a blaze burner controlling this i won't be the one but it moves 
Perfect, so that we can get it on the main line. Now if we back up, we should... Yes, perfect. We're traversing at um, full capacity here. I might hit my head on a few things here. Nope, it looks like we're good. This is very realistic and it definitely fits, yeah. Oh, the, the, the plows are doing things with the terrain. Uh-oh, okay. Uh... Okay, we're good. Are these now aligned? If I could just... If I could just see in there... Yes, it looks like they're extended. Okay. And yeah, here is the janky setup I just set up on a stream. Where we have our train being filled by lava. And it goes through the portal. And this should hopefully... Ah! Ah! This should hopefully fill up the lava pool. And well, while we wait for that, I think it's time that we tackle the inside. As um, I mentioned it earlier, we need a control room and I want it to be above the steam engine. And hopefully that will fill up because I, I, I need power to my storage room. <laughs> and with the shape looking quite rough at the top of the steam power plant, I had to get my spruce out and spruce it up a little bit. With it tidied up here, let's get some dark oak wood for a bench stretching across right here. And on the back, I want to grab some gray placards and our nice redstone lamps. As on every other one right here, we can place these in. And on those two, where I've left a little gap in the roof, as we can add in our redstone lamps in that gap. On the side, I need both the slabs and the redstone lamps. Perfect. Then grabbing a few levers, we can place those right here. And you might have seen that there were holes in the floor. And that's because I need to add a redstone link at the bottom there. Because flipping one of these is going to power this. And say this is the iron mine. It's also going to unpower the iron mine. And will hopefully save me from lag. I've got a good idea on how we're going to get up here soon. But I need to add in a few trapdoors right here. As um, the spinning gears seem a little dangerous. And um, don't mind that that's clipping through. Moving ourselves up one more floor. I want to turn this into some sort of planning room. So more dark oak tables stretching along this side right here. In the corners we can get some flower pots. Well, big flower pots. As I want some leaves on top of these. And a small little sign on the bed there so we can go for now. We can get a quick railing in right over here. And a few flower pots in the corners. And I've got something really, really nice that I want to put up here on these. You might be able to guess what it is, but I'm going to get back to that towards the end of the episode. Because right now I need to turn my attention to the middle here. We've got a 3x3 three three going all the way down there, which I need to fix. Because coming up all the way here, I want to use a create mechanic I haven't used yet. And that is an elevator. This also needs power, which we can do super simple with a gearbox. And just a couple of shafts. For the elevator itself, we can do a metal girder going out on both sides and down two blocks. On this we can place our cobble deep state slabs and extend in a little bit of a platform. And finally a contraption controller that's facing the wrong way. There we go. We also need a redstone contact right here so it actually works as an elevator. Now can I turn this into an elevator right now or do you need power? Of course you need power. Okay it will just have to stay there then. Now before we go and check on our lava train this also needs a little bit of work. So what I want to do is come in with some redstone contacts right here and some strip dark oak on top of that and voila door it's done. Okay, okay I lied. I actually want to make this door work which we can do with a little bit of wood right here. A redstone link below here, a redstone contact and some vertical spruce planks I guess and place that back. We're gonna do our mechanical bearings right here. Shafts going up to the top of the door. Encase this one and some brackets to hold onto the door. Pop it down here. We can add in our sequence gear shift. A gearbox right there. One over here. Here I want to place a rotation speed controller with a cog in it. Some shafts connecting all of this. And finally another redstone controller. No link. Door won't work at the moment as well there's no power to it but we can add in the sprue surrounding it. And I almost forgot we need a button right there and one on the outside right there. Now let's hop down here and check on how our train has been doing. It's not here right now but the lava sure is. It's not even got a layer left. Oh there it is. Oh. oh. Yes. And will you finish filling it up? It should. I'm actually going to go ahead and join the train schedule as I think it's going to fill up now and I don't want to go back into the nether. It's on the final stretches now. Once the corners gets filled in here. It's a bottomless supply. Yes. C can't you fill the last one? Hello? 
There's one. Fine, I guess I'll do it myself. And yes, it's working. The lava is everywhere. We just... Oh, right. We need to grab four buckets. And if we place these here, the steam engines should power up. Yep, it looks like they are. And they're powering the blaze burners. Perfect. Oh, this is starting to look so awesome. Oh, this has been so much work and it's finally coming together. And oh, I've, I've not put the bucket filters on these. So they're just continuously grabbing them. Which, no, we do not want that. There we go. And now they're all generating 150,000. Which means if we look out here, total remaining. Oh, yes. I need to quickly hop down to the storage room now. It's still not powered, but it does need to be powered for this. As all I need is a name tag, which I really should have. Yes. Let's name this Steam Power Plant. As my friend Skeesh taught me, I can just click that right there. And oh, that's amazing. And it didn't even use the name tag. I also want to give this a little bit of color here with some orange on the top one, some red on the bottom, and some green in the middle. There we go. And we're using 300. Oh, this is amazing. I need, I need to hook it up now. Now, this is the output. Wait, no, it's not bottomless. Uh oh. Hello? That's bad. Why? How did it stop being bottomless? That should be everything powered again. Perfect. But I need to go and get a little more lava. Because, well, it's not infinite anymore. Now I'm just chilling here at the bottom of the lava pit, extending in it a little bit. Hopefully, this will make it infinite. And, um, I looked up. The hose was at the top. And well, if you haven't done one of these before, it has to be at the bottom to be infinite. So that that that's why it wasn't infinite. Yeah. <sighs> but I might as well extend it now. With the lava actually filled up now and fully working, I pop outside of the steam factory to prepare a little bit of terrain around the front. And I really, really like this little pond I added in up here. Well, I need to add in a few more vegetation around, but I also don't really know what I want to do over here. So for now, I'm just going to leave it a little bare. But what I have done is add in the tracks here and we need to get the train because right now our train is sitting right here and I, I, I need to get it up there. And oh, I was going to go and make more train tracks, but I already have a plenty right here. We can go ahead and tear down this portal. And now I'm just going to take this track here and get it up on the hill. That looks so crazy. If you want a small create tip that I got from Uber yesterday, you can turn up the max length that you can place train tracks up to 128 blocks. I have it at 64, which allows me to create some cooler corners and slopes. And connecting it up right there. Perfect. Now this is a very temporary track as you can see by it flying, but jumping on board our train, we can take it around the track and still get up there. And oh, it's going to be facing the wrong way. Yeah, I have to fix that in just a second. Oh, I'm sorry, horses. Yeah, it's facing the wrong way. Uh oh, that's fine. Okay, there we go. Now, if we go and back this up, this should turn around and be the same route. Oh my god, I thought it went off the edge. I'm sorry, animals, but um, you're in the way. All right, slow it down, slow it down around the final bend. Perfect. We might as well recycle the train station we don't have down here. Now, I have to line this up with the back one, which I'm gonna try there, as trains are a little finicky to get into the right position, but let's see where this is at. Okay, no, we need one block forward. We park in the train. Yep, yeah, that's where I want it. But for now, I don't want the train and the station, as we need to do a few small decorations, and I also don't want to run out of track. Yeah, that, that that's that's how far we get. Is that enough? Yes, that should give me enough room. And I'm not out of time to gather all the materials, but I do have a few, which is two polished deep slate, and we get some metal girders. Not like that, we get metal girders like that. Some cast iron trap doors on the back right here. Metal girders sticking out and then some valves on those. Perfect. So that's a little train stop so that we don't run off the track even though this one doesn't have the connecting thingy big -bi bobs. Words. Now I'm not missing many blocks. I'm just missing a few wooden ones and the specific wood type I'm missing a bunch of is oak. So I just need to craft that up. So now the first thing I want to do here is that I want to allow the steam power plant to export lava as well. So let's take our oak beams, extend those up. And we're gonna extend another one up right over here. On top of these, we can grab some oak slabs, flip these upside down, we'll place some support in between them, just like this. To take ourselves from here and back over into the wall, we use some oak palisades. And I'm gonna have to remove one of our facades right there to connect it. On top of these, I want to come in with some oak seats and place those as just like a little small air gap that you get. Right there, you can see it. Also, I want to take that across right here and over here. While we are up here, we might as well prep and extend this out from the wall. I can't stand on that, hmm. but I can stand over here. 
flip those down and make them a little wider. From these, I want to bring out some pipes from our wall eventually. And then we put down that right there, which means we can load the train with lava. And since we don't want it to be flying, we can also bracket up that. Perfect. This whole oak support thing isn't very supported. So using some palisades and fences to give it that missing structure. Perfect. That's looking a lot more supported now. Don't, don't mind the fact that it's exporting lava and we're doing that using wood. It's fine. A few more decorational barrels here in the back. Even get a chest right over here and maybe a little bit of scaffolding. I also want to move the train signal here to right over here so we can just hide it there. And yeah, that doesn't show. Power clean power plant. We should now be able to park up the train. Step out of it and yep, that lines up. Perfect. This is a small issue. Um, <laughs> you can't get over the train when when the train is here. But I guess that's fine because you only really need it when it's not here. Oh. Well, that, that, that was buggy, but it worked. I'm now closing in on that 1,000 days. And wanting to wrap this project up, I decided to continue the river down a bit more to tie this build into the landscape a little more. Now, this river looks really, really good, but it has a slight issue. I, I broke the path. So with a few blocks here, let's repair and make some sort of a little bridge. Now, I do have to admit, it's a little scuffed bridge, but for freehanding a bridge, I'm actually quite happy with it. And like, it, it does the work, while also not looking too bad. Also, while building that river, I uh, I might have gone ahead and passed day 1000. There was one more thing I did say I wanted to do in today's episode though. So grabbing some iron and redstone here. Let's make eight compasses. I also need eight glass panes. And if we go ahead and fly over to the farming district, still absolutely love how this area turned out looking. And just grab a little bit of sugarcane, make that into paper, and then we can make eight maps. Perfect. Now also, let's just check out that and set up the thing. Oops, 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 oops. I broke my door. Let's just close that. That's what it's supposed to do is go input speed this way and then turn by angle and it's going to go backwards. But it's going to do that after it wait new red samples. Perfect. Now, if I press this button, it should open inwards instead. Yeah, that, that's what it went, was meant to do. I also went ahead and did all of the boring hooking up stuff up here. And I can now turn on and off every farm I have in the world. But heading up one more floor. I oh, ooh, I need to clean up my mess, but I do have a cartographer's table here. So if we create a map, yes, this is the map I want. Then we put a glass pane with that locks it. Oh, wait, I'm doing this wrong. It's paper. There we go. Now this one should be the corner. Perfect. So if we just step forward, grab another one and do the same with this one. I've got my four maps now here and you're about to see something very, very cool. I've just got to go and load them. Now if we grab a few item frames, place them here. And if we get so that one's going to be right there. This one's going to be that one. Nope. That one's going to be there. And this one's going to be here. If you look at this, four maps scaled out once perfectly in case it's the entire island, which is so awesome because I absolutely love in-game maps. Oh, this is just so nice to see. But I want to make a duplicate of this, which will need the maps back. And one of these, I want a lock. So these are my locked ones, which we can go ahead and add in just like that. And that's going to be around day 1000. Which, do I have any wood up here? I have on me. Because I think we should make a sign and say day 1000. And then we'll come back and update these maps at some point in the future. And honestly, that's probably going to be towards when I end this world. Because I, I do have some plans on when I'm going to end this world. I'm not going to announce those yet. But just know it's not going to be the end of create because I've got a bigger and even better than this world plan. But with those maps finished up in the top, this build is completed. I finally have a reliable source of SU for my entire island. And if I might say, the building as well turned out absolutely amazing. With my world now over 1000 days, I feel it is time that we expand my train network. I want to connect up all of our current factories with a rail network. We're also going to need a bunch of train tracks and train casings, so I want to build a train yard automating those. One of the things I'm most excited about is going to be hooking up all of the farms we have now with train tracks. But right now, this is all of the train tracks I have, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but not even three stacks of train tracks is definitely not going to be enough to connect everything I want to today. Luckily, creating train tracks isn't super annoying. We just need two deployers and a metal press. The deployers I'm going to join from this machine here that I never use. I don't have a metal press over, so I've got to grab a few 
shafts, and some casings. Together with a bit of iron, we can turn that into a block, and then a mechanical press. And I was about to make five drills, but I guess it keeps giving. Thank you, drill. Need to press up three sheets here, as you need one more component, which is a mechanical saw, because I need slabs, and this is the easiest way to turn stuff into slabs. Now, the spot I've decided to build this train yard is actually right here, in between my storage building and the farm we were just at. It's a very good spot, as I already have a train track going through here, and I want to build on it, because I definitely want trains to go through my storage. That's the reason why I have those big openings at the bottom. I want to try something new with this farm here, as I want to dig out a bigger area, so that I can place all of the blocks down a little bit easier. I also added in a floor, as we need something to build on, but we have a bunch of space under here. And my hope is that it's going to be easier. And I want to place a barrel down here, which I want some hoppers leading into that. Above these hoppers on this side right here, I want to get in some mechanical drills. And since they won't be on a contraption, I'm going to need some encased chain drives on the back of these to power them. Also going to need to start extending that down in that hole there, as you know how it is here. We, we make cheeses and then we fill the cheeses with create components. Yep. And this is obviously going to be a small little cobblestone generator right here, and I don't want to use one of those big ones. First of all, I'm not looking for that much cobble, and second of all, they're really laggy. In front of this barrel here, I want to place in a metal bar, and if we take a brass funnel leading out from that, that's in, we need out, that's going to output our cobblestone onto that metal bar, which if we then get a few shafts up here, let's get a shaft in between there, leave a blocks gap, and then we'll run that over to right here. Obviously, get some belts on these, and this is where we're going to start our production line, so we're going to get a mechanical saw, then our first deployer, second deployer, and our metal press, and those are lined up, perfect, as we're going to need a few shafts connecting them, and this is basically all of the components that will be creating it. We get our cobblestone from here, I need a fan down here, which is going to smelt the cobblestone, that's then going to be turned into stairs by this one, slabs, and then we get this line, which will turn it into train tracks. Adding on to this now, I had to hook up the power below the platform, Back on the top side, let's add that up. We'll add a gearbox here, shaft there and there. Get up here and then if we line... Okay, that's that shaft that we want two chain drives right here. And a shaft right there. This leads into a gearbox, another shaft and... Oh, nope, we get another... Uh, nope, another shaft. Thank you. And some belt on that to that. And this all the way down to here. If we get a belt in there, we can run that across over this direction. And one more there. At the end over here, Let's get a vault in two blocks right there so we can get a little bit of a buffer. And then we'll do a brass funnel extracting from that and a brass funnel inputting there. That's output. Input. Perfect. And that's going to be our iron nugget input, which is going to be arriving from that fan down there and eventually that belt and eventually something over here. The iron nuggets get here at least. But that gets up there and that's going to go over here into these two. Before we jump down from up here, we might as well extend in our gear shift right here and a gearbox in that and flip that on. I want to grab grab some shoots here on the bottom of those to extend those into the deployers, which is how the deployers get the iron. And this is pretty much all of the create. We just need a few decoration blocks running above here. Not on that layer. We need one more up and across. Oh, and I'm forgetting here. We actually do need a funnel looking into this belt. With some buckets here in the front, we can grab our water and fill this little area. Perfect. Then you grab our lava bucket and our framed glass trap doors. We can place some temporary blocks up here. And I oh, actually, I can place these in now and then we can add in the lava in the middle closing those down and that should generate stone for us perfect there is actually one final thing we need to do and that's to add in a giant vault at the back here because i'm gonna want a lot of train tracks and a little threshold switch on the back here so that we can turn the farm off when this gets full now what i'm hoping i can do is that i can run power from over here all the way over here i i hope so that's why i have this little thing here which where would i need to be preferably a few more blocks this way this said level here should be good perfect oh and that's actually the perfect y level as well I just need a few shafts. And let's start running this back. Hooking this up to that now. And we should... Yep, it's starting to go. And it looks like everything is spinning in the correct direction. Yes, it is. Perfect. We're already creating cobblestone. And uh, do I have the lava in there? Okay, something is not correct. And I'm actually doing two things wrong here. So we're going to run a filter on this one. And we're going to do that to make sure it only accepts 
smelted stone. And now we should see a bit pop up here. Yes, there it goes. And um, I actually have no idea what that made. That is not the right thing. This thing is very, very loud, but we're going to be making some stone slabs, which we can plonk on the filter right there. And uh, I just got to pick all of these things up because they're, they're not supposed to be there. And now if you just input some iron nuggets or sink nuggets, we get train tracks. Here is a screenshot over my create world. Now, let me add a few lights. These are the train tracks I currently have in my world. But like I've said, I want to expand on them. So let's add in a few new tracks shown by the red lights. I also have plans for two little bigger train stations, which I've marked. And then the question marks, I'm still unsure. Um, don't mind the Steve skin. Uh, yeah, I have no internet at the moment, but I've still got to record. And with a sort of plan figured out and train tracks now, I kind of want to start implementing it. And I, I hope I have a lot of train tracks. Oh, they just keep coming more. For the time being, I'm not going to be caring really where I place the tracks or if I place it on anything. As well, we can just roll over it with a roller in a little bit. So the first track I want to fix up here is the one that's going to go over from the kale factory over to the storage building and past the train yard. Okay, there we go. Now we've connected this up a little more clean over to here. And I've also taken this track back that little bit. And this is out of iron nuggets. So I'm actually going to go ahead and turn it off because it's a little loud. I actually want to start preparing the area a little bit. And the first thing is going to be taking this track back a few blocks. Then we've got this like pit here, which um, yeah, I, I, I don't want this. So we've got to get a layer of dirt all above this and all the way over there. It actually took a surprising amount of time to flatten this ground here. But with it now flattened, I can come in with the terrain tracks and start to get that down. Now this looks a little more fun with some train tracks. Oh, this is so exciting. But I need something to clear away a little bit of terrain. And I think we might as well grab up a few rollers. Where do I have them? Oh, there they are. And we can really build this train on any of these tracks. And it's going to be a super temporary simple one. Just a little bit of glue to connect everything up. And then we can assemble that. Perfect. And we should be able to access the barrels. Perfect. And then heading over to my storage here, I should have a bunch of deep slates. Oh, wait. Okay. Disassemble. We can put that on those. And clear blocks and pave. Perfect. That's what we want. And then we can put some deep slate in here. And let's see how far this gets us after a quick nap. Just first, I'm going to start with backing up to around here where the deep slate ends. And now if we go forward... Yes, it's paving. Okay, perfect. I'm just going to run on this a little bit then. It's not going that fast, but it's moving. And should create some slabs coming downwards. Then I want to do the turn here. Oh, this is so handy. Oh, way, 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 way too fast. Okay, slow us down. Now we have to figure out how to turn this train around. Which, there's not a whole lot of space over here. So I think we're going to have to make something over here. Where if we can just like take this and it goes in this direction. And then we can connect this track to here as well. And I've taken the deep state out of it. So now that I go forward, it won't pave anything. Just because I don't want to pave where I don't have rails. Wait a second. I actually just got a comment this morning. I've got to test this. If I wrench this, or do I have to access the middle block? Or is it just like the track? Hmm, doesn't look like it. Wait. <gasps> it, what? Oh, okay. Well, I could have just done that then. So if we just relocate that to right over here, do right. There we go. Oh, that's so handy. But now go forward here. We're going to pave a little more. Now the biggest portion here where we can actually remove a bit of terrain. Perfect. Clearing the way for the train. All the way back over to the storage building. And I actually had enough deep slates. Whoa, way too fast. And with a little bit to spare. Now that is definitely an amazing start to the expansion. We now have at least two buildings connected. Yay. I, 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 I gotta stop looking at myself this. Oh no, <laughs> I want my skin back. These train tracks are inspiring. And before we get started on some more, I want to build something. I know I've been needing some emeralds here as I want some bricks, which um, I, I, I'm too lazy to go switch on the power. So I'm just gonna jump down here and trade with them for a little bit. Luckily, I have a door down here. With these bricks, do I have any? Yes, I have a lot of dandelions. Let's turn those in to some yellow dye and we can make some deep bricks. I don't need too many of these but I want to turn some of them crack and some of them also overgrown. For this building I also want some catwalks and do I have any andesite catwalks left over? Got bars. Ooh and I have a few catwalks but one stair. Okay we can take these catwalks and turn them into a few more stairs and I'm afraid I made a few too many so let's make some more catwalks and that should be fine. Then I also want to take some sink and I want to make some copycat panels. Not to put blocks 
blocks in them, but I want to use them as decoration. And then I want some copycap steps with blocks in them. Another thing that's going to be important is I need an andesite casing. And it seems I'm constantly out of shoot, so let's press down a stack of iron. Okay, this isn't that optimized. What if I change the amount you output to up to eight? Oh yeah, that's being split more evenly. Perfect. With this stack of sheets, we can craft an excess of shoots because I always use them. And a very important component for our build, which is going to be a portable storage interface. With a bit more material gathering done, I've uh, got my skin back after um, maybe hitting the router a few times with a hammer, but it works. In all seriousness, don't, don't, don't hit your router with the hammer. No, no, no. That's, that's not how you fix problems. Anyhow, I want to get some sort of a train platform or station in for this little area here. And also because I want to deliver some items to this because we, we, we need nuggets somehow. So let's start off with some cut tough to get a rough idea on where the train platform is going to be. But building up this wall, don't worry about the interior. It will have a good purpose anyways. There's also a little too little space in here to actually make some kind of an interior. But there is definitely space to extend in a top floor to this. Or an upstairs, I guess you would call it. No, I will be the first to admit it looks a little weird at the moment. But it also misses a few things. So let's grab us some sink and our brick blocks again. Also need something to support it. So if we go in the middle here, we can place one of those. And then I want to outline a little pillar here with some sink. Which we then can come in with some bricks here on top of this. Stacking our way all the way up to support this. On the bottom side, let's get some cast iron sheet metal to support up the walls all around like this. Grabbing this one back as I realized we want a stair there, a stair there, and there we go. Then we can also fill in some sort of a floor up here with some spruce. Now I've got to get up there, so let's grab our catwalks. And I want to start us off right here and start going up and come around before we can come in with our andesite catwalks right here. And oh, I still hate placing these, but I know how to place them a little more now at least. And now the copycat panels, I actually want to use on the side of these here because I think this was a really, really cool way to get some railings to them. Which like, why do the catwalks have railings, but not the stairs. Now we can head in here upstairs and there's a little bit of a gap there. Then continuing out from these doorways here, I want to stack some andesite catwalks all the way around the building. Reach into right over here. First of all, some warp doors up here. Then I want to take some birch doors and the ship mod has this really cool door with a very big glass window which I really quite enjoyed. So we're going to place those right here which we can give some slight decorations to on the outside. Before we slap a roof on this, let's grab that portable storage interface and plunk that in the floor. That's the wrong way. We need it that way. And I funnel on that to export the items. I'm going to want some shafts running from here over to this area with a belt so that items will come from the train, come over here and then drop down. If we grab a little bit of deep slate here, I want to come in with a roof and then a little smaller roof down here. Do small decorations here on the back. I, I I don't know what it's really supposed to be. Maybe some sort of support for the catwalk, but the wall needed something. To complement our windows here, let's get in a few leaves on the bottom. And why not a flower pot with some flowers in them? This is also is some sort of like a freight platform. Let's get some barrels. And I want to run some chain link fences just here and oh, maybe a few over here. Just for a little bit of decoration. Maybe one there as well. Yeah. But with a little bit of glow lighting, the exterior is definitely complete then. And yes, I did say exterior because we do need to do a little bit of work here on the inside. So our items is going to be right there. But we need them on this level. Yes. So if I just take away the ground a little bit. Oh, well, hopefully I don't have to go down that far. Okay, let's get our chain drives first of all. And I need to run those from up here all the way down. Down, down, and I think down one more block, which will use some tough because I have extra of it. Then if we can get some shafts coming along here here. We can get the first shaft for the belt, which means I, I don't have to go down there. Then if we cover these shafts with some casings, we get a little bit of an encased bit, which with some grass here, we can place water here to make the items come over in this direction. Now we just need to hook that belt up to over here, which thanks to my double dirting shouldn't really be an issue. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not going down there. I'm not going down there. Powering the machine on. Let's double check so this works. Yes, they're spinning. Perfect. With this building working now, I want to continue extending the train tracks. And I've prepped a schematic cannon right behind us here. And also moved some rails. But I'm going to load this up with some gunpowder and let's build a train. And this is a tunnel bore train that will not only dig out the tunnel for me, but will also create the walls, roof, and floor. 
perfect. It looks all right. I've had to get a little bit creative here on the back wheels. And because the deployers are here, I couldn't have any train tracks. So I had to add in some flywheels for wheels. But let's get a train station out here and see if we can create a new train. Perfect. Tunnel bore. Very beautiful. Yeah, it, it, it's a little wonky. There's a lot of deployers here. And for some reason, deployers work really weird when placing slabs on a train because they place it the other way around. But this should work. And well, it's not going to place anything now, which is good. But eventually it will. Oh, well, it placed one wall. Look at that. Oh, and it forgot the wheels. So let's just quickly get a shaft in here. And then I need to get a metal bracket on this. I've got no idea how I actually did this. But now with this train, I want to focus on hooking this part over here up to here. I know we've already done that, but I also want this track to come over and go past the city here as I want to build a big train station here eventually. And that's going to turn into the mountain and there's going to be a giant tunnel going under the whole mountain, which is why I made that train because, well, I, I don't really want to build those tunnels by hand. So I'm going to get to digging on the small tunnel first to test this machine out as I still haven't fully tested it. All right, so we have a simple little junction right here, and that is going straight through the mountain over to where I want my train station. So now let's get the tunnel bore over here. Ooh, I just remembered that's going to clear. Eh, I'm not too fussed about that. It's going to clear a little bit on the side, but honestly, I think that's for the better because I, I want to do some decorations here on the side to hold away the dirt. Anyways, there we go. We turn. All right, I'm going to go a little bit in. There we go. Then we're going to start backing out. Let's start right here. Cool. Now we're just going to go run and get some blocks. First of all, I'm going to need a bunch of deep slates. That should be enough. Turn some andesite here into cut andesite slabs. Also need to get some tough pillars. There they are. And now, of course, the most annoying block, which is cut scorchia walls. <sighs> oh, yeah. I'm going to attempt to craft it instead of mining it. And there's my millstone. So we'll throw some coal in there to get some black dye. But the only issue is that I don't have a lot of sand. But if we haunt this and then we blast it, we'll get our hands on normal scoria, which together with that black dye, we can create into scorchia, which then we can turn into cut scorchia walls. This is going to take a while to get the amount I need because this is also the block I need the most of. But that won't really stop me as I've got a bit of it. I will probably need more, but for this one, it should be enough. What we need to do is we need to pop all of this material in these boxes. And there's a little bit of other things in there, but that's fine. Okay, first little test. Oh god. Oh, it looks like it's working. It, it very much looks like it's working. I'm just gonna keep going. Only issue is that I don't really know when to stop, but I'm hearing a lot of dirt. Okay, I'm not hearing breaking, so I'm gonna go and check. But that was so fast. Oh, please tell me this worked like I wanted it to. Yep, here it is at the end. It needs to go a little further, but not a lot. Hello. Woo. And now we have a tunnel built. That was so, so fast. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Something that would have taken around probably 40 minutes for me to make took like two minutes. We've just got to clean up the outer edges here and it's fully functional. With a bit of digging done now, let's see if we can get this train into position. So I'm planning if I just back it up all the way to the storage building, it hasn't destroyed anything on the way, which is good. Because going forward in this one might actually break something and I, I really don't want that happening. But if we use technique here where we just pick up the train and then we rotate it and align it like roughly here And then we can go forward a little bit to dig out a little area first. Uh oh, wait, I think I know what that is Oh, this doesn't. Uh oh, help, help. Oh, I'm inside of the train. Oh, thank you I thought I was gonna be stuck there. Now I hear running water and I have a sneaking suspicion of what I've done here Yep. Yep. Okay. My, my sneaky suspicion was correct. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and remove this This is as far as I'm going into my storage because I I really don't want to break anything in here. But I'm going to load it up on resources and let it go forward until it meets at the end of its track. No, oh, it's reached the end of its track. It really isn't a far journey, but perfect. I'm going to take these out just as a precaution. And now let's back it around to the other side. Uh oh, oh, I'm in the wall again. Well, I guess, I guess this is where I live now. Since it's only a one axle, it's a little scuff when turning. And I'm, oh, I'm outside now. Ouch, ouch. All right, you know the D by this point. Loading it up before we send it through the tunnel and hope that we don't run out of materials. Oh, we're, we're out of blocks. Okay, we got a bit of the way, but this tunnels were quite long, so there's still a bit to go. Now, I had three small accidents on my stream earlier when I was supposed to be working on the tunnels, which I did get a little bit of work done, but um, I I, I died three times and I, I, I lost all my stuff, except my axe and shovel. Um, The first real accident I, I flew into 
into a crushing wheel and uh, some of my items got crushed. And uh, one of them being the elytra. So I had to go to the end and I fell into the void and lost the rest of my stuff, basically. So that's why I have some diamond gear now. Yeah. But I've managed to get on my feet again. So I want to do some material gathering. Now, first check, do I have any dripstone? Two stacks. High possibility I have a little more over here. No. Okay. Well, gotta take the drill for a spin. Whoop. This cave looks promising. At a small creature scare. Ooh, that's a perfect mining target. I've got a drill. Honestly, that little bitch, uh, don't destroy it. I'm gonna go for one more pass through, but not this one because there are way too many mobs up here. This looks even better. Oh my god, you hit the bat. Oh, and you're getting drilled. Oh. Oh, that is far more dripstone than I will need for a while. Thank you. Back with that load of dripstone, I had to head over to the wood farm for a few wood supplies. Taking a small little peek at my materials here. I need bone blocks. And I lost my sword. Yeah, this is gonna be an issue. I could recycle some things and get bone meal, but I'm always out of bone meal in this world. So I did go investing on the stream and I should hopefully... That's a looting sword. That's something. Oh, uh, but I should really get something like this. Wait, I have a looting book. Okay, perfect. Move the a little here to get some levels and emeralds, which we can turn into bricks as I still need a few you more for this project. No, wait, I've just had a thought here. I should really set this up. Hold up. If we get a new diamond sword, then we get mending and we get looting and we apply that to the sword. And I need to do a little bit of building here because all the way back in episode one, I found something called a skeleton spawner, which is right here. What if we set up a little automation for this? Everyone's always telling me that I can use deployers and swords and get experience of nuggets and stuff like that. So why don't I actually do it? If we just join our deployer and I'm also in the process of remaking my toolboxes as um I, I lost my toolbox with all of my create components it sucks but here i am look i think i should have everything for this small little farm here i'm gonna build something very very temporary that i might spruce up in the future but i'm gonna need a first of all a room Next up here with our whole dog, I have to make sure that I can get the spawner in there, which will get that. Then if we play some rails, card assembler put right there, and then we should be able to get this guy in there. All right, he's moving. Let's see if we can get him in there. I forgot how slow this is. But place. Yes. Okay, good. We'll go ahead and remove this and these. This, this is definitely not needed anymore. Then we can get one more water bucket in here so that I can mine out the floor to get it flowing the final little bit of the way. And ooh, I need something that stops it. Crap the sign as I had a little bit of wood on me, which we can place right here. And um, subscribe. Yeah, subscribing is something that you should definitely consider doing because it helps me out. Then down right below this. I want to create a vault on the opposite side. Let's get our deployer in right there. Perfect. Which we can put a sword into the hand of. Then with the limited create components I have, we can grab a rotation speed controller, a large cogwheel, and a few shafts. Speed that up. And I don't even need the shafts, so we can get that. And scoop up a bucket of water to power it. And that's... Ooh, I feel like that will hit me. I'm just going to escape that. And um, place a little block here because I am not falling in there. If I can now manage to the destroy that torch. Will we get some skeleton spawning? Oh, there's a torch on the other side, isn't there? No? Oh, yes. They, um, they aren't dying. Maybe I placed the deployer wrong. Wait, oh, it needs to be on attack. Oh, I'm so, I'm dumb. Okay. Oh, it's attacking that now. Oh, no, that, no, 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 that, that is bad. That's not what we want. Okay, I need to move back. Let's see if this works better. Yes, I think they're being killed. Okay, this is being complicated. Is, are there any bows in the system? No, I don't think so. Okay, so I think we're good. I, I think this is gonna work and I have enough bones for now at least. This is a giant mess and I'll clean it up eventually, but I just don't have the time right now because I really want to get some building done tonight. And to do that, I want to turn these into bone blocks. That's actually almost enough. I think I need three more. And I believe that's in a botanist bench, which I want to turn it into fractured. Perfect. With my slight distractions out of the way with building that little skeleton farm, which was very needed, I started building up the walls for the train yard. And this was a very interesting shape and it was quite hard to figure out, but I think it turned out pretty well. Then on top of this awkwardly shaped building here, I want to come in with some cast iron to make an equally awkward roof. 
Now, this leads us at this building. And I will be honest, I absolutely love the shape of it. It was such a pain to build, but so far, I think it turned out amazing. Before we can continue upwards, though, I do want to add in some torches, as I'm not going to touch the inside tonight, because I, I, I don't have the time. Because there is going in a farm here, but I, I haven't had the time to gather up the blocks to that, so I'm, I'm, ju I'm just building the decorational stuff. I'm not, I'm not going insane. I'm, I've not played too much Minecraft today. No, 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 no. Ouch, that's wild. Above this now, we gotta start in a second floor here. Using a few of our white blocks. These roof take me a little while to build, so here you have another time lapse of me finishing the top one. Next up here, I do want to start working on a few windows and a few decorations around the back. Up in these, I want to get some white ones in to fill that in. And I've prepped a few places where I can place in some wood support to hold up the roof. These bigger windows here, giving them a little bit of a flower bed with some mango leaves. And then coming in with some acacia trap doors on the inside. I want to get all of those in the same direction. Then on the inside here, coming in with the green glass and extending that down. In the back here, I do want to extend up some cast iron support. And going back a little bit here, I want to make some refineries. No, not refineries, some tanks holding lava. Or, well, at least symbolizing holding lava. They're, they're actually not going to hold anything because they're, they're, they're train hulls. Because you definitely have to admit, they look like tanks. But now let's switch our focus to the front side instead, where I want to add in some big terrain doors for this train yard. Then I'm going to get some train tracks leading in here. And as much as I would like to use these for actual trains, I'm going to be adding something here in the middle. That will mean it won't be possible, but it can still look cool. I added a few trees in the background, and this build is looking super epic already. Before we can start tackling the interior here, I've got one piece of bread left. And um, I'm out of pork, so let's see if we can make something with Farmer's Delight. And I think that I have a cooking pot up here. Yes, I do. Uh, but I don't think I have like an oven or whatever you need. So how does one craft the stove? Bricks, iron, and a campfire. Okay, that's easy. Craft one of those, which I, I don't have the recipe for apparently, so we gotta do it by hand. There we go. Then over here at the farming area, we gotta get some produce. And why don't we make a small little like stove there and a pot on that? Really inventive here. Now GI isn't working, but let's see. I need a stack of beetroots, a stack of onions, and a stack of tomatoes. And if I combine that with a stack of any vegetable and we throw that in here, is this going to be creating ratatouille? Yes, it will. Yes. Okay, nice. I'm going to let that cook up then. H Hello? I I'm clicking. Oh, it seems like these are so very bugged. I guess farmer's delight is broken. I can manage to get six pieces of bacon. And if we fry those up, craft up some bread, which we will mainly be using. But we can also make a few bacon sandwiches. At least I think those work. Hopefully I can eat them. While it is sad the farmer's delight isn't working, I recently lost the toolbox. So I definitely need to start crafting a few create components to make up for that. I've also grabbed up a few other blocks here to make another machine. Because I definitely want something creating train casings for me. So, next to the schematic cannon here, let's place these. Load it up with a little bit of gunpowder and hope that it doesn't break my build. And here we have the train casing machine. I just need to clean up the floor in here a little quick. And this is quite a simple farm, to be honest. It might look a little scary, though. So, eventually, I need... Yeah, okay, the tag is broken. But eventually, I need lava to be input here. And I'm thinking we can grab lava via the terrain that can come down here and deliver it. That lava will then be split into two. This one will create obsidian for us. Because there will be some water right here. And the lava will be pumped out here. And that will be turned into obsidian and mined by these drills. That obsidian is 
then crushed into powder. All the blocks that survive are pushed back over here and that flings over and it does it again. For the powdered one, we get some lava on that and then it gets pressed twice and it comes over this thing, which isn't the prettiest, but it will do. I just need to input brass in here and I will get crane casings. With an interior complete in here, we can run out and right over here, I've prepped the build for another train. And I've been holding a build competition in my Discord because I want some of your trains in my world. And this train here is built by Mathless and I thought it was a perfect fit. I have done a few slight changes to the train. Mainly, I've added in these, but this one actually... Oh, oh, oh. Uh, thank you. I need to remove this one because it needs to be at the top of the train somewhere. And um, I don't know where it would fit the best, but I'm going to try placing it here. See how it looks. That doesn't look terrible, so it will stay. In here as well, I do want to have two train controls, and I need one facing here. But how do I even... Now I'm stuck in here. That's not ideal. There we go. I also need to shove a blaze burner in there. Make sure it's all glued. Thank you. And now we'll assemble it. So I'm going to do a quick test of the tunnel as well. Where did I park the tunnel train? Did I park it right out here? Because uh, I think I might have done that. Yep. Yeah, oh, yep. Yep. Um. Okay. Slide issue. All right. I guess we'll head back the other way instead. Head in this station because this is going to be one of its stop where we need it a little further away. We need it just a little closer so those two are touching. There we go. Now the plan for this train is to go around fully and then come back over here but we're gonna go backwards for now as we need to head over this way and oh i'm standing on top of the train that's not gonna be good when it comes to the tunnel get me down get me down get me down okay we back it up all the way till over here that's actually not very far because i i would like you to reach one of these sides past the building we'll just go ahead and extend back the tracks a little bit and of course you're one block it wrong why no wait we need to line it up on the back one right 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 so it needs to be right there there we go and now if we just break that up oh, of course it's right where i have a lever but that's fine all right so let's see here. let's get a portable storage interface in the wall right there and what we need is we need to take the iron nuggets that are in this vault right here actually and this one so maybe we combine them into one wait no wait there's supposed to be there's not supposed to be any iron nuggets here they're all supposed to be on this side right yeah okay so we already have a buffer vault that's good then i'm actually thinking we're gonna make a new one because an extra one might not hurt and does that spin the right way it does okay that's perfect now we just have to get those items over to here okay now i've got an idea if we take some shoots remove the block above the portable then we actually use the okay the one time i do want this landed here there we go and and we just extend this up to right here. Because then with a few belts right up here. Going right over there. Brass funnel right there. And then we just power this by running a chain drive all over there. And yes. Okay. I think it's actually loading up the train. That's perfect. Well, that's awesome. Okay, cool. If you didn't know, if you have a smart chute running into normal chutes, the chutes can actually move 64 items, not only 16. But we don't really need the speed. I also do think that the nuggets we have inputted are enough for now. So we will be departing as I just want to see if all of this works. All right. We have over this way and we are approaching the station i'm falling off i almost just died isn't that perfect disregarding the part where i almost died and we park and we quickly run over this way are we starting to see nuggets here soon nuggets okay i'm not getting any why isn't this working okay well we have iron nuggets there but maybe we need a sign that solves that issue but we should have more nuggets and that is the reason okay oh well now it's working okay and that must have been because the power was off then so if we now run over here that's working are we seeing some iron nuggets flow up Maybe they're just flowing too fast for me. Oh, well, I got one. Yep, they're flowing too fast, so I can't see them even. But it is working, and it's making more tracks. For now, we'll just go ahead and leave the train there. It looks a little weird at connecting on the locomotive, and that it doesn't have any storage. But, like, I didn't need that much iron transported here, so it's pretty fine. And it also will be going backwards a little bit of the way, so it looks better like this. But we have one more resource that we need to input to this factory. And I need to connect some tracks so that this train here can make it all the way down. And right now, those end there. And I run a rapid around down the mountainside here and connect it up to this tunnel entrance here. And so I started working on getting this train track to the top of the mountain gradually on this cliffside here. And in the future, I'll have to come back and do a bunch of terraforming. And uh, now we have a track here. I had to dig it through the mountain a little bit. And well, it's, it's also flying a lot. But it at least gets us all the way down here. I also do have plans to work in this area behind the mountain. And while I don't know exactly what I want 
want to be building here. Which, if you have any suggestions, do leave them in the comments below. I'm definitely going to be terraforming this mountainside because it's already ugly. And now I've just added an ugly flying train track to it. So it's even worse. But before we make sure that all of that works, I do also want to connect the train track over to the barn and even further. Now, all this here looks cool. The pipe isn't actually connected to anything yet. And I want to connect it up to those two tanks there or also our chimneys that I made. Well, I want to do that, but then I have an infinite source and I feel like that might not work too well, actually. So we're going to just remove that and pump it straight into the train. I think that's a better solution. So here we have that pipe and now I need to get that over to the lava pipe here in the middle. That shouldn't actually be too hard. With some shafts here and a cog right here. Right. I, I need to put it on the other one. Okay. Okay. We instead need to connect it to this one. Okay. Which I would like to speed up and I do have a rotation speed controller to do just that. Now that love is going up. Perfect. And if I can make it out of this maze, I really, really need to start adding service entrances to my contraptions because th th it's getting annoying at this point. But oh yeah, we're getting lava filling up. Perfect. And I haven't seen any issues, but I also just kind of want to double check because I'm a little worried that it is using it, but it shouldn't. No, it's still here. It's still full. Okay, perfect. And with our train here filled up, let's take it down there and see if we can create some train casings. All right, let's see if I can make the journey. I feel like I'm going to be hitting my head on certain areas, but I didn't there, and I think that was the lowest tunnel, so I think I'll be fine. Oh, this is so cool. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Bring it straight forward through our storage building. Oh, it, we've made it down here. But, right. I'm missing a few bits here on the train yard. Now, for this final bit of the train yard here, I want to grab some spruce and starting to build up a couple of walls using that. Some dark old trapdoors on the corners here. Running over to the windows here. Let's get a moss line in right there. And we'll get some white windows in here. On the bottom of this moss, we can get some dark oak support. And on the front, some dark oak airy trapdoors. And I feel like I've got to say it again. I absolutely love having more vanilla style trapdoors in other colors. It's amazing. Some warp trapdoors up here. Because I think that is nice with a little bit of a splash of color. Coming over to this side, we'll replicate the dark oak trapdoors. These our warp trap doors with our white windows and then we can get some flowers in there perfect and also some flower pots why not no I, I, I want you there and you there let's get in a deep slate floor in here as i do want to run train tracks in here and uh, i always run my train tracks on deep slates for some reason so i'm just gonna continue that going on in here as this is gonna be a little bit of a workshop i'm not fully sure what i mean with a train workshop but i might just like park a train in here because this one will actually be connected to the rail network so deep slate roof here because well deep slate roofs are just really nice and also match this one will not be in the same then of course on the outside of this we're gonna go in with some cobble deep slate super simple triangle roof here this regarding the hole it looks a little odd and that's because it has no overhang here so a couple of copy cap steps and some deep slate in our offhand and we can place down a small little overhang up here just because i want to try something a little different and that definitely looks a little better in the middle here to fill in this hole we get some dark oak going on top of this we start getting in a little bit of warped up here with some shoots breaking it off every so often not making me fall down though those shoots we can encase and well i don't know why i didn't just use case blocks but, but i i didn't here we are let's say it's for the interior because it, it, it will look better on the interior let's bring this warped roof down here Then for these windows up here, let's just add in some oak trap doors for a little bit of an airy feel. And this building is really quite simple, but it adds, especially to the main one, which I, oh, I, I really, really love it. Now, there's still a grass pit here in the middle that's missing any builds on it. So I want to dig down a little bit of a circle here. Now, looking at a bunch of inspiration for this video, I found all of these train model sets that had these rotating train tracks in the middle. And I just I just needed to recreate it. I feel like you had the sense that I was going to do that when I built this. But here it finally is. And well, there is one sad thing. You can't move train tracks because they're immovable, which means we can't actually get this to rotate, but it will look cool at least. So let's start with the ring of cast iron going all the way around down here. 
And that lines up perfectly. Because then I want to take some cast iron stairs. And I want to get this little indent down here all the way around. And I tried a bunch of different options. And had I had steam and rails add-on, the small train tracks would have been absolutely perfect for this. I had that tested. But I, I, I don't have the add-on. So I, I couldn't do it. But it looked awesome. So if you want to do one of these, I highly recommend using the narrow train track from steam and rails. But I'm not adding any more add-ons to this world. So I got to make do with what I have. So let's get some sink in the middle. And this will be our base plate. And in real life, the bridge itself would be sitting on train tracks that are kind of curved. And it will be a mini train track that the bridge wrote this run. And I thought that was really, really cool. But like I said, I couldn't recreate it. I can just reach the boxes and grab some tough pillars here for some sides. So down in here in the middle, let's get some spruce going with a little bit of industrial iron. And I want to bring out some spruce support on the sides right here with a few stairs in the middle. And this is going to be the base of our bridge. Then what I want to do here is bring some spruce through the middle, stack a stair on the end of these sides, and then we can connect it up to the wall using a few slabs. What I then want to do, if we hold some metal girders in our offhand, we grab a rail there, and then we run this across. What you're going to see now is that we get these, and oh no, it broke it. That's fine though, because I think you can just go click on these and remove these, because I, I, I don't want them. Sometimes they spawn with them, and sometimes they just spawn without them, and I, I don't really know how it works. But back up here, I actually want to remove the tracks. I just wanted to get the girders in. Because if you grab some catwalks and you walk into them in a funky way like this, you will actually build out to the side, which Skeesh taught me, and I love it. Um, Sadly, I won't have enough to do it the whole way because I, I don't have enough of the cast iron, but I can also do it on the opposite side. So if you're building bridges and you want to build them like this, huge tip. Because these are always a pain to place otherwise. And then you can run your train tracks down the middle perfectly. And you got a nice little bridge. Connecting it up to the railroad, of course and into the workshop here at the back here to stop the trains from going through and falling off the track. Is that the right word? Falling off the tracks? We add in a little bit of a train stop anyhow and some bath handles on that. Perfect. Oh, Oh no, that's very bad. Did that actually destroy anything? No, please don't. Uh-oh. What I'm just gonna do is get a train track here on the side so that I can put this train somewhere where it won't destroy anything. And we can just grab that and place... Wait, this is the wrong one. There we go. That's the right one. And this one I can just re-rail right... There we go. Uh, that, that, that could have been bad, but it's fine. They don't break. We'll go through the tunnel over here. We're gonna make sure that we turn here so that we don't hit that train. Now we're around... And and we're facing the correct way as well. We'll go forward here. And then we'll stop. And we'll back up onto the correct train line. Perfect. Now I just have to kind of figure out where I need to input this lava from. And I might actually have it. So this, okay, backs through the wall over there. And stops like around here. Maybe here. Because then it, it, it is an eyesore with that sticking through the roof. And I can export the lava over there. A little inconvenient to get it from here to there. But it's fine. So let's get that offloading system built. And we got some lava in here, which if I just pull out two buckets here, we place here, we're gonna get some obsidian. And the drills should mine the obsidian, right? Very, very slowly, but that's okay, because I, I actually don't really need a lot. But there it goes. Which is then gonna be crushed. All of the items... Oh. You know, that's a little bit of an oversight. Okay. I'm glad I noticed. Yeah, that's an issue. The fact that I'm blocking it. <gasps> oh. Um. What if we get a couple of shoots that we then place above this to like up here? And then I kind of actually want to get a depot on top of that. There we go. Now, what if we grab this? Let's see if this works. Yes, that should work. And that should end up in the barrel. Yes, it looks like it is. Yep, that's definitely working. Perfect. Okay. Oh, that looks awesome. I love using I love using these in builds. But we're also making sturdy sheets now, which means there's one in there. Where, where Where's the rest of them? Oh, there we go. They're all in here. So if we just supplied with a few brass casing, we get train casings. Awesome. Now we built two trains this episode, if you count this one and my train tunnel building train. Yes. And this one is just a bystander train, but I want one more. And I want a passenger train because I'm getting ready to tour this world with two of my friends, which that video will be up very, very soon. And I feel like we just need a train to ride around in. And well, I'm going to be yet again pulling this train from a viewer. But before I announce whose train it is, I've got to grab up all of the books. Looks and there's quite a few in here, okay? 
This is gonna be fun. Since I don't build the trains, it's really fun to see what people have built them out of, and I get a little surprised doing the materials list here. So we're gonna need some industrial iron. Also a fan of the andesite things, so we'll do some andesite train hulls. We'll get some andesite ladders. Two basins, that's interesting. Scrambling around in my storage room, I gather up all of the blocks I need for the train. Look, scattered up right here. And since Create Deco doesn't work great with the schematic cannon, I had to place it all the way over here so it's in the right direction. Here we go. And then we fling a little bit more gunpowder in there. And all of this should be correct. And let's build. And this train was also part of the building competition I did. And it is built by Victor. So thank you so much for building this train for me. And here it is. A wonderful little passenger train. Just because I will have some friends on here and it will be nice to take a little train ride around the world. But I'll have to set up a schedule of some sort for that or maybe I'll just drive the train when we do it. Oh, I need, I need, I need to assemble the train, of course, though. Which, luckily, I do have a train station to do that with. And assemble train. Perfect. And we'll name it the Victor Express. And it works. Perfect. And it even fits in the tunnels. Yes. And right, I moved that off the track. Perfect. This is so amazing. I can take a train around my world. With a few final details put in on the stream, the train yard is now complete. And we're automating train tracks and train casings with a few new custom trains. 